Hey guys how are you what if Naruto can stop conversation with Tamari movie? Naruto has finally be left alone after Tsunade and Shizune had finished healing his injuries and has finished talking to Sakura. You're an idiot Naruto, said Kayubi in a deadpan tone. Naruto then lets out a sigh of annoyance Kayubi then growls at Naruto from his mindscape don't you fucking sigh at me you pathetic brat. Roared Kayubi in his usual angry tone. Naruto rolls his eyes at the biju what do you want fox? I am tired sneered Naruto in exhaustion usually in a few hours or dsy he would be ready to go but after the long fights with Kimimadu, Tiyuya, and Sasuke Naruto finds himself tired. Kayubi growls at his jailer in annoyance the large biju sometimes wondered what he do to be cursed with an idiotic shinobi like Naruto I don't care if you are near death brat. You will fucking listen to me you ungrateful sack of meat, roared Kayubi. Naruto rolled his eyes at the loud voice being the Kayubi no Kistun fine what do you want? asked Naruto. You're an idiot, said Kayubi causing Naruto to gain a sweat drop on the side of his head you purposely allowed yourself in a situation where you almost die and for what for some arrogant brat and that annoying teammate of course. yelled Kayubi yhe fox then cuts off the link the fox sits in his cage growling in annoyance. Jiraiya then walks in the room with a serious face which had shocked Naruto since the only time he's ever seen Jiraiya serious is when he saw Itachi and Kisame and when he encountered Orochimaru for the second time Hey Naruto how you feeling? asked Jiraiya in a solemn expression. Naruto gives Jiraiya a wide smirk I am feeling good dadbeo, yelled Naruto. Jiraiya nods his head he then stands up and walks over to Naruto and taps Naruto's arm he then releases a scream of pain. He then releases a sigh Naruto you overused your chakra, said Jiraiya looking at the blonde Uzumaki. Naruto then gains a confused expression huh, what are you talking about Erosanin? asked Naruto who has a dead pan expression and has an expression of lost. Jiraiya then runs his hands through his long white hair what I mean is that you pushed your body to its absolute limits, while training this might be good but in the heat of the enemy it can become fatal, Naruto you are even lucky to be alive said Jiraiya as he sits across from the genin. Huh, why wouldn't I be alive I never give up dadbeo, declared Naruto. You're lucky to be alive because that last jutsu and using Kayubi chakra when you barley had any chakra left could have ended your ninja car permanently, said Jiraiya which had shocked Naruto beyond belief the knucklehead shinobi couldn't believe it he could have died but the hard-headed part of him was telling hell never give up until he brings Sasuke back and becomes the Hokage. While I came here to tell you you the dangers of overusing your chakra I wanted to talk to you Naruto, said Jiraiya in a tone that held no joking. Naruto raised an eyebrow at Jiraiya do you want to talk about Aero Sanin asked Naruto in curiosity. While he had his face wrapped in bandages Jiraiya still knew the bandage genin had raised his eyebrow at him. I want to talk about giving up that foolish promise, now, before you start yelling hear me out? Asked Jiraiya he watches as Naruto is about to say something but then closes his mouth. I know of your nindo way to never break a promise but you are making same mistakes Abutobi sensei and myself made while concerning Orochimaru but Naruto you should know Orochimaru wasn't the cruel. Cold and evil shinobi, he was once like me and you he grew up with no family and back then I could actually call him my best friend but even he start experimenting on people I wanted to believe the person I once saw still my friend but over the years I knew the person I was knew was no longer there. And because of my most regrets do my feelings thousands of innocent have died I just don't want you to make the same mistake as me, and Naruto we leave in 7 days so do what you need to do, said Jiraiya he then walks to the window and exits out the window leaving Naruto to his thoughts. Naruto just sat in silence but after two minutes he gains an expression that's a cross between conviction and confidence I don't care what that old pervert says. I'll bring Sasuke Teme back and show him or my name isn't Naruto Uzumaki Dadbeo, yelled Naruto with his trademark idiotic grin. Flashback over Naruto glances at his sensei then glances back asked the road I don't care what arrow Sanin I will bring Sasuke Teme back, I always keep my promises. Thought Naruto he then glances back at Jiraiya and squints his eyes at the white-haired sage I arrow Sanin where are we going? Can you teach me a new jutsu? I want to spit acid out of my mouth. No wait I want shot lava out of my eyes, yelled Naruto. Jiraiya grins at Naruto excitement how about no and no, besides I am not teaching you anything until you master the Rasengan, said Jiraiya in a tone that gave no room for an argument. Naruto then lets out a loud whine but I have learned the jutsu and where are we going? 
asked Naruto with a pout. Jiraiya scoffed at Naruto not in an arrogant matter but in a joking matter Naruto you still have to use a clone to create the Rasengan, until you can truly create the Rasengan with one hand then we can start talking about what's next to teach you Gaki, said Jiraiya. Naruto glares at Jiraiya with a pout no fair, hey wait a minute, you never said where we're going Ero Sanin, exclaimed Naruto. Jiraiya just rolled his eyes at Naruto's impatientness I heard you the first time Naruto, I just choose not to listen to you, and will stop calling me Ero Sanin it's embarrassing, whined Jiraiya. Naruto crosses his arms never, unless you stop writing those perverted books, said Naruto in a defiant tone. Jiraiya glares down at Jiraiya with a smirk never, your tiny brain can't concept the wonders of each of my masterpieces, yelled Jiraiya with a full-blown grin, he then loses the grin and gains a serious expression and we are going to Sanagakure that is the first stop we need to take I guess you can say it's like a side mission ordered by Tsunade Haim, said Jiraiya he turns to Naruto who has a million watt smile. Naruto then behinds to bounce up and down like a child on a sugar rush we're going to Suna that's awesome. I can see Gara come on Ero Sanin we're wasting daylight. Yelled Naruto as he begins to start running then turns to Jiraiya with a nervous expression uh. Where's Suna again? Asked Naruto who has a large sweat drop on the side of his head. Jiraiya face palms at Naruto's rash excitement okay note to self get the rashness and his running into battle without thinking out of his head the brat will last longer in the world. Thought Jiraiya Naruto let me lead the way said Jiraiya as he walks past Naruto who quickly follows right behind him. So, why are we going there? asked Naruto in a curious tone while he was happy he gets to see his fellow Jinchuriki he was also curious why are they going there. I guess you can say we are going there for a political mission but also this contains about your future training you will have, said Jiraiya in a serious tone Naruto gazes at Jiraiya's expression wondering what the perverted sage is thinking about. But he then shrugs his shoulders probably something perverted no doubt, thought Naruto as he places his hands behind his head but Naruto couldn't be any more WTONG he was. Flashback inside the Hokage office you would usually see Tsunade going though mountains of papers, drinking various of bottles of sake, or taking naps but not today Tsunade can be seen staring at Jiraiya with a serious expression who's sitting across from her Jiraiya I must know what you will be doing on this training trip, asked Tsunade. Jiraiya lets out a sigh originally I was planning on having Naruto complete the Rasengan, and the shadow clone technique, Cage no Bunshin, working on his taijutsu, and focusing on him controlling Kayubi's chakra but that isn't going to work, so he'll have to take another approach, said Jiraiya as he grabs a notebook and start writing in it but it isn't the notebook she's familiar with. Tsunade raised her eyebrow what do you mean a different approach? asked Tsunade narrowing her hazel eyes at Jiraiya. Jiraiya then gives her an all-knowing look Tsunade Haim are you really asking me this question? You've seen how he fights, his taijutsu is piss poor, the only ninjutsu he knows is cage no jutsu, sexy clone technique, oirok no jutsu, summoning technique, kachiyose summoning, and rasengan, Naruto hasn't even learned all the chakra exercises, and the boy probably doesn't even know he has a secrete talent for fuenjutsu or what chakra papers are. Tsunade you can't deny that he has been trained poorly, said Jiraiya. Tsunade lets out a tired some sigh even though Naruto isn't there physically it had seems like just talking about the knucklehead shinobi is giving the senju cage a headache agreed these holes in Naruto should have been corrected months ago. I will personally look into it I can't have someone like Naruto being killed on the next high class mission while his team was able to complete the wave, his fight against Gara and his mission with the protection of Princess Yukie Fujikaze the next time he won't be lucky, said Tsunade as she massages the temple of her forehead. You know this is all Kakashi's fault right, stated Jiraiya. Tsunade then glares at Jiraiya Jiraiya what are you talking about, how is this Kakashi's fault? asked Tsunade. Jiraiya then begins to tap the giant scroll that's placed next to him come on Tsunade it should nt be hard to figure out Kakashi openly favored Sasuke over Naruto and the pink haired girl, you and me know how much Kakashi would try to repay Obito even if he had to ignore Ji's sensei's son, and we both know that Minato never favored Obito, Rin, or Kakashi, said Jiraiya. Tsunade leans back in the chair letting out a sigh alright Jiraiya you're right about Kakashi it's pretty obvious that he should nt favor one student over another it could cause problems but it's already too late for that, said Tsunade. Jiraiya nods his head in agreement if only Minato or his teammates could see him now, 
thought Jiraiya he then turns to Tsunade and glances down at her breast Tsunade what are you going to do about the pink haired one? She's obviously incredibly weak even for Genin standards, not to forget she's hopelessly obest obsessed with Sasuke and has her own fangirl delusion making her believe she's in love with him and having this false image of Sasuke, stated Jiraiya. Tsunade then grabs a bottle of sake and starts drinking from the bottle honestly. I am not sure I was originally thinking about but I don't know I mean yeah she has good chakra control but her obsession with Sasuke Uchiha Vold presents some troubles, said Tsunade. Jiraiya then grins at Tsunade what the hell are you grinning for you old pervert, growled Tsunade. Jiraiya just shrugged his shoulders ooh, nothing, just thought you could have a suggestion I have in mind, said Jiraiya. Tsunade glares at Jiraiya what kind of suggestion, asked Tsunade. Naruto just waved her off nonchalantly oh nothing, just wondering instead of teaching that soccer girl you train Ino Yamanaka? asked Jiraiya. Tsunade eyes open with a glare would that be smart move I mean they're friends, said Tsunade. Jiraiya just waved her off Tsunade you and me no friend has nothing to do with it. After if that was the case Orochimaru would have been the Yandaimi Hokage and not my former student Minato. While her taijutsu is poor but that's not really surprising since since her clan focus on their mind jutsus but other than that she's quite intelligent, more level headed, and is better with coming up with plans on the fly, also, her chakra control is better good probably thanks to her dad and Asuma, besides you know I am right, grinned Jiraiya. Tsunade lets out a groan at the fact that Ino would be a better candidate than Sakura alright, Alright you win you damn pervert that Ino girl would make a better student also with her clan jutsu shell be able to do some true grand breaking techniques. But back to Naruto what will you be doing you I care about as family but also as an asset, said Tsunade. Jiraiya nods his head true but also he probably is the last remaining family you got after all both the Uzumaki and Senju are cousins so in a way you are the only family he probably has but we are getting off track. As I was saying I want to find out what his nature chakra first then I'll start teaching him the true power of the cage no bunshin. I believe with the full mastery of the clones he calls not only successfully complete learn the Rasengan but also go into the next type of Minato's jutsu, and I want to teach him the Hiriishin no jutsu, flying thunder god jutsu, I also want him to learn this, said Jiraiya pulling out a medium sized red scroll that has the word toxic, in kanji. Tsunade narrows her eyes at Jiraiya I have some questions that needs to be answered, said Tsunade. Jiraiya nods his head that's fair, said Jiraiya. Tsunade nods her head at her fellow sage alright my first question is what is the next step in the Rasengan? My v second question is are you sure that's a smart thing of having Naruto learn the Hiriishin? And my third question is what's in that scroll? Asked Tsunade in suspicion as she glares at Jiraiya. Jiraiya continues to grin at Tsunade well Tsunade Haim the next step in the Rasengan is to add your own element into the Jutsu but as you know Minato died before he can complete the Rasengan and as for me I haven't been able to complete the Jutsu while there was that one I used the Rasengan then fired a fire release Jutsu and created fire release. Great flame spiraling sphere. Kaden. Go in Rasengan. But the way I did was incomplete. But to your second question yes Naruto should learn the Hiraishin. After all it's his birthright if not me then who Kakashi, the man knew the Rasengan but didn't bother teaching it to him or how to use truly use the cage no bunshin, and for your last question my spy acting got this I don't how but he did, said Jiraiya as he rubs the back of his head. Tsunade then glares daggers at Jiraiya what's in it? asked Tsunade. Jiraiya nonchalantly waves his hand at Tsunade I think it's better if I show you said Jiraiya he unsealed the scroll another smaller scroll puffs in existence and a kusarigama. Tsunade widens her eyes in shock as she gazes on the kusarigama I is th that? asked Tsunade pointing at the kusarigama. Jiraiya who now has a solemn expression nods his head yep the weapon of Hanzo you know it still has his poison on it right, said Jiraiya. But how? asked Tsunade who's stunned. Jiraiya shrugged his shoulders like said early I am not sure how, said Jiraiya. Tsunade then glances at the scroll and the scroll, asked Tsunade. Jiraiya lets out a chuckle believe it or not inside this scroll is Hanzo's taijutsu, ninjutsu, kayakujutsu, gunpowder techniques, and kusarigamajutsu, chain sickle technique. No doubt he probably accepted someone to end his life and he took extra steps into maintaining that his teachings don't die out with him, said Jiraiya. Tsunade nods her head in agreement could you believe it that one day Hanzo will be helping Konoha? asked Tsunade. 
Jiraiya grins back at Tsunade hello no but this will help advance in Naruto's training, but I'll have to excuse myself I need to do some research, smirked Jiraiya in a perverted manner. Tsunade gains a tick mark on the side of her head before she can strangle or punch the toad sage he quickly shunships out of the room damn that fucking pervert. Flashback over both Naruto and Jiraiya finds themselves at the gates of Sanagakure also known as the village hidden by sand. Jiraiya lets out a groaning sigh there's no way he'll be able to do any research, groaned Jiraiya with his shoulders slumped. Naruto who's sweating due to his heavy and baggy jumpsuit glares at Jiraiya research. Who cares about that crap? I am dying here, yelled Naruto. You fool. You simply don't understand and I have you know my loyal fans care. And you're hot because of that god awful jumpsuit and Suna is a desert you baka. Yelled Jiraiya slapping Naruto on the back of he ahead. Naruto lets out a groan but it's so hoot, whined Naruto. Jiraiya just waved Naruto off you'll get used to it. Said Jiraiya as the two shinobi continue to walk to the gate they too soon a junin one of the junin is dressed in a puppeteer clothing while next to him is Baki who is a very tall man. He has two distinctive, red markings on the right side of his face, the only visible part of his head, with the rest being covered by his turban-like headgear and by a sheet hanging from it on the left side of his face. He dons the standard attire of a Suna-nin, complete with a forehead protector and flak jacket. The two Suna ninjas bow to Naruto and Jiraiya Jiraiya Sama we've been waiting for you, said the puppeteer. Baki nods his head Shurubadasuto, silver dust, is right the council awaits, said Baki he then turns his gaze to Naruto so he's the one that cure Gara of his psychotic tendencies, he does look like an idiot but if it wasn't for him then Gara wouldn't be a possible future choice for K's cage thought Baki he then bows to Naruto shocking that someone is actually bowing to him. Thank you Naruto Uzumaki if it wasn't for you Gara would still be insane, said Baki. Naruto rubs the back of his head it's no problem, me and Gara are alike, said Naruto with a wide grin shocking the two Suna Nin. That's right Tamari did say she felt the same kind of chakra from Naruto when the two were fighting but Naruto's chakra was move larger than Gara's, thought Baki. But where's Gara? I've been dying to see him, said Naruto who's literally bouncing off his feet. Baki and Shurubadasuto chuckle at Naruto's excitement Gara is actually home Shurubadasuto will show you the way, said Baki shocking the puppeteer. Jiraiya chuckles at four the shocked face of the Suna Nin have fun, said Jiraiya Baki grabs onto the sage's shoulder and Shunshin the sage to the council room. Naruto grins at Shurubadasuto come on let's go already, yelled Naruto. Shurubadasuto gains a sweat drop damn my luck, groaned Shurubadasuto. With Jiraiya and Baki as they entered the council room each member on the council bows to Jiraiya well, well, if it isn't Jiraiya of the Sanin, said Chio. Jiraiya gains a sweat drop at Chio hello, Chio nice to be here, said Jiraiya the old sage still knew even though the years have passed Chio still has a dislike for Konoha but he could understand that since Konoha has a dislike for Kumo and Iwa. Jiraiya then glances at Ebizo who had cough in his hand now that you are here we can get on with this meeting said Ebizo as he stares at the Konoha ninja. Goza nods his head but before we start this meeting the council and Suna would like to apologize for our actions towards your village Jiraiya-sama, said Goza. Jiraiya waves his hand in a nonchantalent matter don't worry about it Goza, you were a victim of Orochimaru's schemes, we are slowly regaining our friendship thanks to my new student Naruto Uzumaki. Chiyo then gains a shocked expression at remembering that a genin had a hand in curing Gara. if I make it I ask you something? asked Chiyo. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow at the elder woman um, sure what is it? asked Jiraiya who's confused. Chiyo then narrows her eyes at Jiraiya you say you want to strengthen the friendship of Konoha and Suna if that's true then could you fix the seal on Gara? it would do both villages good if Gara no longer had to worry about losing control said Chiyo after a minute Jiraiya thinks it over he then nods his head in agreement. Causing Chiyo to smile since she's the one who sealed Shukaku into Gara in the first place, now it's time to start this meeting, said Yura. Seijo nods his head with his fellow councilman agreed, now Jiraiya-sama I believe you know why you are here, asked Seijo. Jiraiya nods his head of course this about strengthening our relationship. Tsunade had told me you would be having one of your ninjas to come with me on my three-year mission but she didn't really tell me who actually, but why are you doing this? asked Jiraiya. We doing this so the bound between our villages could be stronger, said Chio in a personally tone. 
Yura nods his head agreeing with his elder this is a repaying our debts to Konoha fur not cancelling the treaty, and the person we've decided who should go with you is Tamari of the sand daughter of the late Yandaimi Kazkage Rasa, said Jura in a serious tone. Baki nods his head in agreement to Mari while young for her age is quite talented in her own right, said Baki. Jiraiya noda his head yeah I remember watching her fight against Shikamaru she almost had him and her wind release is quite powerful, said Jiraiya. Thank you Jiraiya we make sure our shinobi are well trained and ready to go out on missions but Tsunade had also say you have important information for us is that correct Jiraiya-sama? asked Ebizo. Jiraiya nods his head gaining a serious expression have any of you heard of the Akatsuki? asked Jiraiya each of the councilmen shook their head negatively the Akatsuki is organization made out of S-class shinobi there is to obtain all nine biju their intentions are unknown but there are two members we know of and that is Itachi Uchiha and Kisame Hoshigaki, said Jiraiya each of the councilmen narrows their eyes at hearing about the Akatsuki. Baki narrows his eyes in suspicion what could the Akatsuki want with the biju whatever their reason can't be any good, thought Baki he then turns to Jiraiya so, what should we do Jiraiya sama whatever plan this Akatsuki has want be good, said Baki in a cold tone. Jiraiya nods his head in agreement true we can't allow the Akatsuki to gain control of the biju, it will only mean more trouble for us as a whole but I suggest both the leaf and sand start to strengthen our shinobi but I do know one thing the Akatsuki will start making their move within three years, said Jiraiya. Everyone looked shocked while they found out Itachi and Kisame are part of the Akatsuki has everyone wondering. If those two monsters are a part of this terrorist group then who else is three years doesn't sound like a lot but we have no choice in the matter, we must stop the Akatsuki, yelled Joseki in anger with everyone agreeing. Ebizo turns to Chiyo with a curious expression as his sister has serious concentrated look Chiyo what are you thinking about? asked Ebizo. Chiyo turns towards Ebizo I am thinking if these people are strong as Jiraiya says it's time for me to do something I never thought I would do until this day, said Chiyo. With Naruto within the backyard of the home of the Kazuhage household laughing could be heard not laughing of a child but laughing of someone crying from laughing. Within the sandy yard you can see Naruto laughing his ass off. Gara with a who has a small smile, Tamari who's grinning, and Konkuro who looks like he wants to strangle Naruto. Gara has fair skin, green eyes, and short red hair, he lacks distinctive pupils or eyebrows, he's has tanuki like black rings around his eyes, as a child, he carved the kanji for love, I, I, on the left side of his forehead, which his hair is parted in order for it to be kept visible. Gara wears a reddish brownish one with longer sleeves and an upright collar and wears mesh armor on his wrists and ankles. Konkuro wears a black, baggy, full bodysuit with a red and yellow circle on the front, he also wears a black hood which covered his head completely, and had cat-like ears and his forehead protector on his forehead. Konkuro at first sported a triangular face paint design, but changed to a different cross-like design. Tamari has teal eyes and sandy blonde hair, which is gathered into four consecutive pigtails, she wears a long-sleeved purple blouse under a gray top, a dark blue skirt, and a longer sash arranged in a bow. R, telling, me, that, ahahaha Konkuro used to take your makeup, and put it on, myself, laughed Naruto who has tears are lolling down his face. Tamari has a wide cocky grin yep what did you used to say? Asked Tamari as she places her finger on her chin, she then gains a smirk oh yeah, now I remember he would say fear me the great and stunning Konkuro sama master of puppets, or something like that, said Tamari as she shrugs her shoulders. Naruto then begins laugh silently with fresh tears rolling down his face, Konkuro glares at Naruto but Naruto pays him no mind he then turns to Tamari damn you woman, roared Konkuro. I also find it quite amusing, said Gara, causing Konkuro to face fault why must you always make my life so damn difficult Tamari, groaned Konkuro. Because you make it so easy, said Tamari in a teasing matter. Makeup boy, whispered Naruto, he then growls at Naruto I am not. Fuck you baka, roared Konkuro. Tamari lets out a giggle eehee, makeup boy, you know I like that name for now on you will be called Makuapu boy, makeup boy, said Tamari. Never, yelled Konkuro. Gara who's drinking some tea stares at Konkuro I like it said Gara the four genin then hear footstep they turn around and see Jiraiya and Baki Baki. Jiraiya finished with the meeting? asked Gara. The two shinobi nods their head there's something we need to tell you for but before that Jiraiya-sama needs to check summering out, 
said Baki causing the Jenin to give the sage and Junin a questionable stare. Jiraiya THRN pulls out some chakra induction papers chakra induction papers, said Konkuro in a confused tone wondering why Jiraiya has those papers. Naruto glances at Konkuro chakra induction papers, what's that? asked Naruto. Baki turned towards Naruto Naruto every person's chakra has an affinity towards one of the five basic nature transformations. Affinity can at times be genetic, or at least common to a particular family. Most members of the Uchiha clan have an affinity towards the fire nature. One's affinity can be determined using pieces of paper made from a special type of tree that is grown and fed with chakra. When this so-called chakra induction paper, Chakura Kanoshi, is exposed to even the slightest hint of chakra, it reacts according to the chakra's latent element. Fire. The paper will ignite and turn to ash, wind the paper will split in two, lightning the paper will wrinkle, earth the paper will turn to dirt and crumble away, and water the paper will become damp, said Baki in a lectured tone. Naruto then gains a confused expression causing everyone to shake their head negatively at Naruto's idiotic Naruto just pour your chakra into those papers then you'll find out which is your element affinity, basically, if you have fire you can use fire release, explained Tamari in a professional tone. Naruto then gains an undead standing expression I get it now, grinned Naruto he thrn turns towards Tamari thanks Tamari chan, grinned Naruto. Tamari just shrugged her shoulders Jiraiya hands Naruto the paper and as instructed he pours some chakra into the paper. The paper splits into surprising everyone eh so, he has wind release just like Gara and Tamari not to mention he's from Konoha which is rare, thought Konkuro but to Konkuro's and everyone's face goes into shock as each of the two pieces becomes damp and crumbles into dust no way he has wind, futon, earth, doden, and water release, Sweden, yelled the surprised Konkuro. Gara smiles at his friend you continued to amaze me, said Gara. Naruto rubs the back of his head nervously thanks Gara, said Naruto with a sheepless smile. Now that we have got that done it's time to drop the bomb on you Tamari, said Baki having the genin attention. Jiraiya turns to the female Suna Kunoichi your council has declared that you to be joining Naruto and I on our three year training trip, said Jiraiya. Baki turned towards Naruto Naruto every person's chakra has an affinity towards one of the five basic nature transformations. Affinity can at times be genetic, or at least common to a particular family. Most members of the Uchiha clan have an affinity towards the fire nature. One's affinity can be determined using pieces of paper made from a special type of tree that is grown and fed with chakra. When this so-called chakra induction paper, Chakura Kanoshi, is exposed to even the slightest hint of chakra, it reacts according to the chakra's latent element. Fire. The paper will ignite and turn to ash, wind the paper will split in two, lightning the paper will wrinkle, earth the paper will turn to dirt and crumble away, and water the paper will become damp, said Baki in a lectured tone. Naruto then gains a confused expression causing everyone to shake their head negatively at Naruto's idiotic Naruto just pour your chakra into those papers then you'll find out which is your element affinity, basically, if you have fire you can use fire release, explained Tamari in a professional tone. Naruto then gains an undead standing expression I get it now, grinned Naruto he thrn turns towards Tamari thanks Tamari chan, grinned Naruto. Tamari just shrugged her shoulders Jiraiya hands Naruto the paper and as instructed he pours some chakra into the paper. The paper splits into surprising everyone eh so, he has wind release just like Gara and Tamari not to mention he's from Konoha which is rare, thought Konkuro but to Konkuro's and everyone's face goes into shock as each of the two pieces becomes damp and crumbles into dust no way he has wind, futon, earth, doden, and water release, Sweden, yelled a surprised Konkuro. Gara smiles at his friend you continued to amaze me, said Gara. Naruto rubs the back of his head nervously thanks Gara, said Naruto with a sheepless smile. Now that we have got that done it's time to drop the bomb on you Tamari, said Baki having the genin attention. Jiraiya turns to the female Suna Kunoichi your council has declared that you to be joining Naruto and I on our three year training trip, said Jiraiya. Recap end Gara just stares at Toad Sanin with a surprised expression on his face with his green colored eyes shot open wide, Konkuro just stares at Jiraiya with a stunned look on his war painted face, and Tamari stares at Jiraiya with shocked and disbelief expression whwh what? bb but, why?
stuttered Tamari who's shocked beyond belief but as for Naruto he just stand in confusion not even knowing Tamari is coming with him on his three training trip. Naruto stares at Jiraiya with a confused look hey, what the hell Aero Senen, I thought you were only training me, yelled Naruto. Jiraiya then hits Naruto on top of his head quit calling me that brat, yelled Jiraiya he then turned towards Tamari with a serious expression he then turned towards Baki Baki since she's your student I believed you're the one who should tell her, said Jiraiya as he stares at the Sunajunin. Baki nods in agreement yes of course Jiraiya-sama, Tamari the council has decided you will go on a three-year training mission, this is also a mission for you to grow strong enough to protect the village, said Baki in a serious tone. Tamari narrows her eyes at Baki but why would I need to leave the village Baki-sensei, there's something you're not telling me, stated Tamari with glare. He then released a hollow chuckle always the perceptive one Tamari, the reason you must leave and train with Jiraiya-sama is because there's a group of S-rank ninjas after Naruto and Gara. no that wouldn't be right there after what each has their biju, as far as we know the only members of this group are Itachi Uchiha and Kisame Hoshigaki, said Baki shocking the three siblings. Gara glares at Baki not the same level of glare as it was once but still a notable glare what are they called? demanded Gara with his eyes becoming cold. But Baki doesn't back down they call themselves Akatsuki, we're not sure of their motives but both Konoha and Sanagakure must be strong enough to handle the threat, said Baki. Chiyo then walks up to Tamari with a serious expression and shook her head negatively no, if what Jiraiya-sama said is true then each village will have be strong if not then who knows what they might be especially with monsters such as Itachi and Kisame but just you joining Uzumaki here on a training trip with Jiraiya. I will be taking a student something I thought I would never actual do, said Chiyo. Really Lady Chiyo who are you planning to take as your student? asked a shocked Tamari. But instead of answering her she just points her finger at Konkuro congratulations Konkuro you will now be my student, said a smiling Chiyo Konkuro points at himself and she nods her head. Me but why me, I am not ungrateful Lady Chiyo but why me of all people, asked a bewildered Konkuro with his brown eyes widening with utter shocked. Chiyo smiles warmly at him it's quite simple Konkuro, you are one of the most killed puppeteers in the village and it's about time that I accept my mistakes and move on with only moving on can we truthfully move on, said Chiyo. Konkuro then bows towards Chiyo I am grateful that you'll be taking as your student Chiyo sensei said a respectful Konkuro he then turned his attention towards Baki when will Tanari be leaving, asked Konkuro. Baki then turned towards Jiraiya who gained a sweat drop on the side of his head at having the attention on him well honestly I wasn't planning on coming here but I've had to change my original plan but the sooner the better, we must be on constant move we can't allow the Akatsuki to know Naruto's whereabouts, said Jiraiya he then turned towards Gara. but before I do leave I must finish the request, said Jiraiya. Gara raised an eyebrow what is this request you speaks of Jiraiya? asked Gara. Jiraiya grins at Gara to fix your seal of course, hey Lady Chiyo do you have anywhere I can take Gara to fix his seal? asked Jiraiya. Chiyo nods her head yeah there is actually ill take you, said Chiyo. Jiraiya nods his head he then turned towards the four gen in Naruto you're coming with me I plan to teach you Fuinjutsu and you should watch me, Tamari use this time to pack what you need, ordered Jiraiya he then walls with Chiyo with Naruto running up with Gara, hoping to talk to his fellow Jinchuriki before they knew it they were in an underground location below the hospital. Naruto then turned towards Gara. hey, Gara, do you think Tamari is okay, I mean she is being ordered to leave her village I would be pretty down if you ask me, asked Naruto even though he wasn't that bright he understood the serious tension, after all when Kakashi had brought him back to the village he had to leave Konohagakure not really being able to say his good. Gara crossed his arms and just stares at the buildings around, Gara had summarized this level was ancient and could be where people have gone to be sealed by Shukaku I believe she will get over it, Tamari is not someone who has a week she understands this must be done to project her village but she is saddened by the fact she must for three years, said Gara. he then turned towards Naruto who has his hands behind his neck Naruto Uzumaki can I ask you something? asked Gara. Naruto's puzzled face turned to his notorious fox-like smile with wide grin sure Gara were friends, exclaimed Naruto with a wide grin. Gara smiles at Naruto that's good to hear, I want you watch out for her I know this might seem strange since Tamari is strong in her right but with my eyes open I feel horrible how I acted towards her and Konkuro, said Gara. Naruto just grins at him with a thumbs up you don't have to worry about anything Gara. 
Naruto Uzumaki is on the job Dabeo! exclaimed Naruto Chio smiles at the two Jinchuriki while Jiraiya smirks at the fact these two were once enemies and now appears to be best friends. Gara smiles at Naruto thank you, Naruto Uzumaki you are a true friend, said the youngest son of Rasa he then turned towards Jiraiya how will you fix the seal? asked Gara. I will place a 8 trigram sealing style, Hake no Fuin Shiki, on you. This was the same seal the Yandaimi used to seal Kayubi inside of Naruto. Now Gara remove your shirt, ordered Jiraiya Gara nods his head and removes all of his clothing Jiraiya then placed his hand on Gara's stomach both Naruto and Chiyo are treated to see the sealing formula moved from the Sanin's arm to Gara's stomach, Gara then falls back on the ground. Naruto quickly rushes to help his friend up Gara are you okay? asked Naruto. Gara nods his head with a smile I feel better, better than I've ever felt stated Gara. he then turned towards Jiraiya and bows to him thank you Jiraiya sama said Gara. Jiraiya waves him off it's no problem forcing you to live with flawed seal is just cruel besides now you can get some sleep without worrying about shukaku taking control over you grinned Jiraiya. he then turned towards chio yes what is it asked Jiraiya. does that boy know of his heritage i noticed that seal from anywhere even though i am just a novice at fuinjutsu that was an uzumaki seal whispered chio Jiraiya shook his head negatively at which shocked Chio since she believed the child deserves to know of his origin after all when she was younger the Uzumaki clan were nothing to joke about and their Fuinjutsu were the most powerful no one could match them in Fuinjutsu. But those red-haired clan were just all around powerful no one would dare fight a group of them, especially Ashina and Mito Uzumaki those two were a powerhouse in their own right after all Mito is the one who taught her granddaughter about medical ninjutsu. I know he has every right but the problem was I couldn't tell him in the village mostly because of Danzo, whispered Jiraiya. Lady Chio narrowed her at Jiraiya he was one of Sandame Hokage's teammate, whispered Chio she remembered the man clearly he was not one who represented what Konohagakure or their will of fire was supposed to be. He's not to be trusted, I am sure you know this but from my spy network I found multiple files of every dirty work he's done like having one of his root ninja attempt to assassinate Sabutobi sensei I am not sure why Sabutobi sensei hasn't done anything but Tsunade Haim plans to fix that. Whispered Jiraiya in a low tone he never really understood why his sensei allowed Danzo but luckily both him and Tsunade won't make the same mistake their sensei has he already plans to make sure Naruto won't make the same mistake as him. Jiraiya knew his teammate Sasuke Uchiha was just like Orochimaru they both hunger for power those two would do anything to achieve powerful and he knew Orochimaru would sacrifice as many lives as needed to achieve whatever dark cruel experiment. While he didn't know Sasuke he knew his type, the Uchiha is the power hungry type he would do anything to achieve power. The white net knew even he is somehow to kill Itachi he wouldn't go back to the village no hell just direct his hatred somewhere else Sasuke wasn't the type to let go of his hatred. Chiyo smiles at Jiraiya with a sly smile it seems like both our villages struggle with their own problems, but your student is amazing you know to be able save Gara from his own darkness and was able to save his own village from Gara's rampage, I have to say that's quite impressive, said Chiyo. Jiraiya smirks at Naruto and Gara yeah I do he's not like any genin he has untapped potential just waiting to be unlocked, said Jiraiya Naruto come on, hey have a big schedule and it'll teach you something said Jiraiya with a smirk Naruto doesn't even say anything rush towards. He then began to bounce up and down in excitement really, what you going to teach me, am I going to learn how to shot fire out of my eyes or shot knives out of my hands, yelled Naruto with excitement. Jiraiya just rolls his eyes at Naruto while Chiyo snickers at his enthusiasm just come on Brad we have much to do, said Jiraiya both Chiyo and Gara follows the Konoha duo, when they return to the gates of Suna they are greeted to see the councilman. Konkuro, a fellow Kunoichi Maki, and Tamari who has her iron fan, Tessin, with her and a bag on her back, Jiraiya smiles at her ready to go, Jiraiya. Tamari just shrugged her shoulders ready as I ever be Jiraiya-sama, said Tamari. He just nods his head right then let's go, there's a lot we have to do, said Jiraiya both blondes their heads. Time skip location. Land of rivers, Gunraku forest. The land of rivers, Kawa no Kuni, is a small country that is situated between the borders of the land of wind and the land of fire, the small country has a calm like weather, most say this country is a country of spring with large and wide grass fields, medium sized trees but don't overshadow the land such as the trees in Konohagakure, 
even the very mountains are covered in grass. Tamari stares at Jiraiya so, what will you be teaching us? There must be a reason why you've taken us all the way out here even the village Tanigakir, village hidden in the valleys, is a small village that isn't well known? Asked Tamari with a look of suspension. Jiraiya chuckles you're quite perspective but you're not wrong, I've chosen land of rivers because it's not very well known but people mostly come here for a relaxing vacation of nothingness and to have a new start, thus place is mostly very quiet. Plus with its open wide field would be a good training area but this also takes us on route to land of metal. Kin no Kuni. It's also where one of my college's lives said Jiraiya. Naruto scratches the side of his head in confusion land of metal. Replied Naruto. What's that? Questioned Tamari. The land of metal it is a country south from here. The landscape of the land is that of a rocky, high desert. With most of the environment being composed of dry soil and with the rare appearance of wildlife, such as trees or even large scale animals, Mindakir, hidden in the mountain peak, also known as village hidden by the ridge or hidden ridge village, is an hidden shinobi village in the land of several villages. Instead of a cage, the village's highest standing individual is the village leader, Sato Osa. But you should nt worry about it, we won't go there until one month later, said Jiraiya. Tamari narrows her green colored eyes at her new sensei. Wait, are you saying we are staring here for a month? asked Tamari. Jiraiya grins at her, yep, but I also need to know what you can do, Tamari. I've seen your fight with the Nara kid during the Chunin, but I obviously know you are very intelligent, even able making Shikaku's kid trouble, and he's a born genius. I know you're skilled in wind release, photon. And you seem like you were even able to easily deduce an opponent's strategies and weaknesses soon after a battle begins, but I also see some missing holes said Jiraiya in a teaching tone. Missing holes. There is no missing holes I was able to easily kill elite sound ninja, said Temsri in an imprudent tone. That may be true but you rely on your fan too much what if someone was able to separate it from you or destroy it, have you actually used your element without your fan or how about your taijutsu and I mean without your fan, said Jiraiya, while you're a skilled kunoichi you must not look over these holes or it will cost you your life, but luckily various wind, earth, and water release scrolls on me, but first there's something that must be done, said Jiraiya. Tamari can't help but to look down in shame since no one has actually reprimanded her everyone had always praised her skills. Naruto then scoffed at Jiraiya causing both Tamari and Naruto to turn towards him what's that? You gonna peep on her you perv? insulted Naruto. Jiraiya glares at Naruto you fool. Your tiny brain just doesn't understand true work of literature. And I have told you I am a super pervert. Yelled Jiraiya, but the perverted Sanin forget he was in the presence of a female, he turned towards her and was smacked against the head by her steel fan. Try anything ill do worse, threatened Tamari with her fan ready. Jiraiya quickly recovers and raises up from the ground. Ah ha ha, silly girl, I have no interest in children, said Jiraiya. He then glares at Naruto. I told you it's research brat. You are just too young exclaimed a grinning Jiraiya his foolish persona them crumbles and becomes one of seriousness but no Naruto I am not talking about my books what I am talking about is the true purpose of the clones, said Jiraiya. What do you mean Aero Senen? asked Naruto, do either of you know who actually created the shadow clone technique, Cage no Bunshin? asked Jiraiya he watches as both Genin shook their heads negatively the jutsu was created by Toborama Senju the Naidame Hokage he created this jutsu to the perfect spying and information gathering jutsu, while the jutsu creates a clone it also has a second fictional that allows the clone to gain knowledge once it dispels, said Jiraiya Tamari looks shocked while Naruto just looked completely lost beyond belief. Huh? replied Naruto in a dumb like way. Jiraiya groaned at this moment he knew the teachers didn't really teach him but the Sanin just knew getting the boy's intelligence where it's supposed to be anything but easy. Tamari then turned towards Jiraiya so you're saying if Naruto sent a clone into the city and it puffed away he will gain the memory of the clone? asked Tamari. Jiraiya nods his head Naruto then gains an expression of realization ooh, I get it now, exclaimed Naruto. Jiraiya turned to Naruto so fast he nearly gave himself whiplash whaat. You understand her example and not mine, roared Jiraiya. Naruto grins at Tamari he then turned towards his toad sensei yep, I sure do, she makes it easy to understand, said Naruto with a bright grin on his whiskered cheeks. Jiraiya smirked at this okay, maybe this could work in my favor, 
thought Jiraiya he turned towards Jiraiya with a wide grin if you understand then you can finish learning the Rasengan Naruto, roared Jiraiya. The blonde Konoha Shinobi stares at Jiraiya with a wide expression what, but I already know the Rasengan, exclaimed Naruto with disbelief. Jiraiya then runs his hand through his long white mane hair Naruto you have to use the clone to use a clone to create a clone then you haven't truly learned the clone. Naruto what if you go up against someone who's faster than you or someone who uses a long distance jutsu what are you going to do? Asked Jiraiya Naruto then looks down the Rasengan as powerful jutsu created by the Yandaimi Hokage. You do wish to surpass him don't you? Questioned Jiraiya. Naruto gains a million watts smile hell yeah, roared Naruto. Then create a hundred clones and split them into a team of ten and send every clone apart from each other. I also want you to dispel each clone every ten minutes. After you're able to completely learn the Rasengan well start working on your Taijutsu, said Jiraiya. Wait, what are you going to doing? Questioned Naruto with a questionable glare he bet the Sanin was just going to run off and peep on some woman. Jiraiya rolled his eyes at the male blonde known what his male student was thinking I am going to he working with Tamari's wind nature now before you start yelling about me ditching you or something I am going to send five clones to oversee your progress, said Jiraiya. Naruto slowly nods his head and how long will I be doing this? asked Naruto. You will be training to complete the Rasengan to morning to dawn, you're going to be here for a while and like you said there are no shortcuts becoming the Hokage, said Jiraiya making Naruto blush in embarrassment. Tamari shot Naruto a deadpan expression wait a minute was Naruto really thinking of having a clone help him, thought Tamari. Jiraiya then creates a number of five clones in total, each of them then split up in different teams. Jiraiya and Tamari don't stop walking until they arrive in a grassy field that's not surrounded by tree Jiraiya then surveys his surroundings with a look of thinking him. This LL work especially with the trees out the way. Alright Tamari, I am positive you've learned the wind nature exercise correct? Asked Jiraiya. Tamari who's leaning against her fan nods her head yeah it was taught to me at a young age but we had own wind nature exercise I am not sure how Konoha does it since there are very few wind users in your village, said Tamari. He nods his head in agreement that's right now the only wind users in the village right now is Asuma Sabutobi and the retired Shinobi Danzo. There's two phases Konoha ninjas use the first is to cut a leaf in half with their chakra and second phase is to wind to halt the flow of a waterfall, said Jiraiya. That sounds pretty hard, for Mount Village we had use our wind chakra to cut through a rock and then we have to use cut through a strong dust storm, said Tamari in flat tone. Well damn, but now let's teach some wind jutsu. It'll be teaching the most well known jutsu wind release. Great breakthrough. Futon. Daitopa. You must channel a stream of wind chakra expelled from your mouth. The hand signs of this technique are tiger, ox, dog, rabbit, and snake. Ordered Jiraiya. He then shows her the required hand signs ready. Asked Jiraiya. Tamari gives Jiraiya a nod with a cocky smirk. Yeah, I am ready. Said Tamari. She then goes through the proper hand signs and channels the wind element through her mouth wind release. Great breakthrough. Futon. Daitopa. Yelled Tamari but instead of a gust of wind expelling from her mouth she's flown back by the input of the jutsu. She then groans in pain damn that hurt. Groaned Tamari. Jiraiya kneels down in front of her with a snarky smirk well I knew you wouldn't be able to get it down at first. Snickered Jiraiya. The female Kunoichi glares at Jiraiya's smirking face if you were able to get it down would be astonishing but with you neglecting the wind nature I accepted that to actually happen. Said Jiraiya. So, what did I do wrong? Asked Tamari. Well, channeled way too much chakra through lungs which is fly you flown, but it seems like well be going through the basics, said Jiraiya. Tamari then gain a, a curious look Jiraiya-sama have to ask what exactly are we going to be doing here? I mean I doubt we're going to be staying here just for me to fix with Wind's nature and Naruto completing the Rasengan we're here for something else aren't we? Questioned Tamari with a serious expression. Jiraiya then gains a serious expression yes there is. One of my spies informed me the mining town is being used as a hideout for Orochimaru he even informed me he saw Kabuto one of Orochimaru's servants and a member of Root. Root are disbanded emotionless group who serve and only serve Danzo who's a traitor the only reason why he has lived so long is because my sensei allowed it, but my spy had informed me in the lower levels there have been dead bodies coming into the village these are the diseased bodies of the Uchiha, Senju. Kurama, Hayuga, Kagaya, and Yuki clan. And they even have a level even farther down but he doesn't know what's in there, 
said Jiraiya with serious lecture tone. Tamari stares at Jiraiya with shock and horror, she couldn't believe someone would mess with dead just to create a new breed of shinobi but then she was forced to remember that Orochimaru is the same person who killed her father and manipulate her village but this was horrible, so, that's why we are truly here to stop whatever experiments that's going down below, stated Tamari. Yeah, that's right this would be an A-rank mission I am not how much your espionage skills are but it'll be training both you and Naruto in assassination, said Jiraiya. She raised an eyebrow at Jiraiya are you sure you're going to be able to train both of level of skill Aaron exactly on the same level? Asked Tamari. Jiraiya just waved her off I know that have you forgotten I've trained the Yandaimi besides I've had four students in total, besides training you two beats will be no problem. Laughed Jiraiya ignoring the annoyed Sanagakure Kunoichi. Back in Konoha Tsunade stares at Sakura with a hardened glare while the young pink Ned just looks surprised and confused. She then shifts her shoulders in a nervous manner as she's being glared at by the Senju woman um. Tsunade-sama I didn't quite hear you, can you repeat that? Asks Sakura in a respectful tone. Tsunade mentally saya hoping what she's doing is right you heard me loud and clear Sakura, I said I won't train you, said Tsunade she honestly hope what she's doing is right, she knew what she's about to do is harsh but she's the Hokage. But why I have to rescue saoke kun Yelled Sakura in a heartbroken tone. She didn't understand she was sure Tsunade would teach her. And that is why, you are only focused on Sasuke you have no true drive or goal other than Sasuke. Sakura what if Sasuke returned but he didn't accept your feelings I am sorry but I will not train a fangirl. Not only that but you've never trained besides even if you, Naruto, and Kakashi went after him will you be able to fight him kill him if you have to? What would you do if he comes after you intent to end your life? Said Tsunade. Sakura with tears in her eyes glares at the busy medic your lying Saoke wouldn't hurt me, he wouldn't hurt any of us, roared a crying Sakura. Tsunade massages the temple of her forehead she then glares daggers at Sakura is that what you believe? Asked a stoic Tsunade Sakura nods then you're not fit to be a kunoichi of Konohagakure not only have ignored that Naruto nearly died because of Sasuke but your fellow comrades nearly died trying to bring him back. But also Sasuke went to Orochimaru not because he was being influenced or forced he went to Orochimaru of choice, I am sorry Sakura but I will be forced to put him in the bingo book from no one Sasuke Uchiha is a missing nin and traitor. Sakura Haruno I cannot have a ninja who is not committed to protecting the village give me your headband. Ordered Tsunade then watches as Sakura storms out crying. Tsunade released a Sai Shizun come in, ordered Tsunade. Shizune is a fair-skinned woman of average height and slender build with onyx eyes and jet black hair. Her hair is straight and shoulder length with bangs that cover her ears and frame her face. Normally, Shizune is seen in a long bluish black kimono with white trimmings, held closed by a white obi, and open-toed sandals with low heels. Shizune enters the to with a bow what do you need Tsunade-sama? Asks Shizune in a respectful tone. She watches as Tsunade rises from her seat Shizun please cancel Sakura's ninja license there's somewhere I must be, said Tsunade. She nods her head she then turned towards Tsunade with uneasy and concerned expression um, Tsunade-sama do you think you've made the right choice I mean cancelling her license? Asked Shizun. She released a sigh of tiredness I believe so, but this is right for the village, I cannot have a weak ninja in my village, you've went through her file correct? Questioned Tsunade Shizun, then nods her head. Then you know her only reasoning was to gain Sasuke's attention. Besides, you know how many fangirls became Kunoichi, right? Asks Tsunade Shizun, then gains a grim look. You're doing this to protect, aren't you? Asks Shizun. Tsunade nods her head and leaves the office, making her way to the Yamanaka household. She knocks on the door and gets greeted to Ino's mother. Harume has light brown eyes without pupils and brown hair, which is tied into a bun with a red ribbon in it. Strands frame both sides of her face, hanging over her ears from behind them, she is fair-skinned, and slight wrinkles are visible near her mouth, her attire consists of a dark teal elegant dress, which sports an aquamarine colored gem below the collar. Harume smiles at Tsunade Hokage-sama what can I do for you? Asked the brunette with a surprised expression on her face. Tsunade smiles warmly at Harume is your daughter and husband here? Asked Tsunade with a warm aura around her. Yes there are said Harume the two enter her home and go in the backyard seeing Inoichi and Ino training Inoichi-kun. Ino-chan Tsunade-sama is right both turn towards Tsunade. Both of the blonde's eyes are wide open Tsunade-sama what are you doing here? 
exclaimed a shocked Ino who's staring at Tsunade with utter disbelief. Shizun enters the to with a bow what do you need Tsunade-sama? Asks Shizun in a respectful tone. She watches as Tsunade rises from her seat Shizun please cancel Sakura's ninja license there's somewhere I must be, said Tsunade. She nods her head she then turned towards Tsunade with uneasy and concerned expression um, Tsunade-sama do you think you've made the right choice I mean cancelling her license? Asked Shizun. She released a sigh of tiredness I believe so, but this is right for the village, I cannot have a weak ninja in my village, you've gone through her file correct? Questioned Tsunade Shizun then nods her head then you know her only reason to be a ninja was to gain Sasuke's attention, besides you know how many fangirls became Kunoichi right? Asked Tsunade Shizun then gains a grim look. You're doing this to protect her aren't you? Asked Shizun. Tsunade nods her head and leaves the office making her way to the Yamanaka household she knocks on the door and gets greeted to Ino's mother Harume has light brown eyes without pupils and brown hair which is tied into a bun with a red ribbon in it. Strands frame both sides of her face, hanging over her ears from behind them, she is fair skinned, and slight wrinkles are visible near her mouth, her attire consists of a dark teal elegant dress, which sports an aquamarine colored gem below the collar. Harume smiles at Tsunade Hokage-sama what can I do for you? Asked the brunette with a surprised expression on her face. Tsunade smiles warmly at Harume is your daughter and husband here? Asked Tsunade with a warm aura around her. Yes there are, said Harume the two enter her home and go in the backyard seeing Inoichi and Ino training Inoichi-kun. Ino-chan Tsunade-sama is here, said Harume both turned towards Tsunade. Both of the blonde's eyes are wide open Tsunade-sama what are you doing here? exclaimed a shocked Ino who's staring at Tsunade with utter disbelief. Recap and Inoichi quickly bows to the Sanin he then gives his daughter a hard look she in return bows her head and hoping to hide her embarrassment welcome Tsunade-sama what can we do for you? asked Inoichi he figured Tsunade didn't come here for a visit or check on them if he had to guess it was important. Well, I came to see you Ino said Tsunade both father and daughter stares at the medic Hokage with a shocked expression before I tell you why I came there's a question I have if you answer right then I'll explain why I am here and why I have sought you out, explained Tsunade Ino can't help but fidget around in a nervous manner Tsunade smiles at her my question is quite simple actually what is your goal? asked Tsunade. Ino stares at Tsunade with a confused look my goal? Asked Ino Tsunade nods her head it sounds like something Asuma asked when we first met him back then my dream was to make Sasuke mine but he left the village to join Orochimaru, thought Ino she then remembers her friends had nearly died when they were sent to rescue both Neji and Choji were on death's door, Kiba and Shikamaru would have been dead if it wasn't for Tamari and Konkuro they would die. She can still remember seeing Choji's shriveled body it was a sight that will never leave her. Ino then looks down to her feet after a whole minute of silence she looks down at her feet she then looks at Tsunade staring at her hazel eyes I don't want to be on the sidelines when my teammates are putting their lives on the line, I want to be with them fighting by their side I am done being the hopeless little girl, said Ino. Tsunade smiles at this I am glad to hear I actually declined Sakura to be my apprentice because of the answer, her answer was Sasuke said Tsunade Ino didn't seem all that surprised the only thing that appeared to be on her mind but to hear Sasuke was Sakura's dream is a bit disappointing especially after everything that has happened, fortunately, you didn't give the same response as her which is why I have decided to take you on as my apprentice, said Tsunade. Wh what, rr really, you want to train me? muttered Ino she heard Naruto is being trained by Jiraiya to be trained by one of the legendary Sanin was a huge honor. Tsunade nods her head Ino bows her head I am grateful for you choosing me to be your apprentice I want not make you regret it, said Ino with a million ton smile. Tsunade smiles at Ino your training starts tomorrow morning meet me at the hospital at 6am and don't be late, smiled Tsunade. Hi. Shisho. Exclaimed Ino never in her life had she felt so happy she was being trained by Tsunade Senju the Godem Hokage. The slug Sanin, and the world's greatest medic. She knew it would be only a matter of time before Sakura found out she just hopes her friend can find her own path and realize Sasuke was not the dreamboat they would always dream of after the Sasuke retrieval mission it was a real eye opener for everyone she knew Tenten might feel the same way since Neji was critical condition and Lee was also injured when he and Gara fought the bone user. With Naruto, Tamari, and Jiraiya next morning location, Land of Rivers, Gunraku Forest. 
Tamari's eyes stared in shock as she stares Naruto and his clones who are practicing the Rasengan she can still remember when he summoned over hundreds of clones to fight Gara. she knew that was something she won't ever forget, hell, she was one of the people who underestimated him she along with everyone didn't believe he can beat Kiba or Neji but the blonde proved them wrong. He was still an idiot but at least wasn't an idiot that was all talking the blonde can at least back it up she can't help but wonder when they infiltrate Orochimaru's hideout will Naruto be able to do what's needs to be done she could already tell he never got his hands bloody he was also still quite naive and green behind the ears hell yeah I did it. Cheered Naruto Tamari is awakened from her days and sees the ten clones disperse in a huge cloud of smoke. She blinks at her fellow blonde in confusion wait what it's only been the second day exclaimed tamari she just couldn't believe it she then narrowed her eyes at the short genin show me said tamari naruto grins widely at her he then extends his hand out and the rasengan forms you actually did it exclaimed a shocked tamari the brat learned it in a week said jiraiya appearing behind next to tamari out nowhere causing tamari to jump back in surprised she glares at the toad sanin for invading her personal space well a deal is a deal it's time to fix that shitty taijutsu of yours said jiraiya causing naruto to look glare at jiraiya but the white haired gives him a deadpan look at which naruto rubs the back of his head jiraiya then tosses naruto a scroll who stares at it in confusion pour chakra into it ordered jiraiya naruto does as ordered and pump chakra into it a cloud covers the scroll as the cloud vanishes various of scrolls appears along with a kusarigama that scroll contains ninjutsu taijutsu kasarigama jutsu and kayaku jutsu of hanzo the salamander said jiraiya Naruto stares at Jiraiya in confusion Hanzo of the salamander? repeated Naruto. Jiraiya sighs at this he really needed to make Naruto smart hopefully with Tamari here he can get Naruto up to Minato's intelligence or at least Kashina's level, he was a warlord in Omegakure he was the one that gave me, Orochimaru, and Tsunade our Sanin title we also couldn't kill him and we were in our prime, said Jiraiya shocking the two blonde duos. Tamari narrows her eyes at Jiraiya, how exactly did you get that scroll getting into a Megacure is near impossible, said Tamari. Jiraiya grins at the Sanagacure Kunoichi in a cocky manner but in a proud manner it was all thanks to my spy network if it wasn't for him might have to wing it but fortunately, that isn't the case, said Jiraiya Naruto and Tamari stare at the man in shock and amazement Jiraiya turns towards Naruto with a serious look from here on I won't be lenient with your training I will be training you harder than before we don't have time to simply sit around and take our precious time. I can assure you the Akatsuki and Orochimaru won't be it easy, now I will tell you this only once I am training the two of you to be ready and prepared for the Akatsuki the truth is even if Orochimaru did get Sasuke's body he still wouldn't be a match for some of the more powerhouse members and I don't want to hear any buts, said Jiraiya in a hardened tone stopping Naruto from interrupting him. Jiraiya sighs and runs his hand through his long white I know how you feel Naruto I was exactly in your spot when Orochimaru left and betrayed the village I wanted my best friend back but the man who I trusted over the years is gone. The moment he slashed his headband he marked himself as an enemy of Konoha, said Jiraiya he then looks at Naruto with a sober look as the blonde shinobi who has his head lowered and gains a sad expression Naruto let me ask you something can you really considered Sasuke your friend when he joined the man who killed Serutobi sensei? questioned Jiraiya. His blue eyes widened he didn't have the answer in most cases he would just exclaim Sasuke isn't anything like Orochimaru but Sasuke did to kill him he had also tried using the Chidori on when Tsunade took him out of the coma he was in. He was also being an ungrateful bastard when he woke up he honestly didn't know what to actually believe he really wished the old man was here. Tamari then bonks him on the head knocking Naruto of his days he turns towards Tamari with a curious expression she stares at him with a hardened stare so. What you're just going moop around isn't your goal to be Hokage. Sasuke made his choice now to choose yours do you want to be stronger to help your village or do you want to be stuck in a slump like a sick dog? Naruto you are being trained by one of the Sanin that's the biggest honor, people would kill for that opportunity, said Tamari seeing the young boy acting like someone had just killed his puppy was quite annoying. Jiraiya nods his head she's right Naruto being trained by of the Sanin is as much of an honor as being trained by the Hokage. But Naruto do you forever want to be known as a knucklehead ninja or do you want to be known as a powerful cage level shinobi? Questioned Jiraiya if I am able to open his eyes and ditch that childish personal of his then he could even surpass myself, I wouldn't doubt it if he even surpassed you, Minato, thought the Sanin he had faith Naruto was the one the old sage spoke about and if he anything like her then he has a natural born talent for fuinjutsu, thought Jiraiya. 
Does he want to be known as a knucklehead for the rest of his ninja career? He knew his answer if he wanted to be a great Hokage hell need a name to match his strength. Naruto grins at Jiraiya with a wide grin and his cerulean colored eyes shined with a brand new sense of determination and conviction Naruto then punches his palm well, what are we waiting for pervy sage? Let's get started! exclaimed Naruto and I swear Sasuke ill beat you. Thought Naruto he doesn't like that Sasuke left the village to join Orochimaru but that doesn't mean he's going to sit back and let Orochimaru continue to destroy any more lives. Jiraiya grins at Naruto he may have not given up on saving Sasuke but at least he's learning maybe one day hell see Sasuke isn't worth it after all Gara and Naruto are more alike than Sasuke and Naruto then again he always had a feeling Sasuke wasn't that loyal of a ninja. Tamari's eyes widened that on his reminded her when he and Gara fought it was the same expression he had when he saved her from her brother. Her eyes then widened as she notices her cheeks turning a cherry red weight. Am I blushing? Thought Tamari in shock she then mentally shook her head at the thought of Naruto making her blush. Jiraiya grins at Naruto good, time to take off the kid gloves, your training starts now and trusts me you'll hate me by the end of the day, said Jiraiya. Naruto grins at the white haired man just try me, pervy sage, I ain't scared, exclaimed Naruto pointing his finger at Jiraiya. Jiraiya's eyebrow twitches at Naruto's nickname for him okay if this brat wants to take him seriously hell need some manners. Thought Jiraiya his eyes then turns towards Tamari him. Maybe with her here hell get smarter. Thought Jiraiya he then digs into his sleeves and takes out a blank scroll the two blonde children watch as a cloud envelopes the scroll as the cloud vanishes they four black warm warmers, black beads necklace, a black rope which resembles the belt worn by the sound four, here catch said Jiraiya but as the new training gear touches Naruto he is thrown to the floor Jiraiya then laughs his ass off Minato had the same reaction. Ah ha ha each of their weight is about 50 pounds, laughed the Sanin. Tamari's eyes widened in surprise she watches as Naruto puts on the training gear and struggles to stand up Naruto gains a strained grin thth this is nothing, said Naruto. Jiraiya stares in amusement as he watches Naruto's body tremble I am glad to hear that, said Jiraiya as the Sanin makes the tiger hand sign a dark blue ceiling formula appears all around the new training gear Naruto then plummets to ground the small child lets out a loud groan as struggles to get to his feet did I forget to mention once the seals on the training gear adds another 40 pounds of weight, said Jiraiya with a smirk. Both Tamari's and Naruto's eyes went wide with shock and horror what, are insane? Are you nuts pervy sage? exclaimed two blonde teens. Jiraiya simply shrugged his shoulders if that's you feel Naruto can always give up, said the Sanin with a cheeky grin as if magic Naruto found the energy to raise his feet and begins to run for warm ups do a 20 miles jog around the village. Yelled Jiraiya the Sanin ignore the angry shout of the Jinchuriki. Tamari stares at Jiraiya with a deadpan expression you're a real slave driver aren't you? asked Tamari. Jiraiya snickers at her guilty as charge said Jiraiya in a cheeky tone but what I am doing is no different from how I trained my own team and those other kids. Naruto must be strong not just for himself but for the world as a whole Naruto not only needs to know to master his biju's chakra but needs to be a capable ninja who doesn't rely on Kayubi's chakra oot there's but doubt about it I have to train him harder with Itachi and Kisame out there he needs to be able to handle those too. Thought Jiraiya he knew from his spy network had told him Itachi and Kisame were assigned to capture Naruto while Sasori and Idera was assigned to capture Gara. Jiraiya then turns towards Tamari who raised an eyebrow what? asked Tamari. Get moving! exclaimed Jiraiya who makes a moving along hand motion. Tamari stares at him with a look of shock what? I am training both of you if the brat runs so do you! exclaimed Jiraiya. Unlike Naruto who openly complained Tamari just sized Jiraiya then hands her similar training gear, he watches as the two blondes run he wasn't surprised that Tamari had little trouble putting the gear on mostly due to her years training with her large fan. After many hours of various of what Jiraiya would call light training, the two blondes collapse to the ground the white haired man laughs at the two who had glared at him. Now, that the warms ups are over the real training could begin he ignores the groans of protest rest is over said Jiraiya he then creates a single clone and turns towards Tamari my clone will help with your taijutsu while ill help the brat, said Jiraiya he and Naruto walk towards a clearly with Naruto struggling to each step it felt like his very bones were going to give up on him, he couldn't help but wonder is this how the old man trained pervy sage, Tsunade Bakken, and Orochimaru. 
While Jiraiya was teaching Naruto Hanzo's taijutsu style the red prey step, Akainori no Ken. While, the clone was teaching Tamari the willow fist, Yanagi Ken. Now brat let's get started, said Jiraiya. Naruto grins at his sensei right let's get started, exclaimed a grinning Naruto. Great to hear now, relax your body you are too stiff, said Jiraiya hitting his apprentice on the head causing the blonde to hit the ground Naruto groans in annoyance the blonde struggles to rise to his feet gritting teeth in frustration but he knew Sasuke must be doing something to this, his body burns every muscle begging him to stop, but Naruto won't stop he needed to be strong, he needed to bring back Sasuke. Seeing Naruto back on his feet brought a smile on his aged face not going to give up? Asked Jiraiya Naruto grins at Jiraiya for a short second he saw the image of Minato and Yahiko Jiraiya quickly shook the head of the thought, it was no time to think about such things he's short on time thanks to Orochimaru and the Akatsuki, fortunately, he's dealing with an Uzumaki and a member of the Kei's Cage clan. Since we only have three years we're going to have to speed up the process, states Jiraiya he then creates five clones alright, Brad I want you to make 20 clones, ordered Jiraiya he quickly makes three clones, before Naruto can question him on his training he feels a drop of blood across his cheek. What the hell arrow senin? exclaimed Naruto who responded very dramatically and waving his hands the air in a very hyper manner while stomping his foot on the ground in a childlike manner the toad age then threw another shuriken cutting Naruto's causing boy to lose his balance. Damn it Kakashi! You've really fucked up! Thought Jiraiya the sage sighs at this if you can't avoid my weapons then how you gonna be able to dodge from Sasuke and Itachi? What we need to do first increase your reflexes and strength then we can start training you how to use the taijutsu, said Jiraiya. He and his clones continued to throw kanai and shuriken at Naruto and his own clones. But being knucklehead that he is Naruto had to replace his clones every three minutes or so. But as he was dodging the sharp weapons he couldn't help but think about to the wave mission he knew when he fought him he was unmatched hell even when Sasuke's Sharingan had awoken it was still an unmatched fight until he used Kyubi's chakra just like at the valley of the end he lost control but unlike with Haku, he lost and nearly lost his life, yeit. Roared Naruto Jiraiya accidentally throws a kanai at Naruto's shoulder Naruto stares the kanai then turns towards Jiraiya staring at him after three minutes of silence he with anger you bastard. You stabbed me you ass! exclaimed Naruto glaring his sensei. Tamari groans in pain as the clone sent her on her ass, her eyebrow twitches as the clone stares at her with a smug look, she then sighs as she hears the yelling of her new teammate and sensei what the hell is wrong with those two? wondered Tamari. It's not my fault brat! Why'd you scream? yelled Jiraiya in annoyance. Naruto removes the kanai from his shoulder and grunts as he removes the blade. He then tosses the bloody kanai that drops it to the floor. He then turns towards Jiraiya with a confused expression I just remember something. Exclaimed Naruto he then pointed at Jiraiya causing the man to raise an eyebrow at his apprentice you said Tamari joining us was a political mission, yelled Naruto. Took the brat long enough to realize it, thought Jiraiya he then gains a serious look this was made by Tsunade and the council of Sanagakure. This mission was made to show both villages still had strong ties with each other Orochimaru had really screw Konoha and Suna over with this war both were hit hard because of the war. Both villages are on the edge but with your friendship with Gara does make things easier but only by a little bit, said Jiraiya. Naruto's eyes widen wait then that means both villages don't are still at odds, exclaimed Naruto he remembers when Gara had seen him in the hospital all nurses and doctors had glared at him and his siblings the look they sent them was the same when the older generation would glare at him it was the same look they would give me, thought Naruto. We need to build our trust with each other that is the reason why Tamari is here this is also considered a B rank mission I not only have to train her but we can't allow anything to happen to her she is from the K's Cage clan, said Jiraiya. Naruto gulped very loudly he knew if something were to happen to her Gara would kill him plus he found Baki's scary way scarier thank Anko. A cold shiver went down his spine at the thought of the purple haired woman Jiraiya snickers at Naruto's scared face must be thinking of Baki. Well he is strong and capable Junin, thought Jiraiya he then gains a sly grin then you'll just have to protect her, said Jiraiya. Yeah. He'll protect Tamari no matter what exclaimed Naruto as he slowly realizes what he said his tan skin then turns a deep crimson color, I, I didn't it me mean it like that, said an embarrassed Naruto. Sure you didn't, 
said Jiraiya winking at Naruto who turns head to the side in embarrassment but he didn't mean it like that he didn't like Tamari that he likes his pink net teammate, not the sand Kunoichi but he does have a little crush on Koyuki but his heart belonged to Sakura and maybe when he comes back he'll take her on a date. Alright. Lover boy let's get back to training. Mocked Jiraiya before Naruto could even yell at his sensei. Jiraiya throws a shuriken a cut of smoke covers the small weapon as the smoke vanishes a large shuriken is thrown at him making Naruto open his eyes in shock he leans back a little too far he then cursed as he lost his footing with a loud thud Naruto lands on his ass he then groans at the soreness he felt. I, what you doing, I didn't say you can rest, yelled Jiraiya. Screw you, perv, roared Naruto in annoyance his back and ass hurt, of course. The Toad Sage didn't allow Naruto to simply lay on the floor he continued their training with him throwing a kanai at the fallen Uzumaki, for the fur of the day Jiraiya had spent the day training Tamari and Naruto in Taijutsu they didn't return back to their room until 9. Once they return an exhausted Tamari makes it to the couch and crashes the only thing coming from the blonde teenager is her soft breathing. As for Naruto he had crashed to the floor not even caring about a blanket or pillow Jiraiya gives him a few love taps Naruto just growls at Jiraiya not wanting to deal with the man but the toad sage had other plans. He then drops a book on Naruto's face who grunts in pain Naruto lets out a low groan ignoring the snickering coming from his sensei he lazily removes the book from his face as he flips the book to the cover he stares at the title Poisons of a Shinobi by Hanzo. For the rest of the night you will be a task with reading the first chapter, ordered Jiraiya. Naruto's blue eyes stare into Jiraiya's with shock and horror what, your ouughhhh, yelped Naruto he rubs the back of his head as Tamari had thrown one of the weights at him. He turns and sees her tired teal yet angry eyes glaring at him he shivers in fear shut up, growled Tamari. Yes, ma'am said naruto in low tone seeing her threat had gotten across with her fellow blonde she quickly goes back to sleep jiraiya smirks at naruto and walks towards his room leaving the child to his own devices naruto quickly glances at the slumbering tamari he then released a gulp tamari is definitely scarier than sakura chan it's best not to make her mad or shell hit me with that fan thought naruto he then begins opening the book starts reading still fixated on that teammate of yours you truly are a fool naruto said Kayubi in an insulting tone. Naruto narrowed his eyes not pleased to be hearing the fox's dark voice what would you know, you dumb fox, thought Naruto. From the large cage that seems to be filled with nothing but darkness the red eyes and canine jaws grins within the cage I know far more than you boy, my last container was far smarter than you she had some talent, said Kayubi. Naruto's eyes widened shocked ww what, muttered Naruto. Oops wasn't supposed to say that, said Kayubi his grin widened taking joy at Naruto's confusion, just because he's imprisoned doesn't mean he can't have fun. Naruto was lost for words he always remembers people saying Kayubi had attacked Konoha but if what the fox is saying true then someone had to break the seal for Kayubi to be freed wwh who ww was she? asked Naruto in a nervous and almost scared tone. Kayubi lets out a few chuckles sending shivers down his spine isn't it an obvious boy? It's your mother of course. Ah ha ha how sad she gave her life up but you don't even know what the bitch looks like or her name, laughed Kayubi. Wait. What's her name? asked Naruto but Kayubi never responds after more attempts which had no results Naruto looks down his hands in sadness not even caring as his eyes cry in pain. Frustration and anger he was sure Jiraiya knew who his mom was but he was uncertain if the pervert would tell him, with his emotions at a high level. He stares down at the book he sighs knowing he won't be sleeping anytime soon, as he reads the book he is plagued what he said he had also kept reading till 2 and finally falls asleep. One would think after a tiring and taxing day they would peaceful dreams but unfortunately, that's not the case with Naruto whose dreams were filled with his first encounters with Zabuza, Orochimaru, and Itachi. Two hours later both Naruto and Tamari are awakened by Jiraiya's loud voice Tamari groans in her sleep muttering curses and swears at the kabuki themed shinobi Naruto simply lets out a loud groan, Jiraiya whistles at Naruto noticing he had read two chapters this caused the sanin to grin no time for rest. Time to start today with, morning training, yelled Jiraiya as he dragged the two half asleep teens outside he grins at their tired expression it had reminded him of himself when he was a genin back when he and Orochimaru were best friends. He then shakes himself from thinking about the past it was no time thinking about that after all, 
he spent too much time thinking the what-ifs, if he truly wanted to honor those who have passed then he must train the new generation and make sure they don't make the same mistakes, he then turns towards Tamari I hope you ready for today's training I am sure you'll love it, exclaimed Jiraiya. Or hate you, muttered Tamari Jiraiya then throws a scroll at Tamari who catches it she then gives him a questionable stare he just smirks at her she pours chakra into she is left surprised as the scroll contains two small black iron fans each fan has an image of a golden moon she then slowly looks up Jiraiya who has a confident yet cocky grin. A special gift from your council, if you look closer there's something written, said Jiraiya. She struggles to raise the fans due to their height, as she takes a closer look she sees something written on the blades is just like the wind it flows freely like the summer leaf she smiles at it. Baki sensei, said Tamari in a soft tone a smile appears on her face. Naruto's cheeks turn a light pink hue due to never hearing the female Sunakunoichi speaking in a tone like that cute, thought Naruto as he stares at her smile. As you can see each aid about 95 pounds each, said Jiraiya Naruto turns looks at Tamari he also notices her arms are trembling for today's training session you'll be sparing against each other, said Jiraiya. Wait, does that mean he'll be using the Kusarigama? asked Naruto. A strong force hits him in the back of the head spending him face first with the ground Naruto can already feel lump his head you idiot that thing is P-O-I-S-I-O-N-E-S-S, -E -S -S, screamed Tamari glaring at him. I would never hurt you, Tamari-chan, exclaimed Naruto. With his blue eyes staring into her own she then away from him hoping he doesn't see her cherry red blush tisk. Whatever, muttered Tamari. Naruto then rubs the back of his head he then turns towards Jiraiya with a confused expression then what am I supposed to you my kanai? exclaimed Naruto. Jiraiya simply shook his head negatively and throws him a scroll with the Serutobi clan symbol Naruto shot the Sanin with a confused look it's a gift from Serutobi sensei. Said Jiraiya shocking the blonde duo. Naruto pours chakra into the scroll a Jien sword has summoned the sheath of the sword is gray black in color the sheath itself is made from a tree. The handle is gray black with having the pattern of an oak tree the crossguard is the shape of a curved V which is gold and was three red ruby jewels embedded in it. The pommel is solid gold and takes the shape of a turtle's shell attached to the pommel is a black iron chain and the blade is pitch black the middle of the blade is coated in solid gold, it's called the sword of Goji and sensei was going to give it to you after, the chunin exam, said Jiraiya shocking Naruto and Tamari the blade itself was crafted with chakra metal and adamantine while the handle and sheath are made from the shodimes mokudan, said Jiraiya. Naruto stares at the sword in awe for now. You'll be using that sword until you master the Kusarigama, ordered Jiraiya Naruto simply stares Jiraiya with a blank face. She struggles to raise the fans due to their height, as she takes a closer look she sees something written on the blades is just like the wind it flows freely like the summer leaf she smiles at it. Baki sensei, said Tamari in a soft tone a smile appears on her face. Naruto's cheeks turn a light pink hue due to never hearing the female Sunakunoichi speaking in a tone like that cute thought Naruto as he stares at her smile. As you can see each aid about 95 pounds each, said Jiraiya Naruto turns looks at Tamari he also notices her arms are trembling for today's training session you'll be sparing against each other, said Jiraiya. Wait, does that mean he'll be using the Kusarigama? asked Naruto. A strong force hits him in the back of the head spending him face first with the ground Naruto can already feel a lump his head you idiot that thing is P-O-I-S-I-O-N-E-S-S screamed Tamari glaring at him. I would never hurt you, Tamari-chan, exclaimed Naruto. With his blue eyes staring into her own she then away from him hoping he doesn't see her cherry red blush tisk. Whatever, muttered Tamari. Naruto then rubs the back of his head he then turns towards Jiraiya with a confused expression then what am I supposed to you my kanai? exclaimed Naruto. Jiraiya simply shook his head negatively and throws him a scroll with the Serutobi clan symbol Naruto shot the Sanin with a confused look it's a gift from Serutobi sensei. Said Jiraiya shocking the blonde duo. Naruto pours chakra into the scroll a Jien sword has summoned the sheath of the sword is gray black in color the sheath itself is made from a tree. The handle is gray black with having the pattern of an oak tree the crossguard is the shape of a curved V which is gold and was three red ruby jewels embedded in it. The pommel is solid gold and takes the shape of a turtle shell attached to the pommel is a black iron chain and the blade is pitch black the middle of the blade is coated in solid gold, it's called the sword of Guji and sensei was going to give it to you after, the chunin exam, 
said Jiraiya shocking Naruto and Tamari the blade itself was crafted with chakra metal and adamantine while the handle and sheath are made from the Shodem Mokaton, said Jiraiya. Naruto stares at the sword in offer now, you'll be using that sword until you master the Kusarigama, ordered Jiraiya Naruto simply stares Jiraiya with a blank face. Recap end Tamari smirks at Naruto who's flat on his ass with some cut wounds Tamari had her fair cuts on her I am impressed Naruto you have improved a lot faster than I thought, maybe, there's hope for you after all Gaki. Grins Jiraiya with pride and amusement he figured the blonde probably got his talent with the from his mother besides being the Jinchuriki of Kitsune no Kayubi and a Fuinjutsu master she was also a gifted Kenjutsu. Naruto grins at the white haired man then hey, screw you old geezer exclaimed Naruto glaring at the sage. Tamari sighs at the two or all Konoha ninjas like this, thought Tamari as she remembers her interactions with another genin like Shikamaru who became a chunin just like her but I guess she'd rather deal with the loudmouth idiot that lazy bastard Tamari then wax him in the back of the head but not hard just enough to make him stop arguing with their sensei aren't you a ninja? asked Tamari with a raised eyebrow. He stares at his fellow blonde with confusion what the hell did she mean of course he's a ninja his first real mission turned C rank to A rank he survived against Orochimaru twice met the infamous Itachi and Kisame hell he fought and beat Neji and Gara two people who are far better than him but here Tamari is asking him that question. Of course I am. Yells Naruto how can this woman say that he's training to bring back Sasuke. Tamari's teal eyes glare at him then act like it, stop acting you're a kid. Yells a frustrated Tamari she just couldn't believe it here she is with Naruto Uzumaki the boy who beat her brother is being trained by Jiraiya and he's acting like a child. She then roughly grabs onto his headband and roughly shakes him this headband symbolizes you. Naruto is a soldier of the village you have a responsibly you can say how you are going to bring back your traitorous friend all you want I don't care. I care about the S rank ninjas after my little brother. In the eyes of your village, you are no longer a child. How do you expect to be the Hokage when you're goofing off? exclaims Tamari losing her patience with Naruto she had thought after everything that happened he would learn from it but no he's acting like how he did during the beginning of the Chunin exams. Someone like Itachi Uchiha is hunting Gara and you. They're hunting you. As if you were some animal to be mounted, and Naruto Itachi is stronger than Orochimaru. Growls Tamari she just couldn't take it she couldn't take how idiotic naive Naruto is damn it how can this kid be so naive what kind of things are they teaching in Konoha? Thought Tamari she couldn't help but wonder what their academy is doing since they allow Sakura and Ino two fangirls be Kunoichi those two are such an embarrassment the only Kunoichi from Konoha that actually cared about their ninja career was Hanada and Tenten. Naruto stares wide eyed never being told in such a manner sure others have made it clear how much of an idiot he is. You think I can be the Hokage, muttered Naruto in a solemn tone. Well, of course, I do. I saw how you fought my brother you changed him, you brought my brother back, mutters Tamari shocking Naruto he had no clue he changed his red-haired friend he also didn't know what Tamari thought of him. Naruto could only count a few people who believe he can be Hokage but here he has someone as strong as Tamari saying she believes him he doesn't even think his own teammates believe him but here someone who isn't from his village believes him and is scolding him. The young knucklehead ninja finds himself speechless he bows his head in shame catching Tamari off guard I, I am sorry, apologize Naruto. Tamari crosses her arms this isn't the time for a pity party, we're being trained by one of the Sanin and he's the one who trained the Yandaimi, I won't allow these people to hunt Gara as if he was some wild beast that needed to be locked away, says Tamari gripping her fans tightly, so what are you going to do? Sit around goofing off while these people hunt others like you and my brother? asked Tamari in a serious tone. He shook his head negativity no way, says Naruto. Tamari then softly sighs then take this seriously if not for me then for my brother, you are his best friend after all, says Tamari shocking Naruto he had no idea what Gara had thought of him but deep down he knew she was right being a ninja wasn't he thought it would be in the way of mission was his wake up call to reality and the fact he has someone like Itachi after him doesn't sit well for him. He then begins remembering looking at Sasuke's older brother his eyes held no emotion it spooked him especially without how brutal he took Sasuke out then there was Kisame he hates to admit but he actually had a nightmare about the shark man. Naruto then bows his head down I am sorry I am just scared, said Naruto she then sighs at this not sure what to do in this type of situation. 
She awkwardly pats him on the shoulder not really sure what to do after all her family wasn't known for group hugs so she just pats him on the shoulder after all physical contract was still a foreign concept to the blondes. But as Blue and Teal meet Naruto not being one to ever think simple blurted out the first thing that came to his ramen brain beautiful eyes. Blurted Naruto Jiraiya then laughs at the two who had an equal crimson blush. Naruto not sure what to do sure he always called Sakura cute he even thinks Koyuki is beautiful but there's something about Tamari she's talented, she's very smart, and she's very mature for her age there was also this exotic aura about her maybe because she was from a whole other village and she was the strongest kunoichi in the chunin exam. So Naruto does what many others have down avoided contact and stare at their feet while having a mental debate. Tamari's cheeks turn red ss stop trying to change the subject, thank you says Tamari but she said the last part to herself. Jiraiya then laughs loudly ruining the moment after all seeing their teen drama was funny Tamari's blush and then replaced with annoyance she swung at her sensei mailing him in the face they watch as he bounces off the ground causing Naruto to have a sweat drop, and you, act your age, snarled Tamari in annoyance this pervert was her sensei and somehow trained a cage she wondered why all Konoha ninjas live so lay back. Jiraiya dust himself off and grins okay. Enough of your lovers spat, joked Jiraiya the man enjoyed watching the two blondes turn a deep red he couldn't help but chuckle just like Kashina E.H., Minato, thought Jiraiya Naruto might be a hidden gem but he was definitely his mother's son his personality was so much like hers it was scary. We are not lovers, yelled the two Naruto was really just thinking of summoning Gamabuta just to flatten the smirk off of Jiraiya's old wrinkling face. They both calmed down seeing the serious expression on his face Naruto. She's right this is the real world but this isn't the time for this in two weeks while be going on our first A-rank mission. Said Jiraiya shocking the two our mission is to infiltrate one of Orochimaru's labs this warehouse has many records of various things from his time as a shinobi of the leaf. To a root agent of Danzo, and to his time with the Akatsuki, says Jiraiya just as Naruto was about to ask about Sasuke Jiraiya held his hand up stopping him from speaking no intel says the one at this hideout is a Keke Jenke woman named Gurin. She's one of his stop Junin leave her to me you two will head to the below level where the documents are kept you two will be facing Junin and Shunin you understand? Asked Jiraiya. Tamari nods her head well be on our own, says Tamari. Yes, this woman was once an ideal body so he kept her because her usefulness, says Jiraiya. You think she might know where Orochimaru is? Asked Naruto. It's a possibility, Tsunade trust us to complete this mission, are you two ready? Ask Jiraiya they nod their heads good, we don't have much time but with clones anything is possible, says the man for the next two weeks Jiraiya had increased their training Naruto can now properly use the chain sickle with the help of Tamari she had taught him a few wind jutsu Jiraiya had also taught him a few toad, earth, and water ninjutsu. The three stood at the secret entrance of the warehouse you two know remember your part right? Ask Jiraiya put this question was more directed at Naruto. Naruto nods his head yeah. I remember we gotta find the documents when you deal with the crystal lady, says Naruto. Jiraiya nods his head with a smile from here on you two or on your own. Bed careful you two and watch each other's back, said Jiraiya. The two nods their head in agreement right, you count on me ill protect Tamari, says Naruto not even noticing Tamari's rose red cheeks. Yeah, what Naruto said. We won't fail you Jiraiya-sama, said Tamari the road sage grins at this he then body flickers away she then turns to Naruto you ready? Asked Tamari Naruto's response was a cloud of smoke Naruto now stood with his kusarigama she smirked at him at which he flashes her with his fox like grin. They then enter and of course with Naruto's luck it is never easy. Standing in front of them are four men ah shit. Groaned Naruto the four men charged at them. Tamari unleashes powerful wind blades with her two iron fans each men are then flung back hitting the wall you could even hear the sound of bones breaking as their bodies hit the wall. Naruto released an audible gulp man I do not want to be on the retrieving side of those things. Thought Naruto sure Sakura scares him with her short temper but Tamari scares him even more plus she didn't even need to use her fist just her fans. Come on, Naruto we have a mission to complete says Tamari Naruto dumbly nods head and follows her down a flight of stairs from from Jiraiya Sama had said these at least three more levels we have to go before we reach our destination, said Tamari. Right, and well run into more of Orochimaru's henchmen but I can't help but to wonder if he's here, wondered Naruto. Who? Sasuke? asked Tamari with a raised brow, 
Her fellow blonde shook his head negatively no, Kabuto Orochimaru's right hand, said Naruto. Kabuto. You may and the guy who took part in the war? Asked Tamari she never fearsome to him the only thing she knew about him was he was a spy for I Orochimaru and took part in the war. Yeah, he's strong I fought him when Eki Senen and I had to bring back Ba-chan, and he totally kicked my ass he's as good as a medic as Ba-chan but as ruthless as that snake bastard. Eki Senen told me he's as strong as Kakashi Sensei, says Naruto Tamari's eyes looked on in shocked Kakashi was Konoha's most talent and skilled shinobi and for someone like Kabuto to be on even ground as Kakashi was scary. And how did you manage against him? asked Tamari. Sweat drop appeared in the side of his head I um, had to um, let him stab my hand then I used the Rasengan on him, says the blonde Uzumaki in a low tone. Tamari stares at him with a blank look idiot, muttered Tamari but somehow this doesn't surprise her after all, she watched him fight and she knew he took unnecessary risk just to win a fight hopefully you won't have to do that again, says Tamari. Yeah, you and me both, says Naruto fortunately. Now that he managed to use the Rasengan with one hand so getting stab wasn't really necessary. Boy, you errant alone, says Kayubi, Naruto then comes to stop looking around Tamari then turns to Naruto what is it? asked Tamari. We errant alone, says Naruto the two blondes are then back to back looking at their surroundings they even look above but didn't see anyone where are they? asked Naro but Kayubi didn't respond causing the blonde to growl in annoyance. Suddenly Naruto's gets punched in the face making him land on his face Tamari swings her can but hits nothing she then feels as someone kicked her knees making her loss her balance she then feels as someone kick her in the gut sending her flying. Something then wraps her neck and hurls her at Naruto who catches her sound cry. Otto no Sakebi! exclaimed a man a powerful sound blast knocked the two against the concrete door the groan in pain really did Konoha and Suna really send two stupid brats. Mocked the man he then deactivated his jutsu showing himself to the two young ninjas he looked like any regular auto shinobi expect the fingers on his left hand has sound devices similar to zaku and he wields a chain kanai. The man grins darkly at the two the names ryoga the last thing you stupid brats will ever see soul bullets. Tamashi no dangan. Yells ryoga he extends his hand firing sound bullets from his finger steps. Naruto quickly tackles Tamari down narrowly avoiding the sound bullets the two look at the walls are five holes both narrowed their eyes at the man just like that guy back at the chunin exam but with his fingers, thought Naruto he then unleashes a volley of kanai at Ryoga but the man skillfully blocked each one with his kanai. Naruto quickly goes through a few hand signs he then claps his hands together wind release. Aerial wall jutsu, futon, kachu cave no jutsu yelled the two blondes Naruto released a powerful blast of wind from his lungs while she released the same blast from her two fans. Bleeding Ragnarok Technique, Ragunaroku Shuketsu no Jutsu, says Ryoga a powerful sound beam both sound and wind collide shaking the very foundation of the building even the walls themselves begun to crack under pressure. Naruto then throws a flash bomb blinding him Naruto then creates two clones each of them throws a exploding tag Tamari unleashes a gust of wind increasing the blast even more burning the man. Ryoga snarls at the two he then grins at them he then uses the snake, boar, rat, and tiger seals hiding chameleon technique. Kamiran o Kakusu no Jutsu says Ryoga he then turns invisible he then charges at the two he then charges at the two knocking Tamari to the side he then knees Naruto in the gut then uppercut him he then grabs Naruto by his jumpsuit he then punched him the gut knocking the wind out of him. This blow had sent the blonde flying Naruto then screams in pain as the kanai stabs him in the gut you're done for brat. Says Ryoga you can even hear the smugness in his voice. He then yanks the kanai back wrapping his hand around Naruto's throat sound technique. Demon Knight. Auto Jutsu. Oni no Uda. Whispered Ryoga Naruto then released a silent scream as his eardrums are assaulted by a powerful sound blast his ears and nose begin to bleed. Get your damn hands off him twin whirlwind. Futago no Senpu. Yells an enraged Tamari she unleashes a powerful blast of wind knocking him away from Naruto her teal eyes glare hardly at the invisible man I don't know where he is but with this it should NT matter. Wind release. Blades of spirit technique. Futon. Seishin no ha jutsu, yells Tamari she unleashes a volley of wind blades Ryoga tries his best to deflect them but he isn't able to deflect all of them he snarls as his cuts appear on him. 
With him taking that much damage his chameleon jutsu deactivated he glared at her seeing blood dripping from his body you damn bitch you'll pay for that slicing serpent. Hubi osurai susuru. Says Ryoga he then twirls the blade slicing the roof he then grins and attacking her with sound blades blades she released a scream in pain as the sound based blades cut into her he then blast her with a sound blast that throws her to the ground he then grins at the two children. He then walks to the down Tamari and glared at her I really hate kids. Says Ryoga he then picks her up by her he then wraps his his chain kanai around her neck she punched him in the face but it doesn't even seem to phase him you were foolish to think you can beat me you will die like fools. Grinned Ryoga as he tightened the chain. Tamari's eyes begun to water Naruto looks up seeing Ryoga strange Tamari stop it, let her go, yells Naruto. Ryoga grins at the down Naruto no, I don't think so I think after I kill the bitch ill have some fun with her. Grins Ryoga darkly with a perverted look in his eyes Tamari looked at him with fear the man then grabs her by breast roughly cackling darkly. This angered Naruto even more a red cloak then begins to cover him sensing the foul chakra he turns and sees Naruto entering his two failed Kyubi cloak, Naruto grits his teeth in raw unadulterated anger you bastard, let Tamari chan go, roared Naruto he then charges at Ryoga with blinding speed the man then coughs out blood and drops Tamari who begins to cough. The auto shinobi looks down noticing he's been cut damn it poison, mutters Ryoga he then falls face down throwing up blood. The biju cloak vanishes and Naruto falls to his knees and stares at his hands in shock oh my god I, I killed him but he was evil and he was. Gonna tem ughh, groaned Naruto as he was tackled by a yellow blur he soon finds himself smothered by a hugging Tamari she keeps muttering thank you she then surprised herself and himself by kissing him on his cheek both blondes blush crimson red. Realizing what she just did she jumps away looking away and failing to hide her deep red blush right um, thank, you again, for, uh, saving me Naruto, says a blushing Tamari who twirls one of her pigtails. Naruto who also blushing rubs the back of his head um, it was no, problem Tamari-chan, it'll always protect you, says a blushing Naruto with that being said Tamari's face matches the same color of her brother's hair Tamari could have her heart stopped a full beat. Cough, cough, you stupid kids, groaned Ryoga he slowly rises to his feet glaring at the blonde duo he then digs into his pocket pulling out with a syringe that contains purple liquid with this ill make you and your suna whore smirked Ryoga he then coughs up blood and grins darkly at the two who glare at him kukuku, after I killed you ill think ill torture that sand whore, kukuku, just thinking about is exhilarating, grins Ryoga in a perverted manner. Just before he injects the syringe into his neck Naruto's kusarigama cuts off his hand, while this happened in a split second but for the auto shinobi it happened in slow motion, he stares at his now missing hand in shock Tamari throws one of her fans at Ryoga the fan pierced Ryoga in the throat the man collapsed to the ground choking on his own blood. Jiraiya vs Gurren Gurren grins at the toad sage as his kanai clashes with her crystal blade the aged shinobi grits his teeth in annoyance as the kanai begins to crystallize he quickly throws the weapon to the side Orochimaru may be a bastards but he sure knows how to pick his soldiers. Thought Jiraiya weapons seems useless against her and some element ninjutsu after all, he just witnessed her turning his mud dragon into a crystallized snake. I have to say I am impressed I've seen my share of unique keke jenke but I've never seen a crystal user before, you could become a great kunoichi for the village, says Jiraiya with a smirk. And coming from a sanin that means a lot but flattery won't help you says Gurren she slashed at him Jiraiya ducks down and open palms her in the stomach she then hurls crystallized shuriken. Jiraiya takes a sealing paper and watches as the weapons get sealed away his hair hardened he then unleashes his needle hair senbon at the woman she quickly summons a crystal shield she narrowed her eyes as the crystal slowly begins to crack, if earth release ninjutsu won't work then maybe this will work, thought Jiraiya he quickly makes a clone and releases his fire release, toad oil flame bullet, Kaden, Gamayu Enden. Gurren grits her teeth as more cracks from around the shield she then goes through the hand signs of bird, ox, horse, snake, boar, and his crystal relays. Crushing Jade Hunter. Shodan. Hisui Hanta o Funsai. Says Gurren a crystallized wolf merges from the shield and meets his flame jutsu head on a huge explosion occurs blocking their vision causes Gurren to narrow her eyes. Jiraiya grins at this summoning. Toad mouth bind. Kachiyose. Gamaguchi Shibari. It's over now there's no escape. 
says Jiraiya the stomach then begins to bind the woman no matter how much she struggles she then uses her crystal release it soon begins crystallize the inside of the road but Jiraiya charges at her with a Rasengan ramming it into her but but instead of blowing her back she then shatters in jade crystals. A clone, mutters Jiraiya he watches as the crystal clone begins to laugh in a mocking manner. Sorry to disappoint you Sanin but I have no interest in getting captured but don't worry I am sure we'll meet again someday says the clone she then shatters into pieces Jiraiya glares at the shattered crystals. Jiraiya growls in frustration uh, well that's not a good sign and Haim Chan want likes, hopefully, the brats have better luck than I do, says Jiraiya as he rubs the back of his head with a sigh. Sometime later Jiraiya meets up with his students finds himself surprised not just because they found the document but the shape his students are in, I take it you hit a few bumps too? asked the aged man. The two their head agreement yeah, that's the understatement of the year, thought Tamari she turns to Naruto who dogs into his jumpsuit taking out a syringe their sensei raised an eyebrow at this ajunin we fought was about to inject himself before Tamari chan and I took the bastard out. Says Naruto with a wide grins on his face the fan user's cheeks becomes pink thanks to Naruto's praise. Jiraiya grins at this and have his students with a smug smirk, he snickers at the two ooh, is it Tamari chan now, eh? You sure move fast brat, giggled Jiraiya in a perverted manner he could already smell inspiration for his novel whatever thoughts for his smut novel were banished as Jiraiya is hit by Tamari's and Naruto's weapon. Get your head of the gutter, quit being a perv, yelled the two glaring at him daring the seasoned ninja to continue with his perverted ways. Especially after dealing with Ryoga neither of the two were in no mood to deal with their sensei's usual perverted ways, anyways. When Naruto used his Kusarigama and the enemy went down we thought we was down but he had another surprise but he got full of himself allowing Naruto to cut his hand off and myself to finish the job, but he believed whatever was in it will give him a complete edge over us, says Tamari. It didn't take a genius to realize something else had happened Jiraiya knew this wasn't the place not time to ask, but it seemed whatever they want to not only force Naruto to take his first kill after all the poison covering the Kusarigama is highly poisonous but it seemed whatever the two went through had also brought them closer together. While teasing the two does sound like fun they were still on a mission oh, well ill just find out what happened later, thought Jiraiya he then summons a small toad and husbands him the documents and the syringe give these to Haim-chan, ordered the Sanin the small toads nods his head and shots a curious gaze at the syringe the kids retrieved it from the enemy might be some kind of drug, says Jiraiya when dealing with Orochimaru you never what you're truly dealing with. Sure thing Jiraiya, says the small toad it soon vanished in a puff of smoke. Now let's get you to matched up, after all, not everyone can heal fast, said Jiraiya but this was more directed to Naruto. Two days. Later Tamari lowers her fans as Naruto lower his on the desert Kunoichi turns to Jiraiya who's writing in a small notebook but doesn't like the one he uses for his Icha Icha series have you got a message from my village? Asked Tamari from those two days they had already got pay and a congratulations from Konoha but she hasn't heard back from her home. Not yet but I should be expecting a message from them any day now, says Jiraiya he watches as she smiles at this no doubt missing her brothers sure her conqueror weren't close to Gara because of his former psychotic persona but even back then she loves her brother. Get Eki Senen, remember when you and Toad Boss you used that big fire jutsu? Asked Naruto Jiraiya knew which jutsu he was talking about I was thinking of doing that but with a poison fog, says Naruto Jiraiya grins at this while Tamari looks on impressed. That's not a bad idea, kid. I was waiting till much later but no time like the present, says his he then turns to the female blonde and you'll also be doing cooperation ninjutsu we can work with both toads and weasel, says Jiraiya causing both to smile but first I watched to teach you a seal, says Jiraiya. Really what kind of seal? asked Naruto, the fire sealing method, Fuka Hoin, it's a seal that allows you to deal away any fire ninjutsu even Itachi's Amerterasu, said Jiraiya. Amerterasu? What's that? Asked Naruto, it's the next next step of the Mangekyu Sharingan. The only way to achieve it is to kill yourself best friend or a family member dying. Says Jiraiya Tamari looks on in disgust while Naruto doesn't look too happy either in exchange of such commit it also said person eyes to evolve every Uchiha who'd unlocked their own unique ability. Shisui Itachi's best friend can use Koto Amatsukami as a dojutsu that casts a powerful yet subtle mind controlling Genjutsu on the target the ninjutsu is so powerful you wouldn't even know it or aware you were being controlled you would you believe each action you took was of your own choosing, 
says Jiraiya it was safe to say neither then wanted to go up against someone like Shisui. Itachi's Mangekyu have gave him the Sukuyomi it traps them in an illusion of his design. Through his unprecedented ability to alter target's perception of time, he uses Sukuyomi to subject victims to days worth of torture in a matter of seconds and it gave him the Amerterasu a technique that allows him to command black flames once created, the flames will not stop burning until their target is completely incinerated, the flames cannot be extinguished with water, the passage of time or any other normal methods. Only the user can put the flames out, explained Jiraiya. Which is why it's important you to learn the Fuka Hoin when we meet up with Itachi and his blue friend you'll have a way to deal with Amerterasu. Now watch carefully I am going to show you the hand signs, says Jiraiya he uses the hand signs of rat, bird, technique specific seal, tiger he then begins to show them the sealing formula. He watches as both write the sealing formula and activate the scroll he then fires a lower level fire jutsu and watches as both scrolls seal away the small flames. Naruto with a huge grin jumps around in excitement while Tamari smiles to herself at learning something new. Now I'll be back I need to head back to Mount Mayoboku, to see if they have any toads that specialize in poison use this time to relax and take a break you two need it, says Jiraiya he then reversed summoned himself heading back to the home of the toads. Tamari turns and sees Naruto reading the Fuinjutsu book and chuckles at this even giving time to relax the blonde still trying to improve himself, Naruto. I know we never talked about it but seeing as we're alone I think it's important we have to discuss something, says Tamari. Naruto quickly becomes stiff and his went wide crap. That's right in front of her, thought a frantic Naruto he then blushes remembering the hug and kiss it was the rare for him getting a hug from a girl and kiss well he got a kiss from the snow demio Koyuki but he was unconscious and the only type of affection he received from a girl his age is Sakura's fist it also helped that Tamari was far more cute than Sakura. Seeing he was still paying attention to her she continues on so that red chakra was Kayubi's right? Ask Tamari he just nods his head can you control it? Ask Tamari. I've only went up to two tails so far I am still in control, says Naruto. She smiles at this well I am happy you'd use it, says the female blonde. Really you are? Asked a shocked Naruto. She nods her head and smiles at the Uzumaki and places his hand on her shoulder well. Yeah if you had an ID rather not think about, s, um, I am not used to saying this but, um, thank you, Naruto-kun, says a blushing Tamari. Naruto cheeks become a deep scarlet cute, blurted Naruto Tamari blushes she then gains a nervous smile and mutters a thank you, I am just happy you're safe Tamari-chan, I can't want let anything to my precious people, says Naruto she smiles even brighter at this. Why why you think I am precious, asked Tamari. He flashed her one of his famous grin sure, of course. I wouldn't ask for another partner I mean you're so cool, amazing, and smart. You're defiantly the coolest girl I've met. You're even more cuter than Sakura and Ino, exclaimed Naruto. Feeling the affect of the infamous Uzumaki grin made the sand kunoichi heart skip a few beats sure many people have commented her skills but no boy had ever commented on her looks. She leans in and kissed his whiskered cheek that's for saving myself and for saving my brother. Just so you know that Sakura girl is an idiot for chasing Sasuke, says Tamari leaving Naruto frozen and no doubt his own heartbeat skip a few beats he even forgot to breath for a few seconds. The two smile at each other the two quickly jump back as Jiraiya had returned with another toad he looks at the two noticing Naruto is a blushing mess while Tamari tries to put on a strong face ee ee. These brats are gold. Ah ha ha. The next ICHAICHA series well write itself thanks to these two brats, thought Jiraiya. This is Gamakaso, the son of Fukasaku and Shima you meet him his parents later, he specialize in poison his poison ninjutsu is considered the best, says Naruto. Gamakaso his size is comparable to that of a human's. Though he is noted to being slightly bigger than the average male, his skin color is mahogany brown, an effect transcribed through the combination of his mother's purple skin color and his father's green skin color respectively, unlike Fukasaku, however. He does not possess any noticeable facial hair his eyes also bear striking resemblance to his father's. Bright yellow in color with a noticeable black rectangular shape swimming in the center. A trait that displays his mastery over the element of senjutsu, he also coats his lips in a thick coating of lipstick. Utilizing the dark purple shade of his mother, Shima, he wears an elongated black cloaks that extend past the wearer's own knees. Beneath the dark cloak lies Gamakaso's true attire comprised of a black kimono and complete with a pair of noble shinobi sandals, 
A white obi sash is tied around his waist, holding together his set of stone katana. Naruto cheeks become a deep scarlet cute, blurted Naruto Tamari blushes she then gains a nervous smile and mutters a thank you, I am just happy you're safe Tamari chan, I can't want let anything to my precious people, says Naruto she smiles even brighter at this. Why why you think I am precious, asked Tamari, he flashed her one of his famous grin sure, of course, I wouldn't ask for another partner I mean you're so cool, amazing, and smart. You're defiantly the coolest girl I've met. You're even more cuter than Sakura and Ino!" exclaimed Naruto. Feeling the affect of the infamous Uzumaki grin made the sand kunoichi heart skip a few beats sure many people have commented her skills but no boy had ever commented on her looks, she leans in and kissed his whiskered cheek that's for saving me and for saving my brother, just so you know that Sakura girl is an idiot for chasing Sasuke says Tamari leaving Naruto frozen and no doubt his own heartbeat skip a few beats he even forgot to breath for a few seconds. The two smile at each other the two quickly jump back as Jiraiya had returned with another toad he looks at the two noticing Naruto is a blushing mess while Tamari tries to put on a strong face ee ee, these brats are gold, ah ha ha. The next ICHA ICHA series well write itself thanks to these two brats, thought Jiraiya he then slams his hand on the ground summoning a large toad. This is Gamakaso, the son of Fukasaku and Shima you meet him his parents later, he specialize in poison his poison ninjutsu is considered the best, says Jiraiya. Gamakaso his size is comparable to that of a human's. Though he is noted to being slightly bigger than the average male, his skin color is mahogany brown, an effect transcribed through the combination of his mother's purple skin color and his father's green skin color respectively, unlike Fukasaku, however. He does not possess any noticeable facial hair his eyes also bear striking resemblance to his father's. Bright yellow in color with a noticeable black rectangular shape swimming in the center. A trait that displays his mastery over the element of senjutsu, he also coats his lips in a thick coating of lipstick, utilizing the dark purple shade of his mother, Shima. He wears an elongated black cloaks that extend past the wearer's own knees, beneath the dark cloak lies Gamakaso's true attire comprised of a black kimono and complete with a pair of noble shinobi sandals. A white obi sash is tied around his waist, holding together his set of stone katana. The large toad bows at Naruto it is an honor to meet you, Naruto-san, says Gamakaso. Recap end Naruto then gets the finally this toad was a big deal and gives the large road about a nice to meet you, says Naruto after all it probably wouldn't do him any good pissing this toad off he has a feeling this toad is far more stronger Gamabunta he also didn't want to test Gamakaso's temper especially if it was anything like Gamabunta's temper. Gamakaso smirks at Jiraiya well, the boy has more respect than you Jiraiya and he seems far more promising. Mocked the human size causing Jiraiya to pour at the son of the toad sage this causes Naruto to snicker at Jiraiya the large toad then turns to Naruto and a member of the Uzumaki clan. You know how to pick your students, exclaimed the smirking toad. You know about the Uzumaki clan, exclaimed the surprised Naruto ever since he left Konoha he still hasn't found any scrolls of the Uzumaki which greatly disappointed. Gamakaso chuckles at Naruto causing Naruto's own temper to flare up everyone knows who the Uzumaki clan, they along with the Senju and Uchiha clans were the most strongest clan in the world. Exclaims Gamakaso Naruto quickly glares at Jiraiya who quickly looked the other way whistling no reason to be angry at Jiraiya it was the Hokage's orders many people would kill and kidnap to get their hands on Uzumaki. I have an idea if you impress me I'll tell you what I know and I'll teach you a jutsu, deal? asked Gamakaso he knew it was against the Hokage's border but he didn't really care. Naruto looked at Gamakaso in confusion before grinning to himself whatever it is I am ready, says Naruto punching his palm. I hope so, if you can force me to use one ninjutsu I'll hold up on my promise, says Gamakaso pulling out both of his stone swords now let's see what you got son of Minato, thought the sage toad. Naruto grins widely at the toad he charges at Gamakaso with his Kusarigama Gamakaso swipes Naruto who ducks low he then throws a smoke bomb his face Naruto slams an ad kick on him but Gamakaso uses the flat side of his sword to push him back. The blonde teen then makes a dozen clones but this didn't away him to Naruto's surprised Gamakaso destroys each of the clones with his large swords in a matter of seconds but with destroying each clone caused a large smokescreen as it clears up Naruto comes crashing down with a Rasengan. 
Gamakaso uses his tongue to wrap itself around Naruto's waist and tosses him to the side you'll have to do better than that. Exclaimed Gamakaso he then appears in front of Naruto and elbows him in his head sending him to the ground Naruto quickly jumps back nearly avoiding being crushed but Gamakaso picks Naruto up by the foot with his tongue and roses him to the side. The toad a charges Naruto hitting him in the gut with his with his foot causing Naruto gasping for air Naruto grits his teeth in pain and unleashes a volley of wind blades Gamakaso use the blunt side to take the damage the large road appears in front of him and slams the sword down Naruto quickly substitutes himself with a piece of free bark Gamakaso looks everywhere with a grin cheeky brat. Exclaimed Gamakaso he punches his hand through the Ground removing Naruto from the ground the blonde child then grins confusing him he then notices a paper bomb attached to him he exploded Gamakaso eyes widened as he feel 10 shadows above him he looks up seeing down clones each with their own Rasengan Gamakaso then throws his stone sword destroying each clone he then uses his tongue to literally gut punch Naruto sending him falling to the ground grinning at the groaning Naruto who lost his breathe. Yo, Naruto you dead? Asked Gamakaso, not dead, just need to get up groaned Naruto. Gamakaso picks his sword up and stands into the group and sends rocks at him well, get up faster, says Gamakaso he then hits more rocks sending them at him. Naruto then clasps his hands together wind release. Aerial wall technique, futon. Kachu cave no jutsu. Exclaims Naruto the wind blast destroy the rocks. Gamakaso then uses his sword to block the attack put. It pushes him back Gamakaso jumps high in the air he then wraps his tongue around Naruto but the blonde Uzumaki swings his sickle and wraps the chain around his left arm and face Gamakaso then uses his right hand to attack him but a clone rises from the ground wrapping a chain around his forearm the Naruto in front of him then uses the chain to trap his arm pulling him tightly the two clones tug a few more times bringing him to the ground a few other Naruto's rise from the ground pinning his other limbs with a chain sickle. Five Naruto then charge at him with a Rasengan other threes others came at him with their Kusarigama and channels wind nature through the blade while two other clones release a volley of wind slashes. Gamakaso puffs out his cheeks and channels water nature through himself water release. Gunshot, Sweden. Tepodama, exclaimed Gamakaso firing a giant water projectile that rivals the size of Gamabunta's own Tepodama. The real Naruto and his clones are then sent flying sending the poor boy to the tree I guess you brat. Gamabunta did say you have lazy luck, says Gamakaso. Jiraiya laughs loudly you don't know the half of it, but never against the brat, says Jiraiya he seen Naruto go through and beating the odds, he also looks Naruto with pride before coming on the training trip he would just send as many clones as possible and now he's actually has them coordinated. Naruto grins on pain as the very ground felt like it was ringing he then looks and sees a smirking Gamakaso told Yaolvito it, Naruto Uzumaki never give dadbeo, grins Naruto. If you have that much energy then you can use it to train. And I did promise to tell you about the Uzumaki clan. Just like the Uchiha clan has many temples so does the Uzumaki clan came containing ancient scrolls and sacred artifacts. Both Ashina and Mito were the strongest of the clan. Ashina was a master swordsman. Funajutsu master and his ninjutsu was powerful and a master in water release and Mito was the Hokage's wife and fought with him against Madara her skill in Fuinjutsu is so powerful shed seal the nine tails in herself. She was skilled in medical ninjutsu, she had chakra chains which can even contain a biju, and she talented in both fire and water release, says Gamakaso Naruto smiles at this and with Jiraiya training him in Fuinjutsu he was already on his way becoming close to his fallen clan but he another goal to retrieve any Uzumaki artifacts he finds. Now, that's out of the way let's get to training, we'll be creating a water ninjutsu and some poison ninjutsu. It'll be teaching you water release, high pressured impact, Sweden. Koatsu. This technique allows the user to create a spiral of water on both hands of the user and fires it with great speed dealing a great amount of damage to the enemy and poison mist. Dokugiri. This allows you to create a poisonous mist but together it makes water release. Poison water bomb. Sweden. Dokuden, said Gamakaso Naruto is then literally bouncing on his feet. While Gamakaso was busy with training Naruto Jiraiya and Kamatari the two decided Tamari should try learning at least one defensive ninjutsu Jiraiya advises she learns a Sotone and the summoner agreed after all she was the daughter of Rasa so the chances of her having his affinity over earth and water release was pretty high. Jiraiya decided to teach her earth release. 
Dust Storm, Doden, Sajinarashi, which requires the use of the hand signs of monkey, ram, snake, hands clapped together. This ability allow the user to slam their hands on the ground, generating a large amount of soil, which is launched and manipulated towards the opponent as a fast wave with crushing force. While Kamatari plans to teach her the violent whirlwind, Resenpu, the user produces a powerful stream of wind from their mouth. Tamari pants heavily as she sends a small layer of soil she rolled the sweat from her forehead while she was getting tired of practicing the Doden ninjutsu she this is something to help her and Naruto she then blushes remembering the kiss she gave him maybe it was the best of the moment but she did meant what she said about Sakura. Sure Sasuke was cute but he was traitor and had caused his classmates to be put in the hospital hell they were lucky to be alive expect for Shikamaru all head has a broken finger while the others were much different she remembers Gara telling her about Kimimaru and was surprised there was yet another person capable of challenging her brother but it seems like ever since Rock Lee had been her brothers there has been others to hurt him like Sasuke Uchiha, Naruto Uzumaki, and the bone user. While Naruto hasn't the silent cool type like Sasuke or was some genius like Shikamaru but he was loyal, and someone who has a strong drive and she likes his eyes and whiskers he definitely wasn't the smartest but she's glad to have him by her side and at least he isn't lazy or arrogant but you can trust him to always be there when you need him she can't say she could see Shikamaru or any of the other guys to go as far as Naruto have gone plus Shikamaru seems lazy to put in the extra work but the blonde Jinchuriki was cute in his own way it did make her heart flutter when he said she was precious to him. She honestly felt like Sakura was a fool for liking Sasuke sure he was cute but that didn't make up for arrogance or his superior complex which is something she couldn't stand and he was traitor. She really hoped Shell wake up to realize Sasuke isn't the type to care for others hell if he was from Sanagakure they'd kill. Her eyes glances over to Naruto watching him get propelled back I really hope he realizes Sasuke isn't worth it. But if Gara was in Sasuke's place I would do anything to bring him back the other differences of Gara had became rogue was that he's my brother, thought Tamari she really hopes Gara is taking care of himself. Thinking about her brothers had only driven more I am the daughter of Cage so, giving up isn't an option, thought Tamari she rises to her feet and goes through the various hand signs and performs the earth ninjutsu once again the soil she was able to generate was for bigger than before causing her to grin at herself. Jiraiya grins to himself he had to admit she potential hell he would say she has enough potential to be one of the strongest kunoichi in her village, but training him and Tamari had reminded his time training Yahiko, Nagato, and Conan this also caused him to be sad ever since heard the rebels had died Jiraiya always blamed himself for death of his students he always wished he stayed a longer or at least brought the children back to the village. This time he'll make sure both of them reached their goal, I want them fail like I did with the aim kids and Minato. Thought Jiraiya plus he was sure if anything happened to any of the kids Tsunade and Gara would not only kill him but take turns plus he knew Minato and Kashina would kill him in the afterlife. Jiraiya grins widely as he watches turns to Naruto who had successfully mastered the water ninjutsu he watches with pride as two large boulders have smashed through them reducing to small pebbles he then felt sorry for the poor rocks. Gamakaso smirks at the boy congratulations kid, you mastered the water release, high pressured impact, Sweden. Koatsu, now on to the next ninjutsu is poison mist. Dokugiri, says Gamakaso he then shows Naruto the hand signs for snake, boar, ram, and horse Gamakaso puffs out his cheeks and launches a purple mist of poison, after a few tries with clones he had finally learned but of course this had left him exhausted Gamakaso decided to allow the boy to rest. Naruto turns to look at Tamari and is amazed that she too bad learned the earth ninjutsu she too seemed to be resting no doubt exhausted from learning an affinity she wasn't too familiar plus not everyone is a stamina monster like him. Ever since the one-sided fight with Tenten he was amazed plus at time he thought she was pretty he still thinks she is now and he did like her eyes it kinda reminded him of the ocean. Is that your girlfriend? asked Gamakaso causing to jump with shock. Naruto's face becomes a deep shade of red she isn't my girlfriend, exclaimed Naruto. Really could have fooled me, that's a pity you two look good together, says Gamakaso. BB but I don't like Tamari-chan I like Sakura-chan, says Naruto who's still red as a tomato he then runs the cheek where Tamari kiss I don't like Tamari-chan she's just a friend, thought Naruto. Kayubi scoffed at Naruto rolling his eyes at his jailer if she's only a friend then why are you blushing? teased Kayubi he then decides to take nap, 
The giant fox does have a valid point Tamari had treated hundred times better than his pink-haired teammate and she never hit him unless he deserved it plus he was scared what Gara and Konkuro might do. Naruto then begins telling Gamakaso about his crush on Sakura and Gamakaso looks at Naruto like he's the planet's biggest idiot I think you're an idiot. Exclaimed Gamakaso he had say this Tamari girl was far better than his teammate. Hey, exclaimed Naruto. I also think you're a glutton for punishment I say you should ask her out, you are a ninja after all you have no idea what might be your last mission, the last thing you want is regret, said Gamakasu. But we're from two different villages, said Naruto. Not right now you errant, right now you are on a training trip with one of the strongest sanin, plus who cares if you are from two different villages, exclaimed Gamakasu causing Naruto to smile he was right though who cares if they were from two different villages he just didn't want it to feel awkward if she said no plus she was so cool and smart and he was just an idiot. His eyes then turned back to Tamari who turned to look. At him she simply smiles and waves at the blonde Uzumaki to grin back at her who blushes he in return seeing her blush maybe he did have a thing for the fan user or maybe he was just an idiot he honestly had no idea what was going on in his head maybe the fight the two of them had was still fresh in his mind or maybe everything is just moving far too fast for him ever since the passing of Sandame Hokage it felt like his life has just been spinning out of control. Okay. Naruto let's begin with the collaboration technique. Advices Gamakaso Naruto nods his head with a grin he rises to his feet with excitement. Right let's do this. Water release. High pressured impact, Sweden. Koatsu, exclaimed Naruto creating a spiral of water on both hands. Gamakaso puffed out his cheeks and expelling a poison most from his lungs water release. Poison water bomb. Sweden. Dokuden. Roared Naruto the high pressure poisoned water hit a tree it not only destroyed the tree but had also began to melt the tree Naruto grins widely at this and pumps his fist high in the air. They then turned towards Tamari and Kamatari channel wind affinity through their lungs violent whirlwind. Resenpu. Says Tamari the two create a powerful stream of wind that literally knocks over numerous amounts of trees. Naruto looks on with a wide expression I need to remember not to piss her off thought Naruto he honestly thought she might actually kill him if he did something increasingly stupid doctor help him if he even decided to do something perverted there was no doubt in his mind that Tamari scares him more than Sakura ever did. Hey Naruto you want to learn some fuinjutsu, right? Asked the sage toad Naruto dumbly nods his head this causes Gamakaso to smirk good. There's two other jutsu I want to teach you sealing technique. Devouring void, fuinjutsu. Machu ni boido and barrier of decapitation, Awuwoku no Jomen. The Machu ni Boido concentrates the user's chakra into a circular ring and forms the dragon hand seal at its center. You then raises the ring into the air above your head and releases the hand seal. A dark vortex is then created which acts as a void and sucks the targets into the center of the vortex. Everything that gets sucked into the vortex gets crushed by tremendous forces and shoots out from the other side, said Gamakaso shocking Naruto this technique was also an rank technique. As for the barrier of decapitation, Awawoku no Jomen, it uses the hand seals of hair, horse, and boar the technique is very simple but efficient you basically a barrier that is created around the head of the opponent. That then cuts their head clean off, says Gamakaso the road decided to teach Naruto the Awawoku no Jomen since it was much easier to learn Gamakaso created several earth statues to practice on Naruto uses the necessary hand seals it only really took three tries Gamakaso wasn't quite surprised it only took the boy three attempts she to both parents being Fuinjutsu master so it only made since Fuinjutsu would come easier for him. Naruto grins widely as he used the jutsu he then gains a sweat drop at the destroyed statues he then uses the seals once again and he watches a dark blue barrier appears around the statue's head the statue's head is then cut clean off hell yeah. I am on my way to becoming a seal master. I am catching up to you Sasuke. Dadbeo. Yells Naruto causing Gamakaso to snicker at the hyper not while the others just shook their head at the excited boy. Now the next one will be a little tricky. It is an A-rank jutsu after all make about 40 clones and split them into a group of 10. Ordered Gamakaso Naruto nods his head creating a large group of he then split them into various of groups. Each of them concentrate their chakra into a circular ring and uses the dragon hand seal at the center Naruto and his clones raised the ring above their heads and releases the hand seal. Some of the clones were able to get the ring above their heads while others weren't these clones were quickly replaced. 
Naruto narrowed his eyes as he struggles to have the circle stay above him before it vanishes for each time. He fails he quickly tries again from scratch he then tries to focus more chakra in his hand he grins as he's able to get it above his head without vanishing a dark vortex then slowly appears he grins but with him losing concentration it vanishes causing the Kyubi Jinchuriki be grown in frustration. Naruto is then forced to create the same amount of clones since the ones before were destroyed he then repeated the process again okay. So far so good mumbles naruto he watches with cautiously as a dark vortex begins to form while some others had vanished since they couldn't stabilize the vortex others were able to get it to stay naruto grins vigorously as the vortex is fully formed naruto and his clones test the vortex they created by throwing rocks sticks and anything they can find they watch as the items that they had thrown were crushed with an insane amount of force and it shot out of the other side each of the clones vanished Naruto raised his fist high in the air with pride his celebration is then put on hold as he collapsed on the ground. Gamakaso then turns to Jiraiya who's walking over carrying an equaling exhausted Tamari you got some promising kids Jiraiya, said Gamakaso. Jiraiya grins at Gamakaso yeah, don't I? Says Jiraiya he then smiles warmly at the sleeping Jiraiya I think the Naruto might be able to do it. That's Jiraiya watching his godson sleep. Learn sage mode. The very thing you weren't able to master? Asked Gamakaso unlike Minato who was actually able to learn sage mode Jiraiya wasn't he needed the help from his parents to use it but even then Jiraiya didn't really use it mostly because he hasn't fought anyone to force him to use it and the man didn't like how it made him unappealing to women. That and maybe he can do what Minato and I couldn't, says Jiraiya. Oh, you mean to achieve peace right? Asked Gamakaso he knew achieving peace was Jiraiya's dream even before signing the Toad contract peace had always been his dream sure threat to achieve peace had changed from the years but the goal had always been the same to live in a world that is no longer plagued by war and hatred a world where people understand each other while he didn't care for his perverted side he still respected the man. Jiraiya nods his head yeah, I believe he could do it, you know every time I look at him I can't help but to see his father, Yahiko and Nagato he reminds me so much of them it's almost scary, said Jiraiya with a small chuckle there had been a few times where he almost called him Yahiko but to be fair he just looked like Yahiko. Gamakaso then gains a serious look on his face so, when you gonna tell him? You know the longer you wait he's just going to be angry with you, says Gamakaso. Yeah, I know he'll tell him when he wakes up, I've waited too long I failed to look after him but I won't fail this time says Jiraiya looking at the sleeping child Naruto is then replaced with a sleeping Minato he really is Minato's kid. Minato would also pass out from training all day, thought Jiraiya even back when he taught his team Minato was always a hard worker always trying to improve himself. Gamakaso nods head at Jiraiya ya no I've always liked your first book the tale of the utterly gutsy shinobi better than that smut carp you write, maybe you should start writing it again, the kid might start to respect more if you write something better. Call me if shit hits the fan or if you need me to train Naruto I can see why Gamabunta and Gamakichi like him so much, says Gamakaso with a puff of smoke he returned back to Mount Mayoboku. Jiraiya just shook his head with a smile while he had thought about training Naruto in sage art he wanted to wait a little while right now felt too soon maybe after they returned to Konoha hell teach him, right now he wants to teach Naruto the Hiriishin no Jutsu first before sage art, while he couldn't make heads or tails of the technique he knew Naruto could master it. Jiraiya then picks up Naruto and drops him on his shoulder the white-haired Sanin then grins mischievous. Naruto snuggles into his pillow he can't remember the last time he had such a great sleep even his bed back home wasn't this comfortable even his pillow wasn't this comfortable the same could be said for the sleeping bag he slept actually even the pillow he had wasn't this warm. This then raised answers 1 when the hell was a pillow warm and 2 last time he checked pillows sure as hell didn't move Tamari had also and the same realization blue and teal stare in shock both teens turn bright red. NN Naruto what th the hell are you doing in my bed? exclaimed the blushing fan user. IIDD don't KNKN no. yells Naruto the last thing he could remember was successfully learning sealing technique. Devouring void. Fuenjutsu. Machu ni boido and then everything became black. Their blush becomes brighter as they realize they are holding each other quite intimately the two quickly jump away from each other Naruto then hears an all to familiar sound of giggling and pencil the two and finds Jiraiya giggling away and writing in his book damn you arrow senin. Yelled Naruto he then throws various of scrolls and books at his sensei. 
Jiraiya easily avoids them until Naruto throws one Tamari's fans at his head causing him to call back in pain repent pervert. Yelled Tamari slamming her giant fan into him causing him to plummet to the ground and no doubt the blow would impress Tsunade Tamari crosses her arms turning away from him stupid pervert. Muttered Tamari she then blushes at how warm she felt being held by Naruto. She turns to look at him and notices he's also blushing no doubt the boy then realized the pillow he was actually laying on was her chest she then turns to glare at him pointing her fan at him the blush vanished is then replaced with fear you better not follow in his footsteps. Said Tamari the tone promised pain. Naruto shook his negatively id never peep on you like Aero Senen, Tamari Chan. I am not like him and Kakashi Sensei said naruto she lowered her weapon and satisfied with the answer naruto might not be the smartest person in the fire country but he wasn't dumb enough to peek on tamari and he was afraid what her brothers would to him if they found out tamari chan definitely scarier than sakura thought tamari she didn't even need to yell at him just a stern look from the kunoichi scares him more than an angry sakura or ino tamari then notices naruto has been staring at her for some time she raised an eyebrow at her fellow what you looking at Asked Tamari she had to admit the way he was looking at her felt different than home back at Sanagakure people would always looks at her with either fear of respect they respected her for her skills as a kunoichi but also fear her for being Gara's sister and being the daughter of the Yandaimi K's cage so making friends seemed more like pipe dream but with how Naruto is staring it wasn't the stares she got from the people home it almost seemed like admiration. Naruto's face then becomes so red you could literally cook an egg in his head, ill like yo why yo your eyes stuttered a shy naruto tamari blushes running her hand through one of her pigtails whwh what about my eyes stuttered tamari naruto had once again took her out of her comfort zone it made her felt young the last time someone had complimented was her mother and uncle naruto looks down at his feet he then gains the courage to look in her in the eyes even though his legs are shaking with nervousness see they remind me of the sea they're vast and beautiful just like the open shan exclaimed naruto tamari stares in shock she wondered does he even know what he actually said tt thank you nn naruto kun mumbles tamari in a low tone jiraiya giggles at the two completely ruining the moment he then gains a serious look on his face he looked at tamari then back at naruto oh well she's part of the team and she seems a good fit for naruto thought jiraiya he then takes a deep breath naruto there's something i need to tell you says a serious jiraiya both teens sense the seriousness in his voice and knew it wasn't the perverted old man who enjoy peeping and a good whorehouse no in front of them was jiraiya of the sanin jiraiya tensega into his robes taking out a picture and a book the two stare at the photo noticing jiraiya as younger in the photo but he was with three children the blonde was obviously minato namikaze while the other members looked like they could be an akamichi and possibly an uchiha they then turned towards the book and was surprised it wasn't his icha icha book the book is called the tale of the utterly gutsy shinobi it was the very first book i ever wrote it didn't sell too well because of the time period at the time but your father loved it so much he named you after the main character said jiraiya shocking naruto both blonde teens then looks at the photo in shock she stares at naruto with shock and disbelief while naruto had tears running down his face he also made me your godfather of course i didn't do such a good job honestly i have no excuse at how poorly i am as a godfather the only thing i can blame is himself and cowardly says jiraiya with a saddened look he then digs in his robe again taking out another picture it was an image of a teenaged minato and kashina even if sarutobi sensei had forbid me from taking me with you i still should have i've failed your father mother and you naruto i am sure you finally figured out why you were chosen and probably why kakashi and myself trained you you aren't just a member of the uzumaki clan but also the son of the minato namikaze you must be dis oof exclaimed jiraiya as a orange missile had crashed into him naruto then cries into jiraiya's chest bringing a smile to himself i am not alone mumbled naruto jiraiya pats the boy in the back jiraiya wipes away a soul tear the toad sanin shook his head negatively you were never alone kid i've always been watching you said jiraiya he knew it was against the law to tell Naruto but he didn't care and he was sure Tsunade didn't care he always thought hiding so much from Naruto was a horrible idea while to be fair there was a lot of things he didn't agree with his sensei like allowing Danzo to live for one thing he then turned towards Tamari who's also smiling no doubt knowing the pain of loneliness while she wasn't a Jinchuriki herself she was a sister to one and daughter of a very strict and militarized father. 
Jiraiya then extends out his arm to Mari just shrugged her shoulders with a smile and joining in on the big she smiles at how warm Naruto is and if she had to be honest she wondered is this how it feels to be hugged by a father her own father wasn't known to be very fatherly even when it came to them he was always very militarized thinking how to strengthen the village but this felt nice. You better watch where you're touching, joked Tamari. Jiraiya laughs at that maybe in a few uh, grunted Jiraiya as Naruto punched him in the ribs okay. I deserve that, muttered Jiraiya he then groans in pain again as Tamari fist is then buried in his gut causing him to groan yup. You definitely have Ross's temper and Naruto definitely has his mother's temper. The three of them separate each other Tamari then picks up the photo of his photos she then smiles she's beautiful, says Tamari showing Naruto the photo. He smiles widely at the picture of his mother she was indeed beautiful he can see why his father fell in love with her he just wishes he actually got to meet her. Naruto then turns to Jiraiya everyone back home knows don't they? Asked Naruto. The ones who really knew them yes but for everyone else no, the only ones who actually know are the clan heads and, and the advisors, said Jiraiya he didn't those old crows especially Danzo those three were stuck in the old ways refusing to ever move on with times he promised himself if Danzo ever tried to take Naruto into his root program had killed the old warhawk himself he didn't if he was necessary evil he was still evil and someone who his sensei should have taken care of decades ago. Aren't you good to get in trouble? Asked Naruto, eh, maybe? Who cares though, I live for adventure. But you know your mother had saying don't give up until the very end. Says Jiraiya she was a very high spirited woman and much like her son she was also a very skilled kunoichi back then she was one of the most skilled fuenjutsu masters earning the moniker sealing queen, fuen no ju. Tamari looks at him with a smirk you sure like to live dangerously, says Tamari. We're ninjas, says Jiraiya with a wide smirk, that's fair, said Tamari with shrugging her shoulders. Kosuke then appears in front of them shocking the two while Jiraiya smirks at the tiny messenger the toad hands him a scroll with the Sanagakure symbol. Upon seeing her village's symbol caused a smile to appear on her face. The small red amphibian then turned towards Tsunade and hands her an envelope Tamari looks confused at the small toad it's a letter from your brother. Gara, says Kosuke Tamari quickly hugged the, the envelope into her chest. With his mission complete he turned back home. Naruto smiles at Tamari he then turned to Jiraiya so, what's the mission? asked Naruto. Jiraiya grins at him land of fangs, we gotta deliver some important documents, says Jiraiya. Oh, yeah, I remember that mission, said Naruto with a nervous look. What you did? asked Tamari with a deadpan expression Naruto then told her what happened she just shook her head at Naruto you're an idiot, says Tamari causing him to laugh nervously. Unknown to them a new can be seen flying out of the room the bee then flies towards a small campsite that's only a few feet away the bug flies on a shoulder of an Iwa shinobi the man has black short spiky hair and pale skin. He has large, green, pupilous eyes and the lower half of his face was concealed by bandages. He wore a purple tunic over a black bodysuit, his hands also being covered by bandages this man is named Saun. Next to him is a female. She has long bluish colored hair which she ties in such a fashion as to form a ball on top of her head, using what appears to be a knitting needle, while two large locks with lightened tips frame the remainder of her face. Her typical attire consists of a short sleeveless dress, further adorned by the presence of numerous bandages that encircle various portions of her body, including her waist and thighs her name is Nabiki. And next to her is another female name's Hatsu is a light-skinned woman with short black hair and golden yellow eyes. Accentuated by feminine eyelashes, Hatsu is of slightly above average height with noticeably ample breasts. Both her fingernails and toenails are painted with dark red nail polish and she wears red lipstick Hatsu wears a typical Iwa Nin outfit, a brown Iwagakure style flak jacket, a red Iwagakure uniform with both sleeves and lapels over both legs, mesh armor around her shins and ankles, and standard brown Iwagakure boots, her scratched forehead protector is worn around her neck, in casual settings, her typical attire consists of a tight red dress with long kimono style sleeves and slits on the sides that reveal her legs, as well as open toed black high heeled sandals. Nabiki then turns to sound with raised eyebrows so, is that him? asked Nabiki polishing her reverse sword. Sound nods his head before he gains a sinister grin yeah, that's him alright and the children of Rasa and Minato, says the grinning sound. Hatsu then creates a clay dragonfly she stares at the roof can we kill them slow or ruthlessly? And what about the others do we tell them? 
asked Hatsu. Sound nods his head yeah, the others like to know, well kill them ruthlessly, grinned the man. With his mission complete he turned back home, Naruto smiles at Tamari he then turned to Jiraiya so, what's the mission, asked Naruto. Jiraiya grins at him land of fangs, we gotta deliver some important documents, says Jiraiya. Oh, yeah, I remember that mission, said Naruto with a nervous look. What did you do? Asked Tamari with a deadpan expression Naruto then told her what happened she just shook her head at Naruto you're an idiot, says Tamari causing him to laugh nervously. Unknown to them a new can be seen flying out of the room the bee then flies towards a small campsite that's only a few feet away the bug flies on a shoulder of an Iwa shinobi the man has black short spiky hair and pale skin, he has large, green, pupilous eyes and the lower half of his face was concealed by bandages, he wore a purple tunic over a black bodysuit, his hands also being covered by bandages this man is named Saun. Next to him is a female. She has long bluish colored hair which she ties in such a fashion as to form a ball on top of her head, using what appears to be a knitting needle, while two large locks with lightened tips frame the remainder of her face. Her typical attire consists of a short sleeveless dress, further adorned by the presence of numerous bandages that encircle various portions of her body, including her waist and thighs her name is Nabiki. And next to her is another female name's Hatsu is a light-skinned woman with short black hair and golden yellow eyes. Accentuated by feminine eyelashes, Hatsu is of slightly above average height with noticeably ample breasts. Both her fingernails and toenails are painted with dark red nail polish and she wears red lipstick Hatsu wears a typical Iwa Nin outfit, a brown Iwagakure style flak jacket. A red Iwagakure uniform with both sleeves and lapels over both legs, mesh armor around her shins and ankles, and standard brown Iwagakure boots, her scratched forehead protector is worn around her neck. In casual settings, her typical attire consists of a tight red dress with long kimono-style sleeves and slits on the sides that reveal her legs, as well as open-toed black high-heeled sandals. Nabiki then turns to sound with raised eyebrows so, is that him? Asked Nabiki polishing her reverse sword. Sound nods his head before he gains a sinister grin yeah, that's him alright and the son of Minato and daughter of Rasa, says the grinning sound. Hatsu then creates a clay dragonfly she stares at the roof can we kill them slow or ruthlessly? And what about the others do we tell them? Asked Hatsu. Sound nods his head yeah, the others like to know, well kill them ruthlessly, grinned the man. Recap end in Konoha is was just as bright and warm. Outside like any other day the only difference about. Today is that Tsunade isn't in her personal hell aka paperwork the greatest enemy of all Hokage but Tsunade isn't just drinking the day away like she would usually do besides Shizune would find out somehow she wasn't sure but the niece of Dan somehow knew she was drinking sake maybe it was due to the fact the Ravenette just knew how Tsunade is or it could be the fact that Shizune had spent her whole life with Tsunade she just knew how the blonde's mind worked. Tsunade watches as Ino tries to bring the fish back to life she had to admit this was one of Jiraiya's good idea not that the man didn't have any good ideas of was just that porn was usually on her teammate's mind, Ino had even told her about how Sakura was getting trained by Kurunai which is good since the young pinkhead does have great chakra control even Kakashi had stated she could be good in genjutsu. Tsunade is then knocked out of her thoughts by the sound of a puff she turns and sees a messenger toad who gives her a scroll Tsunade takes it and smiles at the small creature after reading the paper had brought a smile on her face she was happy to read the improvement of Naruto while she wished she could have been there for Naruto after he took his first kill she was still proud at the progress of the male Uzumaki. It even seemed like Tamari was a good influence on him which is good while she trusted Jiraiya to be able to train him she didn't want the self-proclaimed super pervert to turn Naruto into a pervert the village had enough perverts plus the world doesn't need a second Jiraiya she nearly shivered at the thought of Naruto peeping on females. Writing his own perverted book, and proclaiming himself the world's biggest pervert I swear if Naruto comes back as a pervert I am going to break every bone in that pervert's body and have Inoichi wipe his mind of anything Icha related and replace it with gay porn, thought Tsunade with an annoyed look on her face. With team Jiraiya for some Jiraiya shivered and felt true horror both Naruto and Tamari looked at their sensei with a raised eyebrow what is it? asked a curious Tamari she knew he was powerful but he was also a perverted idiot. I don't know why but I feel like I should protect my research at all cost, exclaimed Jiraiya causing both of the blondes to stare at the white-haired man with a deadpan expression. Are you sure it's not Ba-chan cursing you? 
questioned Naruto he knew with Jiraiya's hobbies he was on the receiving end of Tsunade's monster strength more than human possible. Jiraiya simply laughs at Naruto puffing out his chest with pride of course not, all the ladies can't resist me, exclaimed Jiraiya with a wide stupid grin. Tamari just rolled her eyes at Jiraiya are you sure it's not the money they want because you are as desirable as the wart toads you summon, insulted Tamari enjoying his annoyed look and muttering about disrespectful children. Naruto snickers at the glom Sanin he then grins at the female Kunoichi nice one, Tamari-chan, exclaimed Naruto smiling brightly at the daughter of the K's cage a link hue appears on her desert skin. Tamari smiles at the male finding the bright smile of Naruto cute seeing Tamari smiling at him and also made Naruto blush after all he never had a female smile at him like this before well excluding Hinata but Naruto is oblivious when it comes to the female body. Jiraiya snickers in a lecherous manner Tamari gains a tick mark on the side of her head Jiraiya then plummets to the ground Tamari smirks viciously at him while she pats her fan. Naruto chuckles at Jiraiya while Jiraiya just rubs his head mumbling about aggressive blondes he glances at the two realizing just how close they got and these two honestly reminded him of his student Minato and his wife the only difference this time is instead of a smart blonde and brash redhead there was a brash blonde and smart blonde and of course Tamari was just as scary as Kashina. Yep, Kashina would definitely like Tamari, thought Jiraiya he then chuckles knowing how Kashina would act if she was alive today. The two blondes narrowed their eyes at Jiraiya but quickly stop when they noticed it wasn't one of his perverted laughs after being around him so much they knew the man had a lot of regrets no doubt thinking about the people he couldn't save even now they knew the death of Minato and Kashina still weighed heavily on him. Naruto then gets an idea hey Jiraiya said Naruto shocking the man since he never called him by his name it was also Ichi Sanin seeing he has the attention of the road sage he decides to continue on I started reading your book, your first book I like it a lot and I think you should try to resell it, said Naruto and it was true it wasn't like the makeout tactics at all which he was very thankful since those are pretty much porn on paper. Really? You think so? asked Jiraiya after all when he tried to release the book it was a total failure. Naruto nods his head yeah. You said it didn't sell well because of the time you were in, right? Then why not try again I mean we aren't in a war? Asked Naruto and he was sure the book will sell even though he didn't know jack shit about writing he knew the tale of a gutsy ninja was a good book and he thought of it as a family heirloom. Jiraiya then smirks at his godson yeah, maybe you're brat I think I will. Grinned the perverted toad he then begins reminiscing about his younger years back when he was genin before the death of Dan and Nawaki before Orochimaru became obsessed with learning everything jutsu, and before the second ninja war those were definitely peaceful times and the time when he became sensei those were the days. Tamari then gains downed expression Naruto seeing this decided to do something that would probably get him punched into next the next time zone he reaches for her hand causing the young desert Kunoichi to jump in shock at hand contact she especially never expected Naruto to grab hold of her hand she turns to the nervous and blushing Naruto she watches as he nervously scratched his cheek um. Are you okay Tamari-chan? You look down? Asked Naruto who's surprised he's not face first with an imprint of a fan on his head. Tamari tightens her hold on his hand causing Naruto to look up at the older female and sees a look of sadness which reminded him of the look he had when he was alone with barely any friends, I miss them, I miss Gara, Konkuro, my home, says Tamari this was the first time she has been separated from them especially now with Gara's newfound look on life the moment when Gara finally stops his psychopathic ways. Naruto knew he couldn't possibly understand how she feels even though he saw Konohamaru as a younger brother and Ayame as a big sister he knew it wasn't exactly the same thing as having a real sibling. The only thing he could possibility think of was just to comfort her an idea then came to mind he grins brightly at her I have idea why don't you write to them. You can also write to your sensei too. I can send Gamakichi to deliver the letter I just need some kind of snack, says Naruto. Naruto never did like seeing his friends sad and for some reason the notion of Tamari being anything other than her usual confident self just felt wrong somehow he rather see her beautiful smile he then blushed a darker shade of red for the strange thought. Tamari smiles at the request I think I might try. It sounds like a great idea it'll be nice if they can message back I am curious how Sanagakure is doing. But why would do you need a snack? Asked a confused Tamari she really did appreciate him sure he could be an idiot at times but he really did come through he definitely reminded her of how strong he was when he fought against her brother he was someone you don't want to underestimate. 
He then gains a sheepish grin oh yeah you see Gamakichi and his brother Gamatatsu usually do what I want when I have chocolate or some type of snack at least it's better than what Gamabunta wanted when I first summoned him, said Naruto with a small laugh. What did Gamabunta wanted? Asked a curious Tamari she remembered when he summoned a tiny talking toad at first then he summoned a giant toad to battle with the fully transformed Shukaku. She and everyone paid no mind to Naruto thinking him nothing but a loud mouth brat whose ego matched the velocity of his voice. They thought the one who could come out on top would be Sasuke. But even Sasuke the last Uchiha stood no chance against her brother it really shows being a prodigy really means nothing in the ninja world then again he's nothing like Itachi or Shisui who could have easily handled her brother. She did thought he was cute but his whole attitude was definitely a turnoff she honestly didn't understand why the females in Konoha liked him so much especially the fact he betrayed the village. For Tamari Sasuke was following in Itachi's footsteps both decided to leave the village for power well the only exception was Sasuke didn't murder his own family but because of his superior complex many of his classmates were injured some even nearly died. Naruto was definitely a better catch he was loyal, you can trust him to always have your back and he was cute when he got this determined look in his eyes Tamari blushes an atomic red at the thought of her thinking Naruto was cute. He wanted me to share a drink with him, said Naruto. He can literally feel the grip on his hand tightens did you? asked Tamari in a tone of voice that promised pain. Naruto with fear laced in his very action shook his head negatively this seemed to calm her down this making her grip on his hand lessens. I told him I was too young to drink so he said when I am older well share a drink explained Naruto. That's good I don't want you picking up any of Jiraiya's habits. Said Tamari sure she respected the man for his prowess and his vast knowledge but she obviously didn't respect his hobby hell she hates the fact that he would proclaim how he is a super pervert and his constant hobby of visiting the brothel. The world already has one super pervert it certainly doesn't need a second one sure Orochimaru might be grooming Sasuke into the next Orochimaru doesn't mean Jiraiya needs to make Naruto into a perverted shinobi. Naruto smiles brightly at her giving her his usual dopey grin don't worry I won't ever turn into a pervert like Ero Senen. It'll be a great shinobi like my father. Says Naruto with a true smile it wasn't his usual wide grin but it was smile that had depth in it. Tamari then blushed at the thought of an older Naruto resembling his father she then suddenly felt it was one of those hot days at Sanagakure. Jiraiya glances at the two and smiles as he noticed they haven't let go of each other he now knew taking Tamari was a smart choice not just for strengthening the bond between both villages but more importantly Naruto has someone he can depend on. He liked Tamari way more than his teammate she was a lot less loud and was better company for his godson plus I don't want him to make the same mistakes I did and finding someone that isn't like Tsunade will sure do it. All we need him to do is forget about Sasuke thought Jiraiya he wonders how many years had he wasted trying to get with his teammate who has still been in love with Dan after all the years that have passed. Jiraiya knew if he had just moved on he could have had his own family hell had actually be grandfather right now if he had his own family. The Sanin glances at Naruto and smiles at young boy he may not have a son of his own but he does see Naruto has a son Minato. Kashina are you watching over your son? Are you seeing how far he's come? wondered Jiraiya as he stares in into space he wondered in the afterlife are they watching their son goes through the struggles of being a Jinchuriki. Jiraiya also can't wait to see how his godson matures during the next years if he's anything like his father then Naruto could be quite powerful by the time they need to return to Konoha he hopes by that time Naruto can be able to fight Orochimaru without the need for backup after all if Naruto was able to learn to completely master the Rasengan in only few weeks then he knew Naruto could learn other techniques and with the usage of clones that cuts the time in half. Jiraiya then lets out a chuckle what the hell are you laughing at, Aero Senen roared Naruto glaring dangers at his godfather he doesn't know why but he knew the pervert was laughing at his own amusement. The toad sages grinned wide and even wider oh, it's nothing it just I never thought the son of the Yandaimi Hokage and the daughter of the Yandaimi K's cage would make such a good couple. Says Jiraiya while giggling like a schoolgirl the two of them glares at Jiraiya Naruto then clenches his fist while Tamari grips her iron fan. Jiraiya then points down they follow where he's pointing and they noticed they haven't stopped holding hands the two jump away from each other both sporting a nuclear blush if one can look closer they might see steam coming from their heads, ahahaha, you kids make it too easy. Laughed Jiraiya holding his stomach Naruto throws shuriken at his sensei who easily dodges he then laughs at the embarrassed Naruto unfortunately he wasn't fast enough when an iron fan was thrown at his face. 
Jiraiya groans in pain clutching his face he mumbles about disrespectful blonde and Minato was never disrespectful Tamari smirks at pain filled Jiraiya maybe that'll teach you a lesson pervert, says Tamari smiling at Jiraiya with smug grin on her face. Jiraiya the hope back in his feet doing his usual pose I am not a pervert, I am a super pervert, exclaimed Jiraiya with a goofy grin on his face. Both blondes stare at their teacher with a deadpan look you forgot world's biggest idiot. Insulted Naruto shaking his head he wasn't very impressed the first time Jiraiya did this he wasn't the now he then lets out a sigh come on, Tamari chan we have to deliver this document, says Naruto passing by his godfather. Tamari nods in agreement right, Naruto kun, says the female. Jiraiya pouts to himself don't get a fat head just cause your precious Tamari chan got you a little smarter. Joke Jiraiya speeding past them both teens blush in embarrassment the two chants after the perverted Sanin unknown to them they were being watched by a small group of bees. Later inside a hotel team Jiraiya can be seen doing their own thing Jiraiya had just had his toads send a manuscript of tale of a gutsy ninja to his editor. Tamari was cleaning her weapons, and Naruto was studying a ceiling scroll, while they were enjoying their free time before they get another mission on the outside of town sound and his Iwagaker comrades sit around him there are also three other IWA men who belong to the Iwagaker Explosion Corps, they even had the two other B users Kuromachi and Kutra. Their names are Gaio, Haichi, and Bon Gaio is a man in his 30s with shaggy spiky black hair and brown colored eyes, he wears the standard Iwagaker flak jacket and a red single sleeved shirt underneath leaving the entirety of his right arm exposed except for the presence of his scratched forehead protector, wrapped around the upper portion of the arm, he also has the traditional lapel hanging from the right side of his pants and shinobi boots. Haichi is a heavy-set man in his late thirties with a full-grown beard with short brown hair, he has green-colored eyes, he wears his scratched forehead protector on his forehead, he wears a sleeveless mesh vest over it he wears an Iwagaker Junin vest he wears traditional lapel hanging from the right side of his pants and brown shinobi boot. Bon is a young man in his kid twenties with black spiky hair he has brown eyes he wears the standard Iwagaker flak jacket and a brown single sleeved shirt underneath, leaving the entirety of his right arm exposed except for the presence of his scratched forehead protector, wrapped around the upper portion of the arm. He also has the traditional lapel hanging from the right side of his pants and shinobi boots and black shinobi boots. Guio turns towards Sound with his eyes narrowed are you sure this brat is the son of the yellow flash? Asked Guio with suspension sure it is odd that Jiraiya's new student is blonde and the daughter of Rasa. Sound nods his head yes, I heard him say so himself, think about it the kid looks like Minato his last name is Uzumaki who else in Konoha had that name. Asked Sound he watches as Gaio narrowed his eyes and grins darkly this is our chance we get to kill Jiraiya, the daughter of the Yondaimi Case Cage and the son of the Yondaimi Hokage. Well never get this chance again. Grinned Sound. Yeah yeah, I hear you. The son of the Yondaimi Ii, people will pay millions for his head, grinned Guio darkly. Exactly. But first why not let Minato's brat come to us? Grin sound Guio matches his grin they knew even their Suchikage would pay them a high price. Back with team Jiraiya, Jiraiya leaves the room giggling in his usual perverted manner both Naruto and Tamari sighs at the old man ah, damn that pervert. Hey did you have your wallet laying out? Asked Naruto she shook her head negatively and looks at him with confusion ah, last time I left my wallet out he took money and spent it on whores. Exclaimed Naruto. The fact that Jiraiya left to screw some cheap whore doesn't really surprise her but what does as he took Naruto's money she knew with him writing his open he should have plenty money to spend especially with all the secret missions he done for both Sandame and Godaim but he has his money, states Tamari she was beginning to wonder if Konoha specialities wasn't producing powerful ninjas instead producing perverts. Yeah, I know right, but he's a cheap crusty man whore. Exclaimed Naruto Tamari then begins to giggle at the open insult she then smirks at the door before smirking back at him hey how about you forget that pervert and teach me a few ninjutsu. Asked Tamari who was starting to believe Kanahagakur ninjas were too free caring especially Jiraiya she also remember Naruto telling her about his other sensei Kakashi and Aruka she noticed all the grown ups in Naruto's lives were perverted to some degree. Naruto blinks at her with surprise before nodding his head with glee Tamari smirks at his childlike antics sure I can teach you the wind release trap, Futon Torapu, it's pretty simple just throw a special tag down at your enemy's feet, which unleashes a tornado of wind, launching them up into the air, 
explained Naruto he then begins writing the kanji in the scroll. Tamari then pours some of her wind chakra into the scroll the two smile down at the scroll Tamari had to admit the sealing formula on the paper was quite complicated she herself wasn't very skilled fuinjutsu she just knew the basics of it then again Sunagakar hardly had any fuinjutsu masters. She smiles at the blonde male wow. Naruto-kun this is amazing I don't think I could ever come up with something like this or even that teammate of yours Sasuke, said Tamari. He blushes at the compliment he rarely ever got one thanks to most thinking he's just some screw up, not many ever praise especially not when comparing him to his traitorous friend Sasuke, really. You mean it, I don't think what I did was all that special, says Naruto in an embarrassed tone he could only remember a few times someone had praise him. She nods her head yeah of course I do and unlike Sasuke you are loyal to your village. I know you will become the next Hokage, says Tamari leaving him shocked she then runs her hand across his whiskered face causing him to release a purr Naruto blushes in embarrassment and comfort while she struggling contains herself from not squealing at how cute the knot have no knew he had a weak spot. The two then bring their faces closer to one another and Tamari content with playing with his whiskers Naruto not being able to pull away just turned into putty in her very hand suddenly their eyes then begins to feel heavier which was strange neither were tired at all, their eyes then begin to feel heavy they soon struggle to stay awake both of them soon collapse against one another. Bees then cross the room and taking the form of Nabiki who grins down at the two children be pheromones technique, Hachi pheromone no jutsu, thought Nabiki with a smirk she then stares at the two before keeping her focus on Tamari she carefully separated the two and slings the girl over her shoulders she then grabs Tamari's weapon and shunshun dispersing in a cloud of bees. The blonde couldn't remember when he fell asleep the last thing he remembers was staring into Tamari's eyes maybe that was part of the dream but he knew one thing sleep never felt so good. Naruto's peaceful sleep is put to halt as he violently shaken from his slumbering as his eyes slowly open he sees the serious face of Jiraiya the blonde looks around the room and doesn't see her anymore or her fans a sleepy expression he released a yawn as Tamari chan out training. Asked a sleepy Naruto wiping the sleep away from his eyes. Jiraiya decides to just hand the note confusing his godson the sleep from his body is then kicked out as he read the letter. We have her. If you don't want her to be cut in pieces and shipped to Sanagakure meet us outside of town near the forest. Kamazuru clan Naruto is then overcome by an overwhelming rage flowing through him the letter wasn't very long but each word stuck with him when he read the words we have her a cold chill ran through his very body not even the ice Haku used had made him feel so cold. He also felt another feeling anger and lost the same feeling he had when Orochimaru took Sasuke but no he felt even angrier and the pain knowing Tamari was taken but this feeling felt different from when Sasuke left. Well, there is a huge difference Sasuke left on his own accord while Tamari was taken against her will there was also the last word the mere concept of Tamari being harm in any way had hit Naruto as if he had the wind knocked out of him and the very idea of these bastards doing something horrible such as cutting Tamari in small pieces and shipping each piece back to her home village back to her brothers. There was one thing that ran through his mind and that was kill he was going to find and kill these bastard it was something large fox and himself both agreed one who are they. Snarled the rage-filled blonde scowling so hard his eyes began squinting every part of him was screaming at him to save Tamari and kill the poor bastards who kidnapped her. Naruto is then overcome by an overwhelming rage flowing through him the letter wasn't very long but each word stuck with him when he read the words we have her a cold chill ran through his very body not even the ice Haku used had made him feel so cold. He also felt another feeling anger and lost the same feeling he had when Orochimaru took Sasuke but no he felt even angrier and the pain knowing Tamari was taken but this feeling felt different from when Sasuke left. Well, there is a huge difference Sasuke left on his own accord while Tamari was taken against her will there was also the last word the mere concept of Tamari being harm in any way had hit Naruto as if he had the wind knocked out of him and the very idea of these bastards doing something horrible such as cutting Tamari in small pieces and shipping each piece back to her home village back to her brothers. There was one thing that ran through his mind and that was kill he was going to find and kill these bastard it was something large fox and himself both agreed one who are they. Snarled the rage-filled blonde scowling so hard his eyes began squinting every part of him was screaming at him to save Tamari and kill the poor bastards who kidnapped her. Recap end. Jiraiya has to admit he's never once seen Naruto this angry before not even when he found out Sasuke left the villager when Tsunade had bad mouthed the other Hokage. 
Kamazuru clan was a clan of B users from Iwagakur who were once very well known and revered. They are all descendants to Ishikawa the first Suchikage some time after his passing. Ishikawa's clan fell into disgrace nearly all of them had left Iwagakur, they no doubt figured who you are said Jiraiya. So, basically these bastards are like Shino but with bees. Ask Naruto Jiraiya nods his head then what are we waiting for we have to save Tamari-chan. We can't let them get away with this I won't let some bastard take those close to me. Exclaimed the blonde his mind then wanders towards the people he lost he can still remember the words that Haku spoken to him. Jiraiya places his hand on Naruto's shoulder with a firm hold preventing the young blonde running head on into a trap the fact that these two aren't dead either means they want to kill Naruto when he's awake or they have some other plan in mind. Naruto, before we go I need you to do everything I say and don't question me understood. We're dealing with Junin and Chunin one wrong move and they'll most likely kill Tsunade and it's safe to presume it's a trap, said Jiraiya in a serious tone he needed Naruto thinking straight and not just running into it like a madman. Naruto looks down at his student's feet in anger high, I understand Jiraiya sensei will bring her back no matter what. Said Naruto he knew he couldn't mess this up Tamari's life was in danger do you have someone who was precious to you? Thought Naruto he then nods his head he does have someone precious to him this time hell protect those special to him. Good, then head out and save your girlfriend. Said Jiraiya Naruto ignores the obvious jab instead he speaks with Kayubi seeing the look on Naruto's reminds him of both Minato and Yahiko it seem like each of these can very silly if not kind of an idiot but when action calls for it they become a hardened shinobi. Kayubi stares at Naruto with narrowed eyes the blonde can literally feel the very best coming from the fox's mouth you're saying you don't want my power? Why? With my chakra you can easily crush these fools before they even realize they were dead? Growled Kayubi it seemed like traveling with Tamari and Jiraiya hadn't made Naruto changed all that much the blonde still refuses to use his chakra now had thought with that sand woman taken it would have forced Naruto to be begging before him. It's true. With your chakra I could easily beat those bastards before they even know it, but I don't want to that, if I am going to kill these Iwagakur it's going to be by my own hands. Exclaimed Naruto glaring daggers at Kayubi. Kayubi smirks at the blonde I think you are finally growing up brat. If you're going to be fighting people the least I can do is give you a fighting choice, says Kayubi he then taps Naruto on the forehead Kayubi informs him of the knowledge the fox has especially when said information revolves around Mito Uzumaki his first Jinchuriki the person who first sealed him away. Back with Iwagakur ninjas, Sound grins to himself staring at the tied up Tamari who's dreaming of her brothers and a certain blonde that is until she's awakened by a cold splash of water Tamari coughed out some water and quickly realizes a few thing one of the main she's not in the hotel room with Naruto and two she's surrounded by various of Iwagakur not only that but both her arms and legs are bound wakey, wakey. Exclaimed Sound grinning down at the tied female. Tamari glares at scratched headband Sound grins at the tied Tamari ah, no need to look like that. Grin sound with a dark grin on his face. Hatsu grins darkly as she grabs Tamari by the face harshly Tamari glares daggers at the woman with a scowl if you continue with that look on your face it'll get stuck. Mocked Hatsu in a teasing manner Tamari in response spits at Hatsu. The black haired woman in response simply slams her head into the ground she then pulls out a kanai but before she can even lay one scratch on Tamari sound grips her hand stopping her Hatsu looks at sound with an annoyed look. Hatsu clicks her tongue in irritation she just leans against a tree and wipes the spot from her face grumbling about stupid kids. Sound just chuckles at Hatsu now. Now Hatsu the last thing we need is you to damage the merchandise. Sorry, about Hatsu she hates kids, says Sound in a tone that sounded far too friendly for her liking. What do you want? Hissed Tamari with a scowl on her face glaring death daggers at the man. Sound then gains a fake look of pain off. There's no need for that tone, and I thought I told you. Your face will freeze like that. Joke sound with a dark look on his face. He then gains a twisted grin on his face. What I want is quite simple. Your boyfriend is what I want. Grin sound with a look that would impress Kisame and Orochimaru. All the other Iwagakur ninjas each laugh and grin at the angered Tamari sound had to admit the look on her face reminded him a lot of the serious and stern look Rasa would have. What do you bastards want with Naruto kun? Growled Tamari she had never met an Iwagakur ninja before but she already didn't like them. Nabiki grins at this with a mischievous look on her face she then smirks at the other female on her team did you hear that Hatsu? Naruto-kun, eh, 
questioned Nabiki with a sly smirk on her face the idea of two offsprings of a cage liking each other especially when their fathers were Minato and Rasa two of the most deadly and strongest shinobi of the previous generation. Hatsu grins to herself it seems like the little desert rose has fallen for a maelstrom. Mocked Hatsu. Bon then taps on his forehead protector isn't obvious what we want. We may have left our village but everyone knows of the yellow flash. I mean come on he's trained by Kakashi and Jiraiya. Hell the damn brat looks like Minato for fuck's sake. We'd have to be blind and stupid not to put two and two together, gloats Bon. Tamari then gives them a cocky grin you guys must be quite foolish. There's no way you idiurk. Grown Tamari in pain as Bon kicked her in the face the young man then grabs her by the hair and punches her in the face causing her lip to bleed he then released her and stomps on her head with vicious grin. Not so tough, huh? Mocked Bon as he repeatedly kicked her head he then forcefully drags Tamari on her feet and pressed a kanai to her throat while he aggressively grabs onto her breast and licks her cheek with a twisted perverted look on his face I know how we can hurt that yellow flash spawn. How about we have some fun with Blondie here? Giggled Bon. Tamari bits her already gleefully avoiding the look of many of the men who had QZZ own perverted grin on their face while Nabiki and Hatsu didn't even look to concern Lula dammit. These guys are insane. Naruto-kun. Jiraiya where the hell are you guys? Thought Tamari with concerned and worried. Time skip. Hatsu, Kuromachi, and Kutra grin at each other as they see Jiraiya and Naruto heading their way seeing the three Iwagakur ninjas causing the two stop dead in their tracks. Jiraiya then pulls the blonde boy behind he glares at each of these where's Tamari. Demanded Jiraiya returning back to the room and missing one blonde child did not sit well for him he had to admit Tamari had begun to grow on him. The three grinned at the two Konohagakure Shinobi Hatsu grins at the scowl on Naruto face she then lets out a whistle as if she's impressed yep, there's no doubt in my mind you are the son of Yellow Flash. You have that bastard's eyes. Laughed Nabiki with a dark grin Hatsu and Kuramachi also chime in at laughing at the two. Where's Tamari-chan? Growled Naruto with a scowl on his face as he stares at the three with utter disgust these people didn't matter to him the only thing that did matter to Naruto was saving Tamari everything else came second. Kutra grins at Naruto as he licks his lips she's alive for now, unfortunately, if I had it my way I'd have a taste some of that desert rose you care so much about. Grins Kutra giving the two a twisted crooked grin he enjoys looking at the angry look on both Naruto's and Jiraiya's face. The young man then gains a fake sob expression unfortunately, only one you can get by while the other stays with us. Grinned Kutra. Naruto go. Ordered Jiraiya without a second thought he passed by them he knew Jiraiya can take these bastards one he was after Asanin they were just some cheap Aburame knockoff Naruto is then forced to jump to the side as an explosion tag nearly hit him he turns and glares at Haichi who's grinning at him from a tree. Naruto scowls at the man who grins at the blonde you sure do have your father's eyes said Haichi the man chuckles to himself if this kid was anything like his father then this might actually be a fun fight. The blonde stares at Haichi with a cold tone and deadly look in his eyes the blonde then summons his Kusarigama where the hell is Tamari-chan? growled Naruto with a hardened tone. Haichi's hand glows bright with explosion release you'll have to get through me to get to your little girlfriend. Now show me what you got Uzumaki. Exclaimed Haichi with excitement the man charges at Naruto with a straight punch Naruto jumps to the side avoiding the exploding punch but the debris had thrown him towards the tree neurosurgeons in pain as he hit the tree. Haichi then jumps down with an exploding kick Naruto then quickly backflips away avoiding the explosion Haichi appears in front of Naruto and punches the blonde in the chest with dark grin he blasts an explosion in Naruto's face. Naruto pants in pain as blood drops from his face Haichi laughs at the bloody face Naruto Haichi then uses the hand seals of snake, dog, boar, rat, ram, ox, and rabbit he extends both hands out explosion release, great explosion line Bakudan, Ritoku no Shibarain. Exclaim Haichi with a wide grin a orange beam of power heads Naruto's way shocking the blonde the blonde quickly replaced himself with a substitution jutsu Naruto stares in shock at the blast. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the large crater where the explosion had landed he knew if he hadn't used substitution he'd be dead right now. The man then concentrated his explosion release into his hand and punches the ground sending rubble everywhere he then launched an explosion punch which had sent D the rocks at Naruto at a fast speed Naruto grits his teeth he then creates a large earth wall taking the blunt of the attack unfortunately, 
The wall is then destroyed by Haichi Naruto quickly fires an air bullet at him which hits dead on. Naruto creates several clones and each charges at Haichi who easily handles them with swift strikes the clones that were destroyed created a smokescreen Naruto then throws his Kusarigama but Haichi uses his explosion deflect the blast Kukuku. You'll have to do better than that, mocked Haichi. I did, said Naruto Haichi then gasp in pain as he's struck in the back by a Rasengan the man jumps to the side as an wind infused Kusarigama slash. Haichi then released an explosion propelling him to Naruto catching off guard with a knee to the face he then punches Naruto into the temple causing him to skid across the floor the man jumps high in the air with axe explosive axe kick Naruto sickly deflects it with a wind slash that had thrown the two back. The blonde quickly swings his Kusarigama unleashing vertical wind slashes Haichi combats this by unleashing massive explosions Naruto grit his teeth as the explosions has scorched his skin. Naruto is then forced to jump back as the man fires small explosion balls but as they hit the ground Naruto's field of vision is blinded by a bright light Naruto then gasp in pain as Haichi knocked the wind out of him with a single punch. Haichi then gives Naruto an explosion uppercut punch launching him high in the air Haichi then follows up with a bell drop sending Naruto face first into the ground the man then lets out a laugh ha ha ha. So, this is the legacy of the yellow flash. Ah ha ha, what a fucking disappointment. Explosion release. Red planet technique, Bakudan, Akaiwakuse no Jutsu. Roared Haichi bringing down a giant orange orb he was expecting to see Naruto to be reduced into nothing but ash but instead as one of destruction makes contact with golden chains. Haichi stares in shock at the chains he then narrowed his eyes at the chains surrounding the blonde Haichi is then forced to jump back as chains from the ground damn it those chains can stop my Akaiwakuse. Thought Haichi he then punched a tree sending splinters at Naruto but the blonde creates a dome of wind blade which protect him. Haichi charges at Naruto the blonde dodges a left punch but was caught by a surprise jab to the throat and a side kick Naruto gasp in pain as Haichi hits him an explosion palm strike while he was sent flying Naruto throws a wind fused shuriken which had nailed Haichi in the eyes. Naruto with gritted teeth jumps high in the air with a back flip while upside down he then swings his chain sickle around his body wind release. I date in Typhoon, Futon. I date in Typhoon. Said Naruto he unleashes powerful gust of circular wind that slashes Haichi who's fortunately literally below him. The man screams in pain as the poisonous wind slashes cut deep into his body the man falls to his knees gasping with air Naruto covered in blood uses the ram and tiger hand seal each of his fingertips ignite with white flames Uzumaki sealing technique. Fierce Sun God. Uzumaki Fuenjutsu. Hageshi Taiyo Shin. Exclaimed Naruto as his hand slammed against H's chest the man then screams in pain as his very being is burning he tries to fight off the pain but all it does is burn him even more until he is ash in the wind. Naruto then collapsed to his knees mentally thanking the fox for showing him Mito Uzumaki's the fierce sun god technique Naruto then pants heavily damn that last one took a lot out of me. Explosion release it's simple but effective, said naruto panting hard he then slowly rises to his feet and begins to travel through the forest he then can sense tamari's chakra and begins to run towards the direction he then narrowed his eyes as bees begins to make a trail he then follows the bees it took him only a few minutes until he sees sound nabiki and hatsu surrounded a beaten tamari seeing tamari in such a state only fuels his anger he also noticed tamari is being gagged the blonde glares at three what the hell did you bastards do to tamari chan demanded Naruto he definitely was not liking the smug look on Sound's face. Sound just playfully waved him off oh, nothing those are just love taps yak now she has quite the mouth as you can see. Said Sound wrapping his arm around Tamari in a death grip smirking at Naruto who's just glaring at him with the most disgust. The concept of bringing Sasuke back to the village wasn't even on his mind or the promise he made to Sakura for the young blonde Sasuke. Sakura and the promise of a lifetime meant absolutely nothing to him he just wanted to save Tamari from these bastards. Nabiki grins at Naruto with a silent command thousand. Of bees fires off their poisonous stingers at Naruto the blonde swings his sickle deflecting each of the bees he then released four vertical wind slash that kills the bees a horse of bees charge at Naruto the blonde quickly backflips away throwing four exploding tags he then unleashes a wind blade which had destroyed the bees Hatsu throws several of small clay creatures Naruto summons his chakra chains which had created a barrier protecting him. Hatsu throws a clay centipede Naruto quickly fires a wind bullet the clay creation explodes prematurely so. 
This one can mold his explosion release in clay he's different from the other one I fought. Damn it of course both of them are long range fighters. Thought Naruto he quickly creates a clone at which the clone throws the original at Nabiki she avoids the flying kick. While still in the air he throws his chain sickle at her she leans to the side avoiding the blade she then grabs hold of the chain and pulls the chain back she punched the blonde straight in the face Hatsu then appears next to him and grits his teeth at the punch to the ribs. She grabs him by the head and knees him in the face she swiftly pulls out a kanai and stand him the shoulder the blonde yells in pain even though every fiber of his being is screaming in pain he gives her a vicious headbutt breaking her nose in the process. Naruto then released a gale wind at her tossing her back Naruto then creates five clones each one attacks Hatsu the first two clones throws shuriken at the mon's legs causing him to scream in pain another clone performs a handstand and kicks Hatsu in the stomach with both feet causing the man to gasp in pain as the wind was knocked out of him. The clone then kicks him in the chin by a wind infused kick. Another clone hits the man with a wind strike causing him to fly higher in the air Naruto then begins to send wind infused air palms to the man causing him to blast hover in the air the blonde pours chakra into his legs launching himself higher in the air the man gasp in pain. He grits his teeth as he pulls out multiple clay birds Naruto pays no mind to this and spins on midair slashing the clay creations with his sickle blade he ignores the burning of his skin and slams the blade into Hatsu's shoulder flash barrage. Roared Naruto Hatsu is slammed into the ground. Naruto then stumbles as he stands and grabs hold on his now bleeding side even though he's slowly healing doesn't mean taking that type of an explosion hadn't caused him pain one down. Says Naruto his eyes then bulges wide in pain as Nabiki kicks so hard on the ribs a crack can be heard Tamari can only watch in horror as Nabiki ruthlessly punches Naruto she cursed herself being in this type of position. As Tamari watches as Nabiki ruthlessly punches Naruto she feels shame and fear. Shame for herself for being captured so easily and fear for Naruto the boy who went out of his way to save her brother and now he's doing the same going against these Iwagakure bastards. The last time she felt this about of fear was during the Konoha crush a time she was scared of the freed Shukaku running rampage and killing her and her brother now she fears that this woman might kill Naruto. Nabiki grabs Naruto by the collar and repeatedly punched him in the face the blonde wasn't sure but he was positive everything was spinning. The blonde pills out a flash bomb and blinds Nabiki who drops him on the floor the blonde quickly makes space between the two he then gains a grin smirk as he throws three exploding tags which had burned a good part of her face. Why you bastard? You ruined my face. Ill fucking kill you be honey drizzle, Mitsubachi no Kosame. Roared the burnt Nabiki the bees create hardened needle honey she even had the other news fires their poisonous stingers Tamari stares wide eye with fresh tears as over a thousand sharp weapons ready to turn Naruto into a pincushion. As the projectiles head closer to him he channels a large amount of wind chakra through his kusarigama dance of sickle blade. Rampant arc rampage. Hagama no mai. Bako koryo. Roared Naruto he created a dome of wind sickle shaped. Blades around him the defend against the incoming weapons. Naruto runs at her cutting through the various of bees but as they cut they explode in honey stopping him in place Nabiki grins at the blonde as she stabs him in the gut with a kanai red chakra then covers his body melting the honey with a mighty roar he stabs the blade into her chin the woman chokes on her own blood before her body soon becomes limp Naruto removes his blade allowing her dead body to call to the ground Naruto then points his chain sickle at sound you're next. Now get the hell away from Tamari Chan you fucking bastard! yelled Naruto glaring daggers at Saun. Saun just lazily rises to his feet how scary, if you were any other person you'd be long dead, it must be your Uzumaki bloodline. I can't wait till I hand you over to the Suchikage and I bet your sand friend would make a good slave lots of people would pay a high price for a cage's daughter especially one so fresh. Said sound as he runs his hand over Tamari's bruised cheek seeing this has enraged the already angry Naruto. His body then begins to tremble with pure unadulterated hate don't you fucking touch her. Roared Naruto in anger the blonde Uzumaki throws a volley of shuriken sound easily deflects it with a kanai the man claps his hands together shots out stone bullets Naruto then creates wide wind blades that stop the rock bullets. Sound then appears in front of Naruto and punches him in the chest throwing Naruto back the blonde quickly creates a wide number of clones. Sound grins at this and commands his bugs to fly at the clones each of these bees seems to have an explosion tag shocking Naruto and his clones suddenly over a dozen exploding tags go off. 
Naruto bowls in pain his eyes shot open in shock as an exploding bee flies by his face the blonde quickly replaced himself with a long he then glances at Tamari he knew he had to find a way to free her the blonde then smirks to himself. I just need to cut this bastard once and it's over but that's easier said than done. I need Tamari's help I feel like I might collapse any minute and I am not sure if I can use that fierce sun god. Thought Naruto staring at the aged man the elder shinobi sends his bees at Naruto the blonde in response hits them with an air bullet which had destroyed them. Naruto grabs a hand full of flash bombs and throws them a sound blinding the man he then runs at sound with a flying kick but sound dodges to the side grab a hold of Naruto's leg and throws him to the ground Naruto then backflips away you don't seem upset about your friends. Don't you care they're dead? Asked Naruto. We're shinobi kid. We expected death the moment we put this on. Exclaimed sound pointing to his forehead protector death is uneventful for we ninjas. A real shinobi expects death they know someday they will die whether it be in the battlefield or not. I welcome death. And once I give your head to the Suchikage it'll be so rich I can take it easy. Exclaimed sound. Naruto glares at the man with a venomous glare he was in so much pain everything hurt hell standing up hurt but he knew he couldn't waver he couldn't give up not now. Naruto then grabs his Kusarigama with a death grip which nearly made his fingers bleed I will assure you this, without a shadow of doubt in my mind, I will not yield. Exclaimed Naruto with conviction. Sound sends a large army of bees at Naruto the blonde then summons four clones each of them summoned a pair of demon windmill shuriken each of the giant shuriken are infused with wind chakra making them even sharper each of them throws the weapon each of the shuriken is then covered in exploding tags cutting through the bees sound is then dispersed in a crowd of bees sound is then forced to jump away from the wind slashes from Naruto. Sound then then stabs Naruto through the gut with his kunai the blonde smiles darkly as Naruto begins to turn into his mud sound then gasp in pain as a huge gust of wind slams him into a tree causing to break through the tree sound wipes the blood from his face he then slowly turns see to see the bruised Tamari glaring death glares at sound. Sound stares in shock he then he realized Naruto must be replaced himself with a clone when he created that huge explosion and when he was distracted Naruto had freed Tamari and Naruto glares darkly at the mantis, cheeky little brats. Scoffed sound he then creates a large swarm of bees both the two blondes cut the bees. Tamari Chan lets go, wind release, whirlpool rose technique, futon, Itirozu no jutsu, yelled Tamari and Naruto. Tamari uses her large fan to create a tornado trapping sound Naruto then throws a demon windmill shuriken that has several exploding tags he then uses the shadow clone technique on the weapon creating then windmill shuriken which all explode creating a flaming tornado. As the flaming tornado dies down the burnt and cut up body of sound falls to the ground with the battle finally over Naruto drops his kusarigama falling to his knees before the unconscious world can take him he's then tackled by a lavender bullet shocking Naruto with a small smile simply pats the crying Tamari on the back enjoying having her back sure he was exhausted and everything hurt but having Tamari here just felt right to the blonde Uzumaki. It has been a three weeks since the day of Tamari's kidnapping the two blondes have even gotten closer both refusing to leave each other's side they knew with Iwagakar ninjas knowing who they are so. It won't be long before others come to take their heads. Jiraiya decided to go to the Land Firefly which is a small village with everything they've been through Jiraiya had decided to give the two some time off plus both Tsunade and Sanagakir weren't happy well more specifically her siblings and sensei were livid each of them were impressed with Naruto not only rescuing Tamari but handling far stronger ninjas. Jiraiya had went to meet up with one of his contacts while Tamari and Naruto had went into town and since there was a festival the two decided to go both dressing in kimono Naruto wore a dark blue and black kimono while Tamari wore lavender Tamari seeing her in a kimono was surprising but what really surprised him was Tamari had her hair out. Naruto could only stare at shock at her natural beautiful it seemed like even the flow from the moonlight even made her look even more beautiful to Naruto she was the most beautiful woman he has ever seen, beautiful mutters Naruto but it was perfectly clear what was said Tamari blushes a deep crimson. She smiles softly at him thank you Naruto-kun, you look handsome too, said Tamari now it was Naruto's then to blush a deep red she then grabs hold of his hand come on, Naruto-kun you're treating me to some yakisoba. Said Tamari Naruto could only just smile as Tamari leads him towards a food stand. Time skip. The three individuals can be seen walking towards the front gate the two gate guards stare in shock at Jiraiya, Naruto, and Tamari. 
The two blink in confusion they easily recognize Jiraiya and Tamari but they didn't know who the blonde was until they saw the whiskers on the second blonde the bandage man blinks in pure shock Naruto is that you? Asked the man. Azumo blinks at the grinning blonde holy crap. That is Naruto. Exclaimed the shocked Chunin. Naruto then smirks to himself it's about time you've notices me. Well we better going before Ba-chan gets angry said Naruto all three men shudder with a nod and enraged Tsunade was something neither wanted to see with that the three head into the village Naruto smiles as he realizes the village wasn't really changed expect for the fact that they now have Tsunade's face. Naruto then glances at Tamari with a bright smile how about after we meet up with Ba-chan well go on a date? asked Naruto with a smile ever since that day at the festival the two had become a couple and the two couldn't be any happier. Tamari smiles at this liking the idea of going on a date with Naruto in his home village she then smirks at him I expect you to treat me to some sweet chestnuts and Kenshin soup. Said a smirking Tamari Naruto smiles at this. Sure, anything for my Mari-chan. Said Naruto he then brings her closer to him and kisses the beautiful woman in his arms she moans into the kids wrapping her hands over his body while Naruto simply brings her in closer. NN Naruto exclaimed a shocked Sakura the student of Kuranai along with her was Ino the student of Tsunade and team Ebisu excluding their sensei the two blondes pull away staring at Sakura. The three individuals can be seen walking towards the front gate the two gate guards stare in shock at Jiraiya, Naruto, and Tamari. The two blink in confusion they easily recognize Jiraiya and Tamari but they didn't know who the blonde was until they saw the whiskers on the second blonde the bandage man blinks in pure shock Naruto is that you? asked the man. Azumo blinks at the grinning blonde holy crap, that is Naruto, exclaimed the shocked Chunin. Naruto then smirks to himself it's about time you've notices me, well we better going before Ba-chan gets angry, said Naruto all three men shudder with a nod and enraged Tsunade was something neither wanted to see with that the three head into the village Naruto smiles as he realizes the village wasn't really changed expect for the fact that they now have Tsunade's face. Naruto then glances at Tamari with a bright smile how about after we meet up with Ba-chan well go on a date? asked Naruto with a smile ever since that day at the festival the two had become a couple and the two couldn't be any happier. Tamari smiles at this liking the idea of going on a date with Naruto in his home village she then smirks at him I expect you to treat me to some sweet chestnuts and Kenshin soup. said a smirking Tamari Naruto smiles at this. Sure, anything for my Mari-chan said naruto he then brings her closer to him and kisses the beautiful woman in his arms she moans into the kids wrapping her hands over his body while naruto simply brings her in closer nn naruto exclaimed a shocked sakura the student of kuranai along with her was ino the student of tsunade and team ebisu excluding their sensei the two blondes pull away staring at sakura recap end the blonde duo stares back at sakura ino udon moegi and Konohamaru with a blank stare neither not sure what to say, luckily the eager Konohamaru runs up to the wind users with a megawatt grin big bro. You're back, is this your girlfriend? asked Konohamaru with a sly grin wiggling his eyebrows he turns to look at Tamari and remembers this was the girl who fought Shikamaru. Naruto grins at Konohamaru with a bright smile and wrap his arm around his girlfriend yep. This is Tamari of the sand exclaimed a happy Naruto Tamari smiles softly at her blonde boyfriend, if she remembered right this kid was the grandson of the Sandame Hokage and nephew of Asuma Serutobi. The two watch as the young brunette's eyes sparkle with amazement that's so awesome. Just I expected from my rival, exclaimed Konohamaru Tamari smirks at this the kid definitely reminded her of Naruto back in his genin days. Konohamaru then grins widely hey bro. Check out my new sexy clone technique exclaimed Konohamaru but missed the pale Jinchuriki's face and motioned for him to not do it unfortunately Konohamaru didn't see the warning and transformed into a busty brunette woman with large breasts and large hips she blows a wink at them Jiraiya with a perverted grin gives the young Serutobi a thumbs up with his nose bleeding. Naruto face palms himself not only did he use a perverted jutsu in the middle of the street but in front of not one but three angry women, Sakura, Ino, and Moegi each had an angry look on their faces before any of the Konoha females can reprimand the perverted Serutobi boy Tamari bits him on the head with one of her small war fans. The blow to the head had sent the young Genin face first to the ground Jiraiya gulps at the small weapons being on the receiving end of those fans whenever he peeped on the female populist or when he tried to write them in his book, 
Naruto lets out a small chuckle I've grown out of those little games Konohamaru, said Naruto catching them off guard especially Ino and Sakura since the blonde would always good off. As Konohamaru rises back to his feet rubbing his head he was sure there was dent where Tamari had hit him. He leans then looks up to his role model as Naruto pats his head if I am to be the next Hokage then I can't be playing around with those silly jutsu and besides if you want to really see something check this out. Grinned Naruto he takes out four shuriken he then covers them in his wind affinity everyone looked on with shock except for Jiraiya and Tamari. They watch as the shuriken begins to rotate and hover off his palm floating in the air and spinning with incredible Naruto what's that? Asked Udon staring in shock to him this was amazing sure he may not know his affinity like Konohamaru but the genin knew whatever jutsu this is was not easy. Naruto grins widely at genin he can still both Konohamaru along with Moegi having their full attention. Both Konohamaru and Moegi looked on with a star gazed expression wind manipulation, pure wind manipulation, said Naruto with a grin on his face. Hey Naruto, do I look different? Asked Sakura with a small smile Tamari raised an eyebrow at the pink-haired girl. Yeah, you did I can tell not just you but you too Ino. Exclaimed Naruto he can tell just by a glance they were nothing like how they were in their genin days he knew Sakura had potential to be a powerful kunoichi she just needed someone to bring out this potential, the same can be said about Ino he remembers she would care more about her figure but this Ino seems far more different confident. Sakura smiles at this she then chuckles nervously at the blonde duo it definitely wasn't easy after having to prove to Tsunade I can be ninja, said Sakura she can still remember how devastated she was when Tsunade stripped her of her rank, Naruto and Tamari looked at Sakura with confusion I'll tell you guys later it's a long story, said the pinkette Naruto and Tamari nod their heads. Ino turns away from the male blonde and looks at the Sunagaka Kunoichi she then gains a sly smile so, you and Naruto. I honestly thought you would have ended up with Shikamaru, said Ino after all she heard during the Sasuke retrieval mission she along with her teammates saved Shikamaru, Rock Lee, and Kiba plus those two would make a cute couple he was last and she would kick him for being lazy. Tamari shot the student of Tsunade stern look me in the Nara. No, no way I just wanted to get him back for humiliating me during the Chunin exams besides he would just complain about everything unlike Naruto-kun here said Tamari with a smile he matches her smile with his own smiling back at him and then runs her hand over his whiskered face the boy gives off a low purring sound shocking everyone Jiraiya, Udon, and Konohamaru's nose begins to bleed. She places a chaste kiss on his face she then turns her attention to her sensei Jiraiya should nt we head to the Hokage tower, you haven't sent a messenger toad for over two months ensure Tsunade sama will be real happy to hear why. Asked Tamari with smirk on her face her Jinchuriki loved snickered at the pale expression of Jiraiya a rain cloud appears above him muttering about vicious blondes. Tamari grasps the hand of Naruto and smiles at him he smiles back making her cheeks flush a light pink color the two begin walking towards the tower with Jiraiya tailing behind then hoping Tsunade doesn't break anything important he then shivers at a certain beat down he got from the woman. Naruto waves lazily at them Sakura and Ino run to follow after them. Konohamaru and his team waves at Naruto big bro Naruto. You're going to reach me a new justu, right? Yelled Konohamaru with a large grin on his face Naruto gives the young teen a big thumbs up. Naruto train me too. I want to be strong too. Exclaimed Udon he remembers hearing about how Naruto not only fought in the Konoha crush but also how he fought Gara of the sand and beat him that was something even the prodigy Sasuke Uchiha couldn't even manage to beat him. Udon was positive Naruto had grown even stronger probably as strong as Konohamaru's uncle. The orange-haired teen jumps in excitement with a large grin on her blushing face me too, me too, train me too Naruto, exclaimed Moegi with a bright smile on her face, sure she has learned a lot by Ebisu but unfortunately he wasn't the strongest Junin so there was only so much she can learn from but with Naruto he was not only trained by Kakashi one of the most capable Junin in the village but also one of the legendary Sanin. Tsunade was not happy why well because she still hadn't heard from her perverted teammate and the endless amount of paperwork that never seems to end, and of course Shizune won't let her have a tip of her precious sake, it sure has been peaceful hasn't it, said Shizune though they do get some trouble from Konohamaru. Before Tsunade could even utter a word a knock to the door can be heard her eyes glances towards Shizune who opens the door and smiles looking at the blonde the first thing she noticed was the lack of orange shirt his scarf and open shirt had orange flames on his open shirt. 
She then brings the young teen in a big Tsunade smiles at the scene happy her favorite blonde has returned good to have you back Naruto, said Tsunade. Naruto smiles at her he then snickers as her facial expression exactly shifted from happy to piss as she stares at Jiraiya, the man chuckles nervously he then gulps loudly as she grabs him by the scuff of his shirt and glares daggers at him ehe, hey princess, said Jiraiya in most cases he would use this as a chance to peek at he large breasts but the look on her face warned him not to. Don't you hey, princess me. Why the hell haven't you sent a messenger toad in over a month and I better like what I hear? Demanded Tsunade and to make her point she viciously shakes him everyone laughs at the scene. Ino coughs in her hand catching her master's gaze uh, master maybe you should let Jiraiya Sama down, advised Ino with an uneasy look. Tsunade clicked her tongue and groans knowing her student is right she drops Jiraiya making the man swing side to side yeah, yeah, I hear you Ino. So tell me Jiraiya, demanded Tsunade narrowing her eyes. All right, all right the reason I hadn't sent you a toad was because one on my spies had informed me of the identity of two members of the Akatsuki. They are Kakuzu from Takigakur and Hidan from Yugakur. From my informant I've found it somehow Kakuzu been around since the time of the Shodaim Hokage Hashirama Senju I am not sure how but I am positive it be some kind of jutsu and as for Hidan all I really know is he is part of some cult that worships Jashin, said Jiraiya he also needed to tell her about the lab used by Orochimaru during his time in Danzo's Anbu Root faction. She understood the look on his eyes that told her he would tell her the rest another time she understood this. She then smiles at Naruto with pride well, you definitely look much stronger brat. Before I decide to give you the rank of Junin I and I mean to say those old fossils want to know if you really deserve to gain the rank of Junin, said Tsunade those fools Danzo, Homura, and Kaharu wanted Naruto to stay a genin and be protected inside the walls of Konohagakure but she viciously disagree with that idea and shut it down with the quickness. I have someone who would be the perfect person to rescue in Sakura, said Tsunade with a smile. Sakura raised an eyebrow at the female Sanin really who? Enko-sensei? Neji? Shikamaru? Asked Sakura naming off the people who could possibly be the person they will face. All good questions but no, you may as well come in, ordered Tsunade instead of the door opens the windows up and the famous copycat ninja Kakashi steps in with a lazy smile I see you've returned and you have grown, said Kakashi giving them an eye smile both turn and smiles at their sensei both were happy to see the lazy man. Naruto is then hit with realization he then digs into his bag oh, yeah. I almost forgot. I got you a present Kakashi sensei, grinned Naruto he snickers at his sensei has become a stuttering mess and bewilderment at the sight of Makeout Paradise, this is the latest in the Icha if he series after 3 years I haven't read it through, it's not my thing plus Tamari Chan will kill me if she caught me reading this book, said Naruto he can still remember when he first used his sexy clone Henge Tamari best him up till he was black and blue. Tamari with her arms crossed under her breast smirks at Naruto with a cocky grin on her face you bet your was I would sure Jiraiya might be a hopeless pervert but that doesn't mean I want you to be like him, said Tamari Naruto grins at her with his cheesy smile. Well it's good to see my perverted teammate didn't turn you into a pervert, Kakashi, said Tsunade turning to the man who lazily looks at her who puts away his book and looks at the two with his soul eye his eye focus on Naruto then back to Sakura even with a glance alone he can tell both of them are far stronger not only mentally but even physically this put a smile on his face but he didn't allow anyone to see such emotion he is supposed to be their cool Kakashi sensei. Meet me at our usual training ground there I will explain how this exercise will proceed, well until then see ya later my cute students said Kakashi with that the man vanished no doubt wanting to get started reading it has been three years without being able to read the newer issues. Tsunade shook her head at the man she then mutters about being surrounded by perverts. Third training ground Naruto and Sakura stand in front of their sensei not far away Jiraiya, Tsunade, Ino, and Tamari stood from a distance Tsunade glances at the daughter of Rasa with a raised eyebrow should NT you be on your way home? Asked Tsunade she was sure the young blonde Kunoichi not only miss her own village but her brothers too. It's fine Tsunade-sama, besides Naruto-kun can just get me home, said Tamari in a respected tone Tsunade raised an eyebrow at this she knew Jiraiya had left out some information for one he would only tell the bare minimum of what ninjutsu Naruto is capable all he ever said was the boy was growing fast and had caught in skills with his other classmates she also knew he didn't want someone like Danzo. Orochimaru, or the Akatsuki to get their hands on this information but she trusted the man. From now on, 
The two of you will come me on team related with missions it's different than before it's no longer teacher and pupil starting today. We're equal Konoha Shinobi's well first I am a bit curious as to how you've developed, said Kakashi the man pulls out a familiar set of bells the rules are the same as when I first met you two of you don't come at me with the intent to kill, you will never succeed in getting the bells, the rules are the same as before no matter how, try to get the bells from me you have until sunrise tomorrow said kakashi he knew unlike last time hell have to take this seriously or he might seriously get hurt the special junin and shunin look around the training ground with a nostalgic look on each of their faces i've missed it well this place said the smiling blonde jinchuriki he haven't realized how much he missed this place until recently yeah said sakura kakashi looks up from his book ah that's right this is where you first trained isn't it asked kakashi team seven mutters Sakura remembering the good times they had in their genin days. The three-man team, said Naruto staring down at the ground. That time, Sasuke was around too, wasn't he? Asked Kakashi but this question was more so directed at himself. Kakashi watches as Sakura gains a solemn look on her face and tightened her fist as for Naruto the blonde narrowed his eyes thinking about Sasuke these two reactions caused Kakashi to stare with curiosity he was honestly expecting the two to be devastated at the mention of Sasuke but this response was interesting for the man him. So those two have grown up quite a bit, thought Kakashi. He then closed the book gaining the attention of both Naruto and Sakura well then, shall we begin? asked Kakashi this causes both of the young youths to grin in response. Naruto tightened his forehead protector and grins at Kakashi you won't do it while reading the book this time. Kakashi sensei? asked Naruto he then stretches out letting his bones pop into place. Sakura smiles to herself as she puts on her combat gloves on you've already finished it? asked Sakura. No, I think I should save the enjoyment for later. Besides, this time, for some reason over the feeling I should take it a little seriously too. Said Kakashi he then unveils his Sharingan Naruto removed his sword holding it in a reverse grip and narrowed his eyes at Kakashi he unleashes several of Shuriken Kakashi throws his own seeing the weapons coming his way Naruto plans his sword in the air and jumps off it he then creates a clone the clone throws him to the side. The original grabs his sword but Kakashi grabs hold of his arm his use of cage bunshin the timing is very clever thought Kakashi as he senses another Naruto behind him this own wields a kanai. Well, your haste hasn't changed, said Kakashi Naruto grins in response at his sensei the man smiles at the memory of their first training exercise back then Naruto had rushed in without thinking, this trail of thought has brought a smile on his face you've matured haven't you, Naruto, thought Kakashi. Alright, then start, said the man he then vanished in a cloud of smoke. Right, above, left, behind, if he's not anywhere, thought Sakura she then went through several hand signs earth release. Shattering foundation technique. Doden. Kudakareru dodai no jutsu. Exclaimed Sakura she focused earth affinity into her hand and punched the ground causing it to split apart showing Kakashi who looked on in shock while Naruto stares in shock at the raw power of Sakura. Ino smiles at this Sakura you've really changed haven't you? said Ino a tone low tone Tamari looks at Ino with a raised eyebrow. That jutsu so it allows you to mold the earth around you to split apart the ground beneath you very smart of you Sakura. I guess it should make sense Sakura would have grown stronger too but to be able to perform that jutsu takes quite a lot of chakra control but then again genjutsu would be perfect someone like Sakura who has amazing chakra control she may even be become a better ninja than Godem thought Kakashi the man smiles inwards proud of Sakura and Naruto but he knew he couldn't make it easy for them. Flashback three years ago, Enko Mitarashi was known for many things being sadistic, torturing any poor soul who she faces, her hatred for her former sensei, her love for Dango, and liquor but the one thing she hates more than dealing with the the old fossils is someone interrupting her Dango and Sake time at which someone has doing right now. Enko glares down at the pink-haired girl who's on bowing her head before she doesn't even pay any kind scram kid. Can't you see in busy? said annoyed Enko she remembered the last time someone interrupted her dango time it was during the month off during the finals of the Chunin exams if she remembered right this girl was the teammate of that blonde loudmouth and that Uchiha kid. Please, train me Enko sensei exclaimed Sakura with her eyes shut close ignoring the, the stick of dango that were thrown at her head. If she remembered right this woman was a skilled special junin and someone who was trained by Orochimaru she knew if she was taken under Enko's wing she might learn some insight of Orochimaru. 
Anko has been one of the few Junin who watched the preliminaries of Chunin exams if asked any of them which fight was the worse it was the fight between Sakura and Ino it was clear neither of the two had in real interest in being a Kunoichi. Sure, both had potential to be phenomenal ninjas but that hidden potential was being wasted when they were chasing after Sasuke to Kunoichi like Anko, Kurenai, and Yugo they were a mockery of Kunoichi and everything they stood for, unfortunately. There have been other fangirls they've known who died within a week of leaving the village for a mission. I saw you and the Yamanaka brats fight, I am actually surprised you two even made this war no doubt thanks to your teammates, said Anko she then smiles as the warm liquor went down her throat feeling her stomach with that warmth. Sakura looks down remembering how useless she was during the bell test, wave mission, Konoha crush, and in the forest of death. And the only reason that fight was even a draw was because of that loudmouth friend of yours. Hell, at least with Blondie she actually has some training under her belt you on the other hand have none. Said Anko in a casual tone but the tone of her voice has anything but casual and fun, with each word that came from the snake mistress of Konoha had struck a chord. I know that. You don't think I know that. I know the only reason why I've even come this far is because of Kakashi Sensei, Sasuke Kun, and Naruto. I know the one who's really been dragging Team 7 down is me. They are always having to protect me, and I couldn't do anything to stop Sasuke kun I just stood there screaming doing nothing. I am tired of being weak, I don't want to be a burden anymore I wants to be able to support my team and village. Sasuke kun is gone training with Orochimaru and Naruto is off with Jiraiya Yasama. Even Kakashi sensei went off to train some more, but I don't go be left behind please. Anko, train me, I promise I won't complain or back talk pleaded Sakura. Anko hums to herself she lazily looks over at Sakura you won't complain, eh? Well see about that, well, this gives me the chance to rest a new jutsu I am working on, says Anko this caused Sakura to shiver in fear at the look in Anko's eyes she had that look Naruto has right before he hardcore pranks. Flashback and, Kakashi's eyes glance between the blonde and pink net he then takes on a deep breath and sighs knowing he's definitely not going to be able to read his book anytime soon, okay, test one. Ninjutsu, said Kakashi the man goes through the hands of snake, ram, monkey, boar, horse, and tiger fire release, great fireball technique Kaden, Gokaku no Jutsu, exclaimed Kakashi he takes a deep breath and released a very large fire bow. Naruto narrows his eyes he goes claps his hands together Kakashi misses the grin that was on his face. Water release. High pressured impact, Sweden. Koatsu, exclaimed Naruto this technique allows the user to create a spiral of water on both hands of the user and fires it with great speed. Kakashi's eyes become wide in shock Sweden. He knows Sweden. Thought Kakashi he watches as the two techniques and come together creating a fog of mist suddenly the fog is clear up by Naruto Kakashi watches as a small gust of wind is being held in the palm of his Naruto's hands. Naruto then summons a four-point pinwheel demon windmill shuriken. The giant shuriken is two times bigger than a regular size one Kakashi stares at Naruto with a cautious look. The giant shuriken is coated with wind chakra he then tosses it towards the ground but just as it is a few inches from the ground it be begins to float shocking everyone excluding Jiraiya and Tamari who are just smirking to themselves. Wind release. Cycle hawk technique, futon. Saikuruhoku no jutsu, said Naruto he jumps on the windmill they stare in shock as Naruto flies above them. Sakura stares in amazement at her teammate you can fly, exclaimed a shocked Sakura. I've never seen such a jutsu before. What kind of training did you and Jiraiya-sama do? Wondered Kakashi with his Sharingan he can see the giant windmill shuriken is covered in a wind affinity. He's never seen a wind jutsu like this before. Naruto looks at Sakura with a wide grin you can thank Tamari-chan for this technique. You see, I wanted to learn how to use my wind affinity to fly like Tamari-chan so she helped me develop this technique. I channel my wind chakra through the windmill allowing me to control it think of this technique like an advanced version of the chakra control exercise but instead of balancing on top of water I am balancing on air, explained Naruto this technique also requires a lot of chakra and stamina luckily Naruto has both. I guess I better not hold back rock might seriously get hurt, Naruto, Sakura you too have grown I am sorry for not being there when you too needed me, thought Kakashi. The famous copycat ninja goes over a hundred different hand signs with lightning fast hand movements both Naruto and Sakura prepare themselves for the jutsu, water release, 
Water Dragon Bullet Technique, Sweden. Swiriuden no Jutsu. Exclaimed Kakashi a dragon is formed from water its yellow eyes glares down at the blonde and pink-haired duo the dragon roads in anger and charges at Naruto. Naruto narrows his eyes at the water dragon he flies at the water dragon he jumps in mid-air and makes his windmill spin sideways Naruto then focuses the heel of his feet balancing on the spinning windmill shuriken wind release cycle hawk. Eclipsing Night Technique Futon Saikurahoku Nishoku Yuru no Jutsu Exclaimed Naruto he then kicks the spinning windmill shuriken the wind surrounding the windmill shuriken increased in size becoming a giant wind buzz saw it cuts through the water dragon causing it to burst into sparkles of water droplets. Sakura goes though a various set of hand signs she focuses her chakra into her hand learning from Tsunade had allowed her to use Tsunade's massive strength and with combination of an earth affinity increases the power even further, earth release. Cherry blossom impact technique, Doden. Sakura Inpakuto no Jutsu, yelled Sakura with a mighty cha she punched the ground causing a huge wave of stone pieces to be rocked from the ground. Seeing the incoming wave of stones Kakashi creates a wall of earth taking brute force of the Jutsu Kakashi lets out a nervous chuckle. Ninjutsu pass. Now let's see how you two do with Genjutsu, says Kakashi the man vanished from his sight both Naruto and Sakura were back to back. The two near a sound coming from a nearby bush from the bush is an injured Sasuke crawling towards them. NN Naruto, SS Sakura, HH help me, pleaded Sasuke groaning in pain the two members of Team 7 stares at the Sasuke with a sigh Naruto and Sakura both break out of the genjutsu. Is that it Kakashi sensei? Joked Naruto with a large grin on his face one of his disadvantages was Genjutsu so Jiraiya and the Toads train him to learn how to detect and release Genjutsu thanks to his control control and massive amounts of chakra made it impossible for him to ever be able to cast Genjutsu. We won't fall for a trick like that Kakashi sensei. Exclaimed Sakura she then uses the rabbit, dog, cat, ox, boar, and clone hand signs illusion technique, serpent gaze song, Genjutsu, Jagan no Yuta. Said Sakura everything begins to morph around Kakashi instead of being in the training ground he now stands in a forest that is surrounded by tropical forest Kakashi stares in shrugged various of white snake wrap themselves around the man pining the man to the ground. Kakashi grits his teeth at being brought to his knees him, not bad Sakura. Said Kakashi thanks to his Sharingan he was able to break out of the Genjutsu which is, good because both both Naruto and Sakura are wielding their own sword Naruto and his GN sword and Sakura wielding a Kodachi. Her Kodachi has a sharp edge to it. The pommel of the sword is shaped like a lotus flower the pommel is royal blue with a light pink lining and the handle of the blade is black in color. Kakashi quickly uses a katana to block Naruto's sword he then holds Sakura's arm into a right grip him. So you both learned Kenjutsu huh? Well, this for interesting. Okay, I wasn't planning on a Kenjutsu test said Kakashi everyone in the village knows that Kakashi had joined the Anbu and became its captain this includes his two students. He then gives them an eye smile and was soon replaced by a piece of log causing the sword to fumble Kakashi appears next to Naruto and elbows the blonde in the jaw Naruto takes a quick step back and slashes at Kakashi who parries each slash that went his way he blocks an overhead slash and kicks a left kick to Naruto's ribs. Kakashi then blocks her blade he then kicks her leg causing her to lose balance. Kakashi throws his kanai in the air confusing Sakura he uses this to his advantage and grasp hold of her kodachi keeping her in place she grits her teeth as she tries to move. His eyes then widen as he senses Naruto behind him he quickly replaced himself with a log saving him from being cut in two from the trees a volley of shuriken are being thrown at their direction Naruto and Sakura deflect the flying weapons. Kakashi jumps in the middle between the two Kakashi gives them an eye smile as the two slash at him from both sides just like he did with Naruto and Sasuke all those years ago he threw both Naruto and Sakura away from each other. Kakashi holds his kanai in a reverse grip that stance, muttered Kakashi recognizing the same stance Yugo and Hayate Yusi smiles to himself proud of how far Sakura has grown. Sakura swings her sword in a circular motion, leaving a trace of afterimages behind which befitting to name, mirrors that of a moon. Sakura then rush at them to deliver a blow. Taking advantage of the difficulty in following her movement, Hazy Moon Knight, Oborazukio, said Sakura unfortunately, she was dealing with Kakashi someone how has the speed to keep up with her. The two of them trade blows with Sakura on the defense she follows up with a side slash and sends a roundhouse kick to the side pushing him back a few feet away. 
He then puffed out of existence in a cloud when Naruto stabs him through the gut the blonde is forced to jump away from the exploding tags. Naruto narrows his eyes and performs a 360 overhand slash forcing Kakashi to back away he then covered his kunai with his lightning affinity his kunai slashes with Naruto's blade which is coated in wind chakra. The two send a kick at each other but both feet meet one trying to push the other back. Kakashi backs away and jumps in mid-air and throws the lightning-infused kunai at Naruto who leans to the side just barely missing the ninja tool. Kakashi creates a single clone both of them throw their own volley of shuriken Kakashi and his clone covered the shuriken with fire and lightning affinity. Naruto grips his sword with a one-hand reversed grip Uzumaki sword technique. Whirlpool's velocity. Uzumaki Kenjutsu. Tokui Ten Sokudo Sodo. Exclaimed Naruto suddenly Naruto's image changes into his mother Kashina Uzumaki he watches in shock as Naruto unleashes fast vertical horizontal sword slashes by slashing sword down in reverse motion and flipping his sword straight this causes the unorthodox way of this technique had cut the shuriken to ribbons. Fortunately, Kakashi was able to escape with only his arm bleeding that Kenjutsu style that was Kashina's I am sure of it. Thought Kakashi he had been on the receiving end of the sword style in his youth during his time with his team it was always him and Obito being the receiving end of that technique whenever he and Obito were arguing which was quite often at most time to make them stop she would just smile at them and they would settle down. This almost feels personal, says Kakashi with a sweat drop Kashina was a very beautiful woman but she was also a very terrifying woman on the battlefield, besides being known as the red hot blooded habanero, Akai Chishio no habanero. To anyone outside of the village she was known as the Scarlet Death, Hiro no Shi. Akunoichi famous for her red hair and her skills in Fuenjutsu and Kenjutsu. Naruto and Sakura just Facebook a cheeky grin nothing personal sensei, says Sakura. This is a test, says Naruto, causing Kakashi to sign before glancing between the two of them alright, let's see how your taijutsu is. Wondered Kakashi the man then goes through various set of hand signs water release. Water bullet technique, Sweden. Sweden no jutsu! exclaimed Kakashi. He then expelled a torrent of water at them, forcing them to jump away from the shot of water. Naruto and Sakura grit their teeth in frustration and annoyance as a pair of flash bomb lands before them, and without a second later, their sight is overwhelmed by a bright light. As their sight came back to them, both Sakura and Naruto find themselves alone in the training ground. I knew this would tough, but I guess that's what you expect from copycat Kakashi and he can counter whichever jutsu we throw at him, said Sakura with a frustrated look. Hmm, maybe not I have an idea, said Naruto Sakura looks at Naruto with a raised eyebrow. With Kakashi, Kakashi was leaning against a free with his usual lazy look but his eyes had a very serious look those two sure have grown. Jiraiya had trained Naruto and Sakura had been taught by Konoha's most skilled kunoichi in the village, I definitely can't read it now thought Kakashi as he pats his back pocket which where the issue of make out paradise is after all, Kakashi is the only person brave enough to walk around reading those books out in public. Just as his hand slides in his back pocket grabbing hold of his favorite book his, senses go off, Shaw. Earth Release. Rose Thorn of Heaven, Doden, Tengoku no Bara Toge. Exclaims Sakura she performs a powerful drop kick. She gathers a dense concentration of chakra in her foot that they release on contact with a target, the resulting damage is enough to seriously damage living targets and will likely also do some collateral damage to the surroundings, ground that is affected by this jutsu fractures and sends small, flower petal sized particles into the air, Kakashi's eyes widened as the flower petals began transforming into rose trees the vines begin to ensnare Kakashi. Damn genjutsu again! Only this time she added Genjutsu into her attack's smart move Sakura. Kai. Release. Exclaimed Kakashi he quickly leans his head to the side avoiding a left hook from Sakura he jabs her in the stomach and kicks her in the legs causing need to call back she quickly performs a handstand and kicks her leg out Kakashi jumps in midair and sends a side kick to her head but she explodes in a cloud of smoke and is replaced with a log but this log has three exploding tags attached to it. Kakashi quickly replaces himself a shadow clone. The real Kakashi is standing on the tree branch with his Sharingan eye. Hmm. I better not push myself too much, thought the walking scarecrow. He then jumps from his spot as a pair of kanai were just thrown at him. Sakura sends a flying kick at Kakashi who blocks it. 
Kakashi's eyes go wide as he realized he can't move his eyes glanced down and noticed his legs are wrapped in gold chains a sealing formula of the Uzumaki clan appears all over him. Kakashi stares down in shock he glances behind him sees Naruto using the snake hand seal adamantine sealing chains. Bondage of restrictions, Kongo Fusa. Kosoku no Sokubaku, said Naruto. Kakashi hears a familiar sound he turned his eyes and finds Sakura with the bells smiling to herself she then smiles at Naruto it looks like your plan worked. Exclaims Sakura Kakashi blinks his eyes at them, we knew whatever jutsu we throw at you would just be countered by you so we came up with the idea of layering a ninjutsu with a genjutsu, explains Sakura. We know you are an expert in most shinobi skills but I remember there is one ninja art you aren't familiar with and that being fuinjutsu. Not only that but there is no fuinjutsu capable of rivaling an Uzumaki seal. Grinned Naruto he then releases the seal causing Kakashi to stumble the man then covers his sharingan and gives his two students an eye smile. Tsunade and the others walk over to them she gives the two youths a confident grin well, you have become strong, huh? I am amazed you were actually able to get the bells, said Kakashi. I can tell whatever this pervert helped you with pages off, congratulations, Naruto Uzumaki special junin. I am sure with you back I am expecting some trouble. Grinned Tsunade in a joking manner while ignoring the defeated look on her teammate's face. Naruto's stomach then begins to let itself be known with an audible growl Tamari rushed to his side sandwiching his arm between her bust come on. Naruto-kun take to this Ichiraku stand. Think of it as my treat for passing the ball test. Says Tamari Naruto grins at Tamari with a nod of the head his stomach growls in response. As Tamari drags away her boyfriend he waves at Sakura and Ino I guess, he'll see us guys later. Sakura well definitely bring Sasuke back, yelled Naruto Sakura smiles waves at him as he vanished from her sight she gains a somber look on her face. Sasuke-kun, I haven't thought about him in three years I've been mostly been focused on training I haven't had any real time to think about him, thought Sakura she hadn't thought about the rogue Uchiha since she began training under Anko. She had even went on a date with Lee of course the young taijutsu user was a little too much for her the guy was nice he just tends to overdo a lot of things she did meet a boy when Konoha 11 was in Sunagakar for the Chunin exam. Thanks for watching.